I, I'm sorry, I really think I mismatched the vibe here. I didn't mean to to play Don't Ever Forget. Uh, what about... Uh, yeah, this is my go-to. How's that? That better? <laughs> <coughs> oh, hello everyone. Um, I'm back. For the most part, I'm alive. I, I'm still a, a little sickly. Uh, for, for those of you who don't know, uh, I was in a, a car accident, and then I started feeling better, and then I got COVID. So, uh, it's been a rough month or so. Oh, here, wait a second. Sorry. No, 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 I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. Uh, yeah, so, been a rough, like, month, honestly. June was not prideful for me. No, that, that shit was straight wrath. Uh, so, I'm just recovering, and I, I've been wanting to stream, like, for, like, the past three or four days. I've been like, I'm gonna stream today. I'm gonna do it, and then, uh, then I don't. <laughs> For one reason or another. Usually it's like by the time I feel like good enough to stream, it's like 6 p.m. And I'm like, maybe maybe not. Um Yeah, it was a it was it was, it was a it was a bad month. Um but I'm I'm doing alright. I've had a good few days. You might hear me uh, cough a little bit here and there. I'm gonna try to mute like this. See that? I'm sure you no know, nothing funny happens in chat when when that occurs. Uh, as you can tell, my roots are fucking egregious right now, uh, which is a sign that I've been inside for way too long. Um, yeah, and there is an ad here, which I, I see people talking about, but oh well. Um, speaking of ads, actually, no, I'm gonna wait. Uh, I'm, I see a lot of people in the comment section on it. I uploaded. A, it's a it's a long one. All right. Well, oh my God. Whoa, Solaris Odyssey. Thank you so much for the twenty gift. I'm sorry I haven't streamed lately, so you've been unable to to gift subs. So you had to dump twenty right there. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I uploaded a video yesterday. Yeah, yeah, yesterday. And so I have I have to use careful language here. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, I have taken down the video because. Allegedly, a sponsor I had is allegedly being investigated by the federal government. <laughs> and I, uh, all of this is news prior to me signing the deal. <laughs> uh, all of these stories have popped up, uh, bef like, bef I, I accepted this deal like two months ago. It, it got delayed several times for multiple reasons. Uh, so I saw a lot of people in the comments upset with that brand, that sponsor. And so, or, or they were allegedly upset, I should say. <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, we took it down. We get zero dollars from the sponsor now that we did that. But uh, I don't think we want that money anyways. <laughs> you know? So, uh, or I allegedly get zero dollars, I should say. <laughs> yeah. Oops. Money is money. Nah, I mean, it, I, I like it is. I understand money is money, but it's just like it's what you want to promote, right? Like, you know, I don't mind advertising shovelware mobile game of the month to, to viewers because I feel like that's a like get that bag king, you know, they understand that. But when it's something that's allegedly has much worse connotations. <laughs> Someone said your mic is dusty. That's that's not. This is cat hair. <laughs> this is cat. I have cats. This is this is what any black article of clothing looks like when you have cats. Like I have multiple mic like little little covers like pop filters, but uh, I rotate through them like every month, and it, it it doesn't matter. It's always gonna look like this. So so grow up. Grow up. Oh. Yeah, but, um... 
Are you going to repost without the sponsor? No, that's like algorithmic suicide. So this is how the YouTube algorithm works, like in a nutshell. Uh, I post a video and then if a lot of my subs watch it, then they're like, oh, okay, more people than average want to watch this. Let's ship it higher up, you know? Uh, that's not exactly how it works, but like, like layman's terms, that's, that's what it's looking for. So if I post it, and then all my subs have already seen it, and they're like, oh, I'm not going to watch this. I've seen it already. Uh, so it's just going to tank, and then it tanks further. Uh, I could just use YouTube Editor to just yoink the sponsor out, but it, it I, like, the thing is, I was out of my house when we decided to pull the video, and I just kind of said, ah, fuck it, it's okay. It, it's like, it, it's whatever. <laughs> it wasn't a video, like, if I put a lot of time into the video, then, then I would have kept it up, like, if it was, like, a big project, a Nuzlocke, something like that. But it, it was honestly a video I I made because we needed a sponsor. It was just something I had lying around, you know? So it wasn't... Uh, it was the one player four controller from Mario Party. Put it on gold? No. I'll re-upload to, like, not Alpha Rat or something if you guys want. Or on replay. Yeah, I can do something like that. Yeah, I'll do something like that. I'll, I'll figure it out. <clears throat> oh. Weird to think you have four channels. Okay. <laughs> Alright. Show us Ace Koro. Sh shut up, dude. Chill. Um. Yeah, so I today, okay. So I'm shilling today. I'm shilling. Okay. Um in at the end of April. <laughs> I said, you guys can submit an egg for the community egg lock. Uh, we have one box left, and uh, I was going to stream it in June, give everyone a month to submit eggs, but unfortunately, things just kept happening. Things like one thing delayed it, and then another thing delayed, and then it's just like a car accident, health. Like it's, it, it, it just wasn't meant to be in June, okay? So, uh, I'm going to stream it sometime within the next week or so, and uh, I will stream the Community Egglock. So, if I am allowing today as the last day to submit eggs for real this time, uh, just as a little apology. Uh, why is it a saying that you can give me money as an apology? That doesn't really make sense. I'm shilling because I want to. Uh, but if anyone wants a sub or a prime sub, uh, you can link it to your Discord, and then uh, you should have a Google form. That still works. Yeah, so any new eggs will have 30 chances. This one's a week. I'll just give you guys a week, probably. Probably something like, no, no, it's today. It's today. What the fuck? Did I almost get tricked? <laughs> Anyways, um, I'm renewing in four days. That's cool. Thank you. Yeah, that almost worked. Yeah, it almost got me. I almost got outplayed. Yeah. If you're going to apologize, at least have the decency to bust out the ukulele. Uh, I do have the ukulele waiting in the wings uh, for the when the bit calls for it. Don't worry. Uh, I just didn't feel. I don't think I said I'm sorry <laughs> for for what I was talking about. Which sometimes it be like that. But I guess that is truly what you should do with the ukulele, is not apologize. <laughs> yeah, neither Yeah, neither did they, to be fair. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe I was right on it. Um, yeah, so, where where was I? Where, where, which, which, I have, dude, I don't know how, how many streamers typically do it, but, like, I have so many different, uh, layouts. Oh my god, I have so many. It's, I don't, I just like everything to, to be nice and organized. And I, I have so many different layouts. Uh, they're all labeled. I'm, I'm real, uh, into, I don't know, man. I, I just like being super organized. Uh, yeah, sorry for the, the sudden flashbang sometimes. 
<laughs> uh, but this is the one I've been using for this. This is the Mario Party layout, but it works for this. Uh, yeah, so if we're just going to hop right into it, um, all you guys really need to know... It, I'll turn this up. <coughs> Still pretty quiet. Uh, first off, we got to get rid of some Pokemon. Uh, the last thing we did was, uh, we caught this on accident. We were trying to catch, uh, what was it? We were trying to catch a Geodude, but, uh, it was, uh, Zubat on accident. So, now we gotta get rid of all these guys. Uh, all these, we have a lot of Geodudes and Caterpies. Uh, I did try to catch a, a Caterpie a while ago. And it didn't go well. Uh, instead, we caught another Weedle, and by we, I mean I, and by on accident, I mean it was an entire mistake. So a lot of dudes. Yeah, we're just going to send them to the factory. So just send them to the farm. Whoa, and subs be rolling in. Thank you, everyone. Uh, you guys did not miss a beat. I, I always feel bad. Okay, so this is like some streamer uh, anxiety. Where it's like, I'm sure a few of you can relate to this. It's like, whenever I boot up stream after not streaming for a while, it's like you get a glimpse at your, your sub count, and it's like, oh, it's like a fourth of what it was before I, when I streamed last. And, you know, you tell yourself on one hand, but I don't really care about the money, but just seeing a number go down in any context always feels bad. Num even if the number is like channel points, you know, <laughs> even if it doesn't matter at all, it's just seeing any number go down feels bad. Even if you say it, you don't care, right? Uh, seeing number go up though, that's, that's brain happy sauce right there. What if number is age? Uh, I think that's fine. I, I would like age to go up, uh, personally. I think the one thing I like, I like growing up. I, I like, uh, you know, spending a year around the sun every year because every year I realize how stupid I was a year prior and, and that is called growth. And I, I'm so grateful for that. If I did not grow up once every year, I would not have that sense of reflection. What if number was apology videos? Okay, I think if the number of apology videos is going up, you probably have a lot of other numbers going down. So I, I think that one kind of contradicts itself in a way. Where, you know, you're not uploading them just for fun, you know. <laughs> and if you are, that's crazy. I do remember, uh... I think I'm a... Okay, for, for all from Smash, I think I am a different person after uh, the, the summer of 2020 in the Smash community. I, I think I, that, that affected me in a lot of ways mentally. And uh, when Animal Crossing came out in March, I made a facetious apology video uh, talking about how sorry I am for time traveling in Animal Crossing. And the funniest part was I put a sponsor in the middle of that apology where it was very funny. But I think I put it in there, like, before the punchline hit. So, that... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, when you're looking up apology videos, I, I think that video started gaining a lot of traction. Uh, it started getting algorithmically recommended to people in July 2020. Uh, <laughs> as a predominantly Smash channel. So, a lot of people saw it and thought, What the fuck happened here? So, they clicked it. And so I had to change the title from like, I'm sorry to stereotypical YouTuber apology or something. I, I just changed the title <laughs> because uh, I, I felt like I had to do something. Yeah, let's get rid of all these Caterpie. But yeah, yeah, that, that, <laughs> that definitely happened. Yeah, that is a lot of Caterpies, though. You would be correct. Howdy, what part of the game are you at? That's a, that's a good question. I am at the part of the game where you have to catch 50 Pokemon. 
which is normally not that big of a deal unless you are specifically shiny hunting. <coughs> no, no. Uh, way back in the day, one of my friends copied your Vincent meme. When I eventually saw your videos, I pogged. That's, that's a great story, man. <laughs> awesome. Is this also a Nuzlocke? It is, but it's really not. You know, it's it's kind of one of those. Uh, Nuzlocke is more uh, buzzwordy, <laughs> more than anything. Yeah, so many Caterpies, though. How many until 50? Uh, I think we have more than, like, we try to catch a lot of Pokemon. Like, we have Caterpie in our decks, but we don't have a shiny Caterpie in our decks. Uh, we have 24 shiny Pokemon total out of 50, so, uh, this run's not even close to, to being over, by the way. Uh, we're, we're getting there. Can you use Go Park? I, I could! I could, but, you know, it's about staying true to the bit. Or are we fucking tired of the bit? Do you... I, I think after everything, I deserve to send over, like, a shiny Squirtle or something from Pokemon Go. I think. Why is he catching non-shiny? Uh, because you gotta. Because because you just gotta. Alright, shout out, Jome. Enjoy your Tears of the Kingdom, man. This is so boring. What the fuck do you want me to do? I think you are in the wrong stream. Uh, did I play on Community Day? No, I did not. Uh, oh, I just realized. Uh, I'm sure I commented on it uh, when it happened. But, uh, level 100 easy. Um, okay, I assume the lure is up and running. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so... You can get one. Oh, I'm gonna ask a poll. I'm gonna ask a poll. Uh, can... I use... Can I get a shiny from Pokemon Go? Uh, this is just asking for, for just for me. Do you guys want to be kind? Uh, if you guys allow me to, I will take one. I will gladly take one. But if it's cheating, I understand. Oh my god, we're having mercy on me? We're having mercy. Oh, that's a lot of mercy. I feel like anyone who said yes has watched, like... Uh, do you know how long this run's been so far, by the way? Uh, this four, uh, 50 hours, roughly. 50 hours. Yeah, that is, I think... No, yeah, I'm gonna confidently say I think that is the first time chat has ever had mercy on me in any context. That is very, it's shockingly kind. All right, let me... Oops. Uh, Pokemon Go. I don't remember exactly. Oh my god, 80% yes. You guys are kind. You guys are straight up kind today. Um, 50 hours for 24 shinies. Well, no, it's not 24 shinies. It's 24 dex entries. Because, like, Charmander counts as three. You know? It's, it's stuff like that. We have not gotten one per two hours. Um, okay, let me... Okay. Well, I was going to show you guys my Pokemon Go screen, but... <gasps> Whoa! Uh, a Squirtle is right outside my house. And he's got a little hat on. How, how cool. How cool is that? He's not shiny. The pink worm, please. Oh, I already traded the pink worm over. Um, okay. Okay. Let, I do not remember how to send Pokemon over. Uh, do oh oh yeah, there's a switch button. That's right. Uh, okay, sh uh, shiny. What can I send over? Oh, actually, I don't. I have a sh shiny Eevee is the only thing I can send. Shiny Eevee and Pinsir. I have a Gyarados, but no Magikarp. So, um, I'll take the Eevee. I'll send an Eevee over. Yeah? It's only two stages. 
No, no, no. Eevee is so much more valuable than Pinsir. Uh, just because it evolves twice. Or it evolves, it evolves once. Okay, wait. How do I... Okay, what's the... I think I gotta go... To options. It is Let's Go Eevee after all. That is true. Um... Yes. I would like to find a Pokemon Go account. Yeah. Yeah. It kind of goes hard. He needs... It's Let's Go Eevee. He needs the Eevee. Yeah, I mean, I, I really like Vaporeon. Normally. You know. Okay, I'm, I, I do be searching for Nintendo Switch. Maybe I, uh... Just hold it down here, where my Switch is. Have you paired it with the Switch? I don't know. What, what am I supposed to do? Oh, uh, turn Bluetooth on. Wait, no, what the fuck? It says Bluetooth is disabled. No, it, no it's fucking not, phone. I've done this before. Look at this shit. Oh my god, I'm, I'm struggling with this all over again. Last time I did this, I also struggled. Can you make a does he know emote? I don't, I don't think I will. Maybe, maybe. No. Why is there so many Pokemon rule? I don't know. Okay, wait, 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 wait. You have to go into the actual settings app for Pokemon Go and turn it on. Well, here's the thing. I've already traded Pokemon from Pokemon Go before. Or... Oh, wait, no, I had to set up a... Is it because it's a different switch? You connect the... Transmitted. It's the same save file. It's a different switch, but the same save file. Okay, so... Aunt Alpha Ride, answer me, will this be a vid? You think I put 50 hours into this run for just shits and giggles? Really? We're asking that question? Um, okay. So... Okay, how do I... Connected devices. Nintendo Switch. Available device. Oh! Wait. It says available devices and I'm... I... Okay. Okay, okay. I understand now. Let's search on here. Uh, search for Nintendo Switch. What the fuck? I did it before. I did. I did do this before. Did you turn on the Bluetooth for Nintendo Switch? No way. No way. Where's Bluetooth on Nintendo Switch? Where is it? It's... Not... Is it Bluetooth audio? I don't... What the fuck you mean, really, dude? Do you readily know how to transfer Pokemon? Just... I, I did this before and I forgot how. This is such a normal thing to happen. Chat had mercy. And then decided to be very mean. We do not all know... How to transfer Pokemon to Pokemon Let's Go Eevee. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, thank you for the anonymous five gifted. Uh... Ch 
Chad fucking Chad's backseating the fucking Nintendo Switch settings. That's you, you. You are correct. Uh, let let me see. Uh, how to turn on Bluetooth? Uh, Nintendo Switch. Okay, open system settings. Got a Bluetooth audio. Well, it's it's not. I don't want Bluetooth audio per se. Uh, but but maybe that's 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 what they want. It has pair device. This is bullshit. This is bullshit. I think. Okay, yeah, let's... How to send Pokemon to Let's Go. Uh, okay, linking your games. Pokemon... Oh my god, chat. Everyone in chat is wrong. Uh, I just looked it up. And, and it is not that hard. Wait, can, okay, so we go... Yeah, believe it or not, I don't think Chad actually knew the answer here. Um, tap. Okay, okay. Um, okay, so it says this. Go to settings. Oh, no. This is a different menu. Fuck is this menu? I've seen this menu before. Oh no, man. Why is this so hard? Okay. We, we're in here. Well, this is also outdated. I see. This is before you could even battle this this guide. Uh, so I'll go here. No. No, no, no. Okay. Uh. 2023 uh refine the google search um they make it look so easy they, they, okay no, no. Da, 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 da. Are, are we sure i can't just oh no okay settings I thought it would be so easy, man. Okay. Because if I go back here, it is searching. I think it would have been faster to catch a shiny than this. I want, sh you know what? I want someone to send me shiny Melton. I think it'd be awesome to have Melton in. Can you evolve Melton? Inside this game, or is, do you have to send Mel Metal over? Okay, we'll we'll go back to this. No, you have to send Mel Metal. Got it. It's not there. Okay, you setting the Pokemon Go and scroll all the way down. That yeah, I know I, I know, I see that. And then it says connected device, looking for a device. Talk to the clerk. No, that's not how it works. Okay, I found a resource on how to Okay, so, um, there's a button, there's a button under resources that says connect to Nintendo Switch, and I just clicked it. I thought that would send me to, like, an article on how to connect to Nintendo Switch. 
uh, which I think is a pretty reasonable deduction given how it was formatted. Uh, I'm going to stand by that one. Uh, against all odds, I'm going to stand by it. Yeah, no, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to double down on it. You didn't see how it was formatted. It had a little green arrow next to it, just like a hyperlink would. No, 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 no. I, I I I double down by it. Okay, so now how do I get the Pokémon? Uh Yeah, I would like to bring a Pokémon. Yes. Yes, I can Okay, okay, we're in it. We're in it. Oh, Jesus Christ. Okay. I think I was legitimately like 30 seconds away from giving up. So, uh, you know, all's well that ends well, I suppose. Every time I send a Pokemon Go Pokemon on here, I'm always like, what if it just shows my address? <laughs> you know? <laughs> I, I always think it's a possibility. Okay, so look, we got an Eevee on the hat and we got a shiny Eevee in the fields. There we go. I, I think I deserve this one. Oh, oh. Okay, I had to interact with it. <laughs> he was just letting me push him around for a bit. Whoa, guys! Is that a shiny? Whoa, whoa, chat, who was here? Can you believe it? Oh my god, whoa! Oh my god, look at this little bastard, actually. He, he kind of do be jumping. Chat. Oh my god! Dude, oh. What a good day. We've been live for less than an hour and already found a shiny? Dude, it's a good day, chat. Oh, yeah. Thank you for the 100 gifted subs, by the way. Oh, my God. Woo. Wow. Hey, that's an earned shiny right there. Absolutely earned. Mwah. Beautiful. And then I see... Ch yeah, chat, we're popping off. Yeah, I can't believe it. Yeah, the impossible is possible today. Yeah, I would like to save. Thank you very much. Oh my god, that's... Oh my... Whoa! Emperor Floro, thank you for the 20... <coughs> I'm gifted! <coughs> oh my god, that was the loudest my voice has been in like three weeks. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you, everyone. We're lurking... Looking pincer. A uh, little bit, yeah. Okay, so let's move him over here. Uh, this is an actual shiny Eevee, unlike our other Eevee. Uh, what do we name this little guy? Uh, what, what, what has he got? Okay, plus special attack. That's not bad for the Vaporeon we're going to make him. Uh, name it settings. Name him Bluetooth. Uh, Bluetooth's not a bad name. Name of my address? Uh, no. Bluetooth isn't bad. Uh, it's gonna be purple, is the thing. But, uh, yeah, we can go Bluetooth. Okay, what's nice is that we can just go get uh, a Water Stone right now, I'm pretty sure. Uh, Enceladon. Yeah, okay, just had to make sure that was right. <sighs> yeah, Bluetooth's cute. It, it works, in a way. Uh, you know what's a real shame? I love... Oh, fuck. I, when you throw the Joy-Con, it always makes Eevee think you want to play with them. Um, it's actually minus special attack plus defense? Is Oh, dude, I always forget which color is which. 
Um, oh yeah, blue's bad, right? Yeah, yeah, blue is bad. That is right. Uh, wait, wait, it's red. Wait, is blue? Red's up. Yeah, no, I was right. No, 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 no. No, it is plus special attack. People are just... Oh, wait, that's my Eevee. Wait. Okay, let's go back to the shiny Eevee. Wherever... Oh, he's just not in the party. Okay, well, let's put him in the party then. Uh, I'll get there. Okay, so, uh... Yeah, that is mine as special attack. Okay, well, uh, it's still Vaporeon either way. It's still gonna be Vaporeon. Um... Let's get rid of this Pidgeot. I mean, we're probably gonna block... Or, we're probably gonna box this thing for the entire run. So, it's not that big of a deal. Um, where do I find, I mean, I'm pretty sure you get stones up here. I, th I think that's true, but now I'm like doubting. Oh, well, I'm, I'm done doubting. Uh, okay. Let's just sell, uh, all this shit real quick. Uh, yeah, we can just get... Oh, that, that was more than enough. Uh, okay. Uh, the ultimate choice. But I do think Vaporeon has the best shiny of all of them. And, yeah, I, I think I deserve that one. Yeah, if... I mean, But now it's like if we happen to catch another Eevee down the road, we at least get another Eevee Lucian, which isn't great. Because that's just one uh, Pokemon, Pokedex entry. But Eevee sounds rare enough to... Whoa, wait. You can evolve your 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 main Pokemon? Really? Wait. Doesn't he just say no? Yeah, okay. No, he just didn't like that shit. Okay. <laughs> yeah, my bad for offering such a thing. But, uh, okay. This Eevee will happily evolve. And it is shiny. And it is... Uh, smuggled over here from Pokemon Go, but uh, we take those. We 100% take those. And nobody is being weird in the chat, right? Oh no. Oh no. Shut up. Oh, wants to learn Water Gun. How cool. Uh, sure, we can learn Water Gun. I don't know why I thought the shiny was green. Nah, it's it's like a purplish color. I like the shiny. I think of all the Eevees in this gen, it's uh, the best one. I think it's hard to not say the best shiny, like, Eeveelution is Umbreon, though. It's just really solid. Like, I, you know... I like uh, Sylveon and Vaporeon more, but just Vapor... I, I think Umbreon's just, like, the perfect shiny. It looks really good. Um, okay, add this guy to the party. Okay, so we have, um, <clears throat> okay, so some of these are dupes, so I'm not counting them. But, uh, one, two, three from Nidoran line. Uh, uh, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. 20, 21, 22, 23, eventually 24, and then 25, 26. So, uh, that's not, that's good. That's good for us. Halfway there! Woo! <laughs> oh, halfway there. Uh, we do have to evolve, uh, Zubat, though, to get to full 26. But we're there. Wasn't Dratini from Go? Yes, they are. Please be cool about it. Uh, I mean, if you really want to get technical, I don't think you can truly get 50 unique encounters from unique locations in this game. Uh, if you're going by, like, Nuzlocke encounter rules. Um, yeah, so we, we do what we can. Uh... 
Yeah, what do we what do we want to do? Do we Geodude is another Pokemon. It's just like, do we want to do Geodude or uh, Caterpie again? Because we got to hit a Pokemon that has three evolutionary cycles. Uh, so Caterpie is one. Uh, we could do one of the starters, but it's just a much, much harder. Uh, Caterpie. L let me think out loud for a second. Uh, Caterpie. We could do Nidoran female. Uh, we cannot do Oddish line because that's Pikachu exclusive. Um, Abra would be a little bit of a bitch. Machop is probably pretty good. I think Machop and Geodude are like the next focuses. Because both of those would put us at 32. Um, uh, Caterpie. I think Caterpie... Anything that's tr three evolutions, we should take. Uh, Machop and Geodude, Caterpie are, like, on my list. Because Abra and Ghastly are, like, too hard to catch. Like, especially if you want to chain. They're both trade evos. I will... You you can do that in this game. You you can trade in this game. It is possible. Um, and then... Uh, yeah, I don't really know who's next. I'd like to get a Magikarp just because I think Gyarados is so cool. Uh, the shiny. Uh, and then I'm kind of out of triplet lines. Uh, I might send... I think if I were to send over any other Pokemon, I might make... I might just try to network and see if I can get anyone to send me on Pokemon Go a shiny Melton and Melmetal. Because I think that them being like level 49, 40, or level 49, 50... Uh, would be kind of nice. Starters are all three stage? Yeah, but they're hard to get. We honestly just lucked out with Charmander. Like, uh, we should not have gotten Charmander as quickly as we did. It was genuinely just, like, luck. It was blatant luck. Uh, to borrow, I have one. No, I'm sorry. I I want one to keep on here. I, I will pay top dollar on eBay. You're asking for a shiny mythical? Oh, grow up, dude. If you think your Pokemon Go shinies are so exclusive, they are not. You just walk outside on Community Day and you get it. You walk outside when the box allows you to catch one. It is not that special. And you could just hack them too. <laughs> like it is it is not that you're it's you're not that serious. Um yeah, I could get Squirtle. Uh, where the fuck do you get Squirtle in this game? I actually don't know. Why do I have a Mew? Oh yeah, they just gave you one. I forgot. Uh, it was... Sh I f what the fuck? I forgot they gave you a Mew. Um, yeah, I forgot. I need to put that in my script. I did start writing the script for this video. Up, It's written up until right now. But I forgot to include the Mew. Um... Hmm. Caterpie is like the easiest one. It's just like, come on. We've already caught everything in Viridian Forest. So it, we just kept running against, I guess not Cat Bulbasaur. Okay, I'm ignoring everything besides Caterpie and Bulbasaur. I'm going to go back. I might try Geodude later. Uh. You get shiny Mew for a year? How do you get shiny Mew? Is that what, I don't even think that's possible. You can get shiny Bulbasaur and Viridian Force. You can, but it's it's just not that likely. <coughs> yeah, but like if we go for Caterpie, Bulbasaur could spawn, and then that would be good. You know, that I think that's the most we can really hope for. Is like we go in for Caterpie, and if Bulbasaur spawns, then awesome. But it's just not very likely. Squirrel's on the left of Nugget Bridge. Got it. I never found the appeal of shiny hunting. Oh, there is none. Don't worry. Uh, I, un I understand the appeal of shiny hunting as a streamer. 
because uh, if you've watched any of the shiny hunting streams, uh, it's the most involved I've ever been with chat. Because believe it or not, it's hard to stream and talk to chat. So I like shiny, like I would never shiny hunt for fun. You know, like that's sociopathic energy right there. But I would do it on stream because it's like a mindless activity where you get to pop off once every three hours and just talk to chat. Yeah, like that's really all it is. All right, and uh, there we go. Uh, that, is, that is one. One right there. Am I still reading the Pokemon manga? No, I read through all of Kanto and then I stopped because I was going to write a script over it. And then uh, I, I, I just never did. So uh, I will probably, I, I'd like to take it step by step. So I'm probably going to finish the script and then I'll probably uh, go on further. Okay, so let's play a little, little, uh, little game. I'm going to set a prediction um, over or under 100 encounters. Um, under or over, I'm going to say under, believe, over, doubt. There you guys go. Uh, 100 encounters. Like, to be fair, the odds are stacked against you for this one, just because uh, I don't have the best odds until I get to 30, which is, you know, 30% of your encounters for this poll. So if you say no, I don't, I, I understand. It is statistically unlikely, but if you say under, ooh, the payday you get. Alpha, I have shiny Squirtle I can give you. No, it's okay. Uh, I, I don't want to, I mean, I mean, I mean, I'm close. I, I am very close to accepting it. Uh, so, so give me a little more time. I'm close. I, I, like, I'm getting a little more and more accepting of illegal means by the stream. Okay, I'm looking, still looking for Caterpie. Uh, lots of Weedles. Okay, there's one little guy. Uh, first of many. So we're going to keep catching Caterpie. For the, anyone who doesn't know how to catch in Pokemon uh, Let's Go. So once you get 11 in a row, it starts increasing the spawn rate for that Pokemon you're chaining. Which is obviously helpful. But then after 31 plus, uh, you start getting like lower shiny odds for one roll. For just one roll. So you saw how like I caught that Caterpie and then another one filled the spawn. Uh, that one will have low or increased shiny odds after we get to 31. So the catch combo is why we catch so many basic Pokemon. Alpha, I have a shiny... Alpha, I have a shiny Fluttermane I can give you. So, that prehistoric Pokemon, uh, from Gen 9, uh, is based off of a Pokemon called, uh, Mistrevis, which also doesn't exist yet. Uh, thank you for the offer, but it, it does not help here. <laughs> How about a shiny scream tail? Yeah, no, that one might work. You might be able to bring that one in. <laughs> I never usually get on it. Uh, I, I think, okay. I think there's like a, a YouTuber. The, the biggest complaint I see from people who stream on YouTube is that their audience just does not understand streamer culture. And uh, I, I saw a viewer who was like, yo, Jaden streaming, bye. And it's like, just leave. Just, just leave. You don't got to put in your two weeks, you know? <laughs> just You can just go. I, I think uh, it's always with YouTube chatters, I see. Uh, people always ask why I switch from 
Twitch to YouTube and then back to Twitch. A lot of it is just because the culture is not there. Like, I get more viewers uh, streaming on YouTube than I do Twitch. But I just like the community. And as much as Twitch cannibalizes itself on a daily basis, I just like streaming on this platform because of the tools and the culture so much more than any other platform. I think it's like YouTube can keep adding these new features and everything, but it's until we get to a point where they are, they are leading the pact, it just doesn't matter. Like, I think Twitch can afford to cannibalize themselves many more times before having to worry about like another streaming platform. But I guess like YouTube streaming is very big in other countries and like YouTube streaming is very big. It's just the culture just isn't there. So I think that's what really holds me back. Okay, so this is just a timeout. I just see someone, this is just a 30 second timeout. Uh, I saw a, a chatter who said, do you think Eevee farts on the trainer's hat? And, uh, okay, I, look, I don't know you, you don't know me. Uh, let's just treat chat as things you would say to another normal person who you want to also think you are normal. Don't let the intrusive thoughts win. I can, I see what happened here. And that's why it's just a 30 second timeout. But, uh, just do your best to fight a little stronger. Your demons cannot be that capable. <laughs> right after I was discussing, the culture here is just different. And, uh, yeah, you proved me damn right on that one. The demons won there. Yeah, the demons won. Uh, chat, what's an example, uh, that, where you just let the intrusive thoughts win? <laughs> uh, I think my favorite one that I've seen is, uh, that one clip of the news channel where one guy, he's being interviewed and he's talking about, like, a child has gone missing and has been kidnapped and is presumed dead. And then you have the other anchor go, womp, womp. <laughs> it, <laughs> that video gets me every single time. <laughs> That's so fuck. It, it is, but it's really funny. <laughs> like, and then the other guy goes, did you say wah wah? It, it, the clip just ends, but it's... That's an example of the intrusive thoughts winning. Wasn't that Fox News? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was. Oh yeah, it was like a mother and daughter were kidnapped and kept in cages. Womp womp. <laughs> Dude, I'm sorry, that shit's so funny to me. It's so funny. Uh, oh, hi Bulbasaur, what if? What if, that could've, could've been huge. So, also, when you have 11 plus Pokemon catch combo, uh, the rare Pokemon in the, the area will start to spawn more, even if you're not like chaining them. So that's why chaining Bulbasaur is really difficult. Uh, because he only really spawns when you have 11+. plus. So the best idea to get shiny Bulbasaur is to start chaining another Pokemon. And then, like, just refresh the spawns. So, like, that's that's the best thing we can do right now. I'm so old I got a haircut. My barber was talking about submarine memes. Sheesh. <laughs> oh. That's I like look, have I laughed at a few distasteful submarine memes? Yes. <laughs> but have I gone to people I don't know and shared them? Like, I I think it is it is a, a brain rot to assume that everyone else is as online as you are. You know? <laughs> Distasteful says who? Motherfucker, are you trying to argue me that all the submarine memes have been tasteful? <laughs> Look, they can be distasteful and funny. <laughs> you know, like, that's not what I'm arguing. <laughs> but, like, is that really the hill you want to die on? Is that really, is that really the hill we want to die on today? 
Womp womp. <laughs> like, dude, that shit gets me. <laughs> that shit gets me every single time. <laughs> oh, that would have been such a good response to this song. Okay. Okay, let's chill. Let's, let's relax. <laughs> oh, that's so unfortunate. Uh, okay, so, for the prediction, <coughs> uh, I said uh, 100 encounters over-under. Uh, if we find a shiny Weedle, doesn't count. Shiny Bellsprout, doesn't count. Uh, it's gotta be Caterpie or Bulbasaur. Those are the only two that will count right now, because we've... Or Pikachu, yeah. Yeah, those three. Because anything else, we've already caught a shiny of. So, uh... If we happen to see a shiny Weedle, I'm just going to ignore it. Because we don't need it. You've rigged it? That's always been the rules. That has always been the rule. Uh, we even counted a shiny Bellsprout, even though we had one, because now we got to evolve it. Do you have shiny Rattata? Uh, oh, is Rat in the, in the Viridian Forest? You did not count it? Yes, I did. Uh, I think I, I might have misclicked, but I, I did. I meant to count it, I think. Um, either way, oops. The Bellsprout made Believers lose? Okay, well, it was an accident. <laughs> These are the rules now. That's all I got to say. The Bellsprout did not hurt. Count. Okay. Well, sorry. <laughs> I've changed my mind then. I, I have grown and changed as a person. Oh, hi, Bulbasaur. Jump scare. What a uh, little guy. What is Bulbasaur shiny? Uh, isn't it just a little more blue? Isn't that all it is? He's a bit yellow. He's more green? I need to look up Shiny Bulbasaur. Uh, here, let me just Google Shiny Bulbasaur. Oh, yeah, he is more green. I thought he was more blue for some reason. Honestly, pretty mid-shiny. Gotta say. Yeah, I think it, it really sucks that, like, uh, who? Uh, Charmander really has the best shiny. Like the or Char or Charm Charizard. Wow, I blank on the name of Charizard. Pokemon Company has it out for me now. Do you know how many encounters happened so far uh, for this specific Pokemon? Uh, only less than twenty. Uh, today, at least. I, I know we hunted Caterpie before, but accidentally caught a shiny Weedle, which was was a whoopsie on my part. Uh, let me sneak through here. Didn't you rank shinies? Uh, no. I, no, I haven't, but, but I can. Did the shiny Serilege dirty? Dude, that's one Pokemon they could have made very cool. <laughs> uh, it, it, the shiny could have been so sick. Uh, I could rank... I could rank shinies, but I'd only want to rank, like, uh, uh, Kanto shinies. Uh, just for this stream. How about this? Uh, if we catch shiny Caterpie, I, I will reward you, the viewer, with, uh, a shiny tier list. Real quick, it'll be real fast. Do you have a favorite between all available shinies in this game? Uh, uh, I think my favorite shiny in this game, it sounds really basic, uh, but it's probably Gyarados. I think people forget how cool of a shiny Gyarados is because it's given to you for free in Johto. But Gyarados is just such a good shiny, dude. It's really, it's, it's solid. Uh, shiny Charizard is also a bit of a basic choice, but I'll, I'll still stand by that one. All right, sometimes I just want to throw the ball on the other side of the stars. 
Eevees up there. I do like the shiny Eevee. It is a lot cuter than I would have expected. They're often popular because they're good. That is true. I The Charizard one is basic. I, I think it's just like the Gyarados one is it's devalued because you get it for free in Johto. And Charizard is like it makes you roll your eyes because it's Charizard, you know? Like, I, I think that's my uh, defense for those two. I don't really see any value in Shiny Gyarados. Yeah, like, that's my point, right? But it's Shiny is really only devalued in one game. Uh, I also did have a Shiny Gyarados that I could send over from Pokemon Go, but he's kind of like my strongest guy, and I don't, I, you know, you know, it's, I, I don't really want to do that. If there was a shiny in that corner, that'd be my 13th reason why. Especially if I couldn't reach it in time. Um, hi, Bulbasaur. Uh, that... Dude, what a crime that Pikachu gets the anime voice. I'm glad they changed. I'm glad they gave in. But the anime voice kills me on the inside. Didn't you catch a shiny Absol? Oh, bro. So, uh, I had a sponsored video where I love talking about sponsors, <laughs> like, you know, afterwards, because uh, every YouTuber, regardless if they talked about it before, every YouTuber has like 17 stories with sponsors. Some of them don't talk about them because it's like, it's bad business, because no sponsor wants to work with you if they think you're going to talk bad about them, potentially, you know? Uh, here's one story. Do uh, you guys remember my Brawl Out video? I, I talked about the weirdest sponsor I ever had, and I, uh, in the Brawl Out video, not, not the Brawl Out video, but the video talking about the Brawl Out videos. Uh, that one, I love that video. I think it's a really fun video, but I sent it to, in the middle of the video, there's like a joke where I was like, could you imagine this video was sponsored? And today's video sponsor is NordVPN. Cuts to a black screen. It's like, could you imagine that was actually sponsored? Well, I tried. Uh, that video was supposed to be sponsored by NordVPN. And then we sent it to them. And they said, ooh, I don't, we don't like this. Uh, we don't like that you're talking bad about another sponsor in it. Because who's to say you won't talk bad about us in the future? And I was like, well, I will now. <laughs> like, I wasn't planning on it. But if, if we're really going to pull that card. Uh, so, so then, after that, uh, <laughs> if I, I don't know if I have any streamers watching me. But, or any anyone who has worked with NordVPN, uh, go back and check your briefing doc that they gave you. Because uh, I did a sponsor with them after that, too. Uh, they have changed their rules. <laughs> they have, like, a list of appropriate videos that you can put your sponsor in. And it says, like, no political, no hate speech, no video bashing other sponsors. So... I might have changed the rules forever. You broke the rules? No, 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 no. I did not break the rules. I was the reason they added a new rule, which I think is more compelling. Yeah, lasting impact right there. I made them. Every rule has a story, is all I'm going to say. When you realize that, you see the whole world differently. When you walk into a bar and you see no skateboards, you go, there's a story there. Uh, every rule has a story. Yeah. Um, but what, what, what was I? I was going to go in a different direction with, with the sponsor talk. Oh, yeah, the Pokemon Go one. So, usually, if, if you ever see, like, a creator who... If they are talking about a mobile phone in that sponsor and they're showing it to you, that is not their phone. That is a prop phone that 
is like it's stronger it's brighter and it has everything installed safe stated exactly where you have to be so you can look like you've played it talked about it stuff like that um just so you know just ruin the immersion a little bit uh so when i played pokemon go uh i did a sponsor for them and it was for their halloween update uh that shit was recorded in september obviously their halloween update wasn't live yet so they gave me a dummy phone that was on a different server that had the Halloween update live. So, um, I don't think it's bad to talk about that. People are saying goodbye to the sponsors. I, I think I think it's an interesting topic. Like, before I did YouTube, I would have loved to have known this shit. Because it's interesting. Because it's insight you can't get anywhere else. Yeah, so what I'm saying was I caught a shiny Absol on that dummy phone. And, you know, I freak out because it was a genuine reaction. It was full odds, shiny Absol. It wasn't, you know, they didn't know that was my favorite Pokemon or anything. And then, um, so with these big deals, you know, you want to be very professional in the emails and stuff. Not the DMs, but the emails. Like, uh, instead of, this is like a regarding my last email type beat, you know? Full odds at 1 in 64? I don't think... That's not the odds in Pokemon Go. I think it's like... Isn't it 250? I know it's lowered, but it was full odds for Pokemon Go. It's 500? Got it. The odds are 512? Yeah, okay. Well, it was still impressive. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, hater energy. For real, for real. Is 250 much better? Yeah, 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 yeah. It, it's... Dude, okay. It doesn't matter what it is. It was full odds for the, the the Pokemon Go. I'm sorry full odds is lower in that game, but it's still true. <laughs> um So uh yeah, I, I sent an email to uh the Google Play rep who was, you know, uh overseeing the sponsor, the integration and I was like, hey, um, I know this is kind of inappropriate to ask, but uh, I, I caught a, a shiny Absol on set. And uh, here's my Pokemon Go credentials. Is it possible to get it in my account? And they, they just ignored it. <laughs> they just ignored it. <laughs> but I, I tried. I tried. I tried. I was a little saddened by it. They paid me fuck you money instead. So it's kind of like I didn't want to bite the hand that fed me and my mortgage for multiple months. So uh, I just kind of held it and backed off. <laughs> but it was funny. Was the sponsored balloons video the same thing? Yeah. I mean, wait, th th that, th that's, the balloons was not the sponsor. The, the sponsor was the phone. So of course... Uh, yeah, that, that phone was was different. But actually, what it, what is nice about that sponsor, it was for like the the OnePlus uh, phone or whatever, because uh, I use an uh, an iPhone normally. Uh, whenever I need an Android phone, I still use that because they gave they gave me a free phone for that. So whenever I need an Android phone for something, I still use it. So I think that is one sponsor I will uh, double down on. I think it was a very good product, and I think it's just cool that now I I have that for whenever I need it. Uh, I think I've only had to use it like once or twice, but you know, it's, uh, better be, better be caught with it than without it. You know what I'm saying? Gotcha. Blink twice. We can't talk about team. I already talked about it today. I, I talked about it at the beginning of the stream. I just don't want to keep re retelling the same stories. I'm sorry your Zubat's called low battery. Uh, it's fine. What level does he uh, evolve? I think like 22. I use an iPhone for so people won't bully me for sending green text. Uh, Bobby, uh, I I think that's what got me into it. I think it was 8-Ball that really got me into getting an iPhone. Um, I will say uh, this is really shallow, okay? This is extremely shallow. But if you want to... This might be true everywhere. But if you want to date in LA, you're playing on hard mode with an Android device. 
It's shallow. It sounds like it shouldn't be true, but it is. Uh, it might be true everywhere, but uh, it, it, it is fucking stupid, but it is true. People, it's true everywhere. Yeah, it's probably true everywhere. It's just people don't fucking, they, they people don't like green text. It's so stupid. It's, I think that is the most shallow thing that exists in society as a whole right now. Uh, I can't believe it's true. I don't know what kind of marketing Apple did. Because uh, realize, they had the conscious decision to make green text the same color. <laughs> like, all texts were green at one point. It, you know, I think it was like the iPhone 4 when they introduced uh, iMessage. And even if you had an older iPhone, you still had green text. I, I just can't believe that, that, uh... I like iPhone. I, I think it's a great phone and everything like that, but I cannot believe the damage they have done to... Okay, okay. Hold up. First time chatter says just use Snapchat and it doesn't matter. No, that is awful advice. Uh, that is not... That does not improve your dating track record, I promise you. If me as a 27 year old am talking to someone and they say, just add me on Snapchat, that is, I am done. Like that is a red flag amongst several. Like that is the red flag to me. Like, do I have Snapchat? Yes, I made it in high school. And for some reason, that's how I stay in touch with all my high school friends. And that is the end of it. One thing that I think I feel very passionately on is I do not trust a content creator with a public Snapchat. That is uh, that is like my number one red flag for creators. Like that that is a shit I do not vibe with. Like I I'm not I'm not gonna judge anyone for using Snapchat, but I when it comes to content creators, I will. Uh, Snapchat is goaded. I, it might depend on where you are in the world, but I'm from Norway and it's massive. That's interesting insight. Um, that is interesting. I never thought of it as a cultural thing. I guess like, it's like, you know, WhatsApp is very big in other countries too. Uh, I think, okay, I'll limit it to American culture then. <laughs> uh, cause I think, uh, when people hear Snapchat at any age, uh, I, it's just like it's so closely related with uh, sexting or even worse, you know? Okay, but what about WhatsApp? Uh, I, I mean, I have, I know it's very popular in Japan and I have a lot of friends in Canada who exclusively use WhatsApp. So I... I don't really have anything to say because I've never used WhatsApp. I've never had to use it, but uh, it seems very popular in different countries. Yeah, it just feels like like maybe it's popular in more countries than that, but those are the two that I'm like aware of. Pretty big in the UK, Brazil. Sounds like it's everywhere besides the uh, United States then. Yeah, for anyone who's not in America, when I see Snapchat, I I like I just don't get good vibes. Uh, I for me, Snapchat is kind of like the thing of like you make a new friend, and then like six months down that friendship, you're like, oh hey, I see you have Snapchat. What is your name? It's just like, it, it's like a delicate thing. If you rush it, it feels like you show your intentions way too early. You know, I I don't think anyone has met me and asked me for my Snapchat with good intentions in mind. You know, like, that's just the energy I get. <laughs> uh. I'll check Snapchat once every six months. And... Uh, I, I think I check it... Like, I'll check it, like, once every few days. It's not, like, a constant uh, mobile thing for me. It's just, like, really, I just have three or four friends from high school that I 
only talk to them on Snapchat, and I think that's just the thing I keep having it. As a woman, I use it because I don't want to give people my phone number. I do get that. No, no, I do get that when it's, like, a complete stranger. I get, I don't, because, like, on, like, dating apps, I feel like you go dating app to Snapchat to cell phone. Like, I think I understand it in that context, you know? I, I don't know. I don't know. Like, I, I feel mixed about it. But, like, I can understand that, especially as a woman. I can understand that. No, I, I, I can see it. I think it's like the energy. I guess it's really the energy of the person asking, I guess. Red flags are when co-workers ask for Snapchat. I get that. Yeah, no, I get that one. Use Discord instead. Okay. Okay, well, uh, good luck with that. <laughs> uh, good luck with that one. Man, you 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 are brave <laughs> to go on Tinder and ask for someone's Discord handle. That you are brave. <laughs> you are brave. Like I, I hope you realize uh, what Discord looks like to non-gamers. I hope I hope you're aware, because you need to be self-aware if you're going to talk about that. <laughs> like I use Discord, you use Discord. But, uh, we, we all are aware of, like, bad things happening on Discord. And it's, like, how people only know the Smash community for the bad things. You know, it's, like, if bad things happen, we're going to focus on the bad. And if you're aware of the good, you see the good. But, I'm aware of what it looks like, but I don't care. No, 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 no. That's, that's okay. Y you can... You, like, I use Discord. We all, everyone in here probably uses Discord. But I'm just saying, do not go on Tinder and try to drop your Discord handle. That's all I'm saying. That is the only thing I am saying. It, it is not the green flag you think it is. <laughs> like, okay. Someone said, up. This is not fucking Twitch Plays Pokemon. <laughs> what? Good try, though. Wait, is it because of bad things and not gamer stigma? I think it's both. A little bit of both. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you for uh, Twitch plays. Mm -hmm. I appreciate it. Oh, I like the start nine. Oh, that's a classic. Have you talked about what's happening with Twitter and Reddit? N no. I don't... Th I'm not really that kind of guy who talks about current events. I just kind of ramble and get mad at public figures with Snapchat, apparently. Um... But I, I guess I think it's bad. I think it is shocking. I will talk about Twitter. I, I'm, like, less informed on the Reddit thing. I, like, I, I'm caught up to it, but it's just, like, something I'm not, like, as invested in, so I don't really care. But, uh, with Twitter, I think it's shocking how much worse the platform is each and every single day. It's crazy, right? Um, and I don't know if you guys feel similarly, but I... If Twitter crashes and dies, I will finally be free. Yeah. I I think if Twitter dies, I'm just going to use that as a way to stop going on social media. Uh, so I'm honestly kind of rooting f for it to go under. Uh, I, I would love to live a life where I just kind of make videos, uh, stream, and, and just kind of go outside for every moment outside of that. That would be great. Because it sucks, because as a creator, you kind of feel like you gotta use social media. But I think I'm like, I think I'm over the hill. I don't, I don't know how long I'm going to be a YouTuber content creator for, but I think I'm over the halfway point at that point. I, I like, I don't know what that means, but uh, I, I think, I don't know how much time I want to keep doing it, you know? So uh, I'm having fun with it right now. 
and I think I'm just going to keep doing that. But uh, I'm at the point where I don't really feel the need to optimize every single thing I do because social media is grating and it's exhausting. So I, I just like making YouTube videos, you know? I, I was a, a film major who got into YouTube because I like making silly videos. And here I am eight years later, still making silly videos. Uh, really, uh, nearly 10 years later. In January, it's gonna be a decade. God damn. Ooh. Is this a subtle hint that you're quitting? No. No, it's not. It's... I've always talked about it, where it's just like... I don't want to do this forever. Because... I just don't think it's good for your mental health. <laughs> like, as, as fucked as that sounds, like, I just don't think... This is job. This job is good for your mental health. Uh, I I think, yeah, just freedom. What do you think you do after? Fucking anything, <laughs> man. Like uh, anything. I think, I like. I would want to do exactly what you're doing right now, which is fucking anything else. Uh. Yeah, I'm fine. Because a lot of people will be like, oh, like, do you think you have enough money to live the rest of your life? And it's like, no, <laughs> probably not. But that's fine. You know, I don't, I don't really, really think I care. If I have to go be poor and starving for a little bit, that's okay. That's the human experience. I will uh, have a f fun, like, 10, 15 years. And then, uh, we'll, we'll see. Uh, do you think you'll stop completely or post a video every once in a while? Uh, I think I would like to have a, of a world where I still post, like, as a passion project every now and then. But I think doing that also really dampens the departure, you know? So it's like, like me saying I'm quitting means less if I do that. Because then I'm going to have to quit again one day, like, entirely. Would I ever go back to school after YouTube? I've thought about it. I mean, I would just like some some chill job. Like, uh, like I think I could just work part time somewhere and live be happy. You know. Don't say quitting. Say you're gonna be doing less. Yeah, yeah, but I feel like it's kind of a binary scale. I feel like there's no purpose in announcing you're gonna do less. Just do less, you know? I, I feel like if you announce it, it just makes people expect less. It, I, I don't know. I, I think it's just like it, you're shooting yourself in the foot if you just want to announce that you're going to, hey, I'm not going to try as hard, but I hope you keep watching the uploads. You know, you don't need to announce that. You can just do it. Uh, isn't that what you want, though? N not really. I don't want that to be the pers- like, it's what I would like to do, but I don't want that to be the perception of me, you know? Yeah, I don't know. I've just been thinking about it lately. Like, I am, uh... I've had my fun, and I'm still having fun for now. But I, I think, I think, like, the sad part is... It's harder to get videos out because I keep wanting to push the same standard of quality, but I don't have like the motivation to uphold it consistently. You know, it's so it's like videos take so long to come out now because it takes longer for me to get that motivation. Maybe continue the music career Pfft. as a job. Ooh. Maybe as a hobby, <laughs> like, like, you realize how hard it is to make money in music, right? That that shit is hard. Yeah, known stable job indie musician. <laughs> you are so right. You're so right. <laughs> is Jaden like a sister to you? What the fuck? Why do people ask such weird questions? 
I, I like Jaden and I have like talked about it and analyzed it, and we we feel like it's because of her and like the odd ones out because the internet shipped them so hard, and then obviously they never dated. So now when she comes back into the public frame with like a, another close male friend, everyone is like too scared to ship us. You know, they're like, oh, I don't know. I, I think they're like brother and sister. I don't even see it. You know, it's like a weird overreaction. <laughs> it, it, it's like uh, they're trying to not say that they think we're dating so they're saying i think they're like brother and sister which is way weirder <laughs> i think it's way weirder uh don't ship real people sure but like also let's not project these uh sibling relationships that feels even weirder to me <laughs> i think also Jaden being ace okay so i i always bring this up in the in the same breath as when people ship Jaden and I, don't ship people because it's weird. Don't ship people because she's ace. Like, people who are Arrow and ace can still have romantic and intimate relations. And they can even want to for different reasons. Like, I, I think that's the weirdest part is when people try to act like morally superior and be like, oh, I'm not shipping them because they're ace and it's just like i i don't know i don't know you know what you know what i mean you know what i'm trying to say like it's i'm not encouraging you to ship but i'm saying that's not the reason not to like ace can just ace people can date they can exist they can do all those things people just identify with labels that make them feel more comfortable with their own being and that's perfectly fine you know <laughs> It's, uh, I think I always get a little tight whenever I see, like, that message. Because it's said with such good intent. But it's, like... You know, I don't know. Ace, what happened to gay or straight? And then South Arctic Bird says, for real. Fuck you. It's... It's so much more... Let people, let's just let people, if it's not harming you, just, it was a joke? Okay, it's, it's not a funny joke. You're, you're joking about people being oppressed for how they feel and identify. <laughs> yeah, it's a womp womp. Yeah, the intrusive thoughts won. <laughs> the intrusive thoughts won. It was a, it was a, like, okay, it was a bit, it was a bit, we can all own up to it. It was a bit, we're moving on. But I think, like, people think like that, right? These people can be, like, hetero-romantic. Yeah, it's true. And it's, like, I don't know, I feel like every shiny hunting stream I've done, we've ended up on this topic somehow. The only ship I have is content creators and happiness. I understand the message, but that is one of the corniest fucking things I have ever heard. Like, like, thank you for what you're trying to say, but goddamn, man. <laughs> uh, you're like kind spirited. I shouldn't clown on it, but like, come on, man. <laughs> yeah, shown in pro tag energy. <laughs> it got a good laugh out of me, you know? So, like, like, <laughs> like, no hate. It's just fucking funny, dude. <laughs> uh, hey, at Alfred, why doesn't my dad love me? Probably because you resort to asking in Twitch chat. <laughs> like, come on, man. You're making it too easy. <laughs> <laughs> Look, man. <laughs> Look, man. <laughs> womp womp. Yeah. God damn, dude. That's a lot of Caterpies. It's 70. Oh, wow. Thank you for the seven subs. What a fun, unique number. I'm glad that last joke about bullying two chatters in a row really spoke to you. And... <laughs> 
Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? <laughs> Who received? Who was one of the lucky seven? <laughs> uh, yeah, there is still a chance we get a uh, sub-100 encounters. Uh, Caterpie or Bulbasaur. Is it intrusive thoughts if you say everything you think? Yes. Yeah, just because you have no filter doesn't mean that you don't have intrusive thoughts. I would say you just have no control. If you do not think you have intrusive thoughts, you should self you should reevaluate the things you say in public scenarios. <laughs> that, that is my suggestion. <laughs> uh, Necroke, can we get level 15 hype trained? I, dude, I forgot. I just forget that like. Uh, YouTube Super Chats are part of Twitch now. That's crazy. Yeah, that's when the intrusive thoughts won the battle and the war. That's so true. <laughs> uh, okay, more Caterpies. Uh, is Caterpie... Caterpie's gold when shiny, right? Um, wow, thank you for all the all the subs and the massive rates. Jake, thanks for, for the seven months saying bullying chatters is kind of funny. Uh, I do. I do think it's funny. Uh, I do feel bad when you remember that that's a human being on the other side. But I don't think that's why any of us go on the internet to be reminded of that. You know, it's just uh, just little, little uh, lines of dialogue from perhaps an AI. Who knows? Does anyone go on the internet to be proven wrong? Be honest. Gotcha. Yeah, no. I run Poppy. I go on the internet to be bullied by Jacob. I'm... That... Thank you. It... It feels a little pointed when you put it that way, but uh, I'm happy to deliver that when I can. Do chatters exist? It's weird, because I feel like no. Uh, you know, I hit 3 million subs earlier this year. Woo! You know, that's really cool. But I think that's an impossible number for me to realistically wrap my head around. Like, when I hit 1 million, when I hit 100k, I couldn't even, like, wrap my mind around that. And I think, like... The most fans I've ever met at a time was probably like 100 at like a convention or something, you know? Uh, one time I went to Disneyland and got stopped uh, like roughly like 30 times. And that felt like a lot, you know? Like I met 30 fans that day and it, it felt like just a ton. So it's those moments when I meet people Sometimes they'll say, hey, you responded to this, or hey, I said this in your chat, and sometimes I'll remember it, and it's like, huh, that's crazy. Especially because, like, I can't put faces to any of these names, but sometimes I can. Do you mind getting talked to when seen in public? Uh, no. No, I usually try to talk to people. It It is... <laughs> I will say, it is awkward sometimes, because uh, you really don't know what to say to these people. Uh, and they are nervous and excited to meet you, and they also don't really know what to say. So I would say a majority of fan interactions are just uh, me running through the script. Uh, if you ever see me on the side of the road, I'm sorry. I have a prepared script for all of you. Uh, if I feel... Sometimes you run into fans who are talking a lot. You know, sometimes you run into people who want to have like a full conversation. And then, what every YouTuber says, this, this is not just me, by the way, this is every YouTuber. Um, if they feel like you are talking too much or you are talking too little and they don't know what to do, they will say, hey, would you like a picture? That's it. Because then they say yes, and then you take the picture, and then after the picture, you can kind of like walk off after that. Oh, low batteries evolved. And what if we say no? If you say no, it's the same line of dialogue. It's like, oh, okay. Well, if you don't want one, that's fine. Have a good day. See you, man. Bye. Oh, is he 50% charged? 
Yeah, I mean, I guess he's never going to get full battery. Crobat is non-existent. But he's like, he's half there. Right? Yeah, that's 50%. Uh, crunch, nice. Plus one to Koga's gem. No, I counted this one already. Uh, so th this is still number 26. Uh, do I do conventions often? Uh, no. Uh, first off, uh, I don't really like conventions. Uh, I used to go to conventions a lot. And then you just kind of realize I'm just home. I'm away from home. And, like, I love traveling. But conventions aren't traveling, it, you know? It's like you go through all the hellish parts of the airport, and then you go to a crowded, sweaty, smelly room for three days, and then you go home. Uh, I like going to, like, conventions because you get to see friends and stuff like that. I like getting to meet fans. But uh, it's hard. It's, it's hard for me to enjoy conventions because it's just, like, one, I, I don't want this to sound like a, oh, poor pitiful me, you know, but it's hard to go to conventions as a creator because you have to be like on, you know, like the power button is on. You have to, to be in and content creator mode the whole time. So it's it's like that's something you have to consider where it's it's fun meeting fans, but it's exhausting. Um, Ludwig Vid. Con horror stories. I mean, I I haven't heard them, but I believe them. I I mean, anything I have, Ludwig probably has way worse. Because I I think like, uh, there's two types of parasocial fans. Uh, there are parasocial fans, and the parasocial fans that don't think they're being parasocial. Because I feel like Ludwig gets a lot of that because he made like the whole "I'm not your friend," so people feel close to him because they're like, "Oh, you're so real for saying that," and it's like. Uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm also very outspoken of parasocial relationships, but I think that also has to do with it, right? Like, it's it's the people who are like, they're, it's the same energy as ironic humor, because it's like, there gets to a point where it's not so ironic, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's people think that... They understand what parasocial means, so they think they're over it, right, I guess? I don't get parasocial relationships like, dog, you'll never meet this person. Yeah, I mean, I do. I do get them. I, it's, I don't think parasocial relationships are, I genuinely believe this person is my friend. I don't think it's that simple. I think parasocial relationships are people who know a lot about the person and subconsciously feel more comfortable with them than they should be with a stranger. Just because if you watch my stream, you know a lot about me. You know my interests, you know my uh, vocabulary, you know stories from me. Which, you know. Yeah, you know of the content creator, but you don't know the content creator. I think you can even simplify it to, you know the content creator, but not the person. You know, because uh, the one thing is every content creator puts their best foot forward. You know, like, it's like you hear bad shit about everyone. Like, just, th just think about your your life. Think about your groups of friends. Have you ever had a problem with a close friend? And it didn't end the friendship or anything. Or sometimes you had a problem with a close friend and it wasn't that big of a deal, but you still went their separate ways afterwards. Every single person in the sun has stuff like that. And I'm not saying everyone's a bad person, but everyone has done things that have upset people. And it's like, I'm not going to talk about those things I have done to upset friends as a content creator because it doesn't make me look great, you know? And I think that's true for every single content creator. And that's the dangers of parasocial is that you're only aware of the good stuff, you know? I think, I think that's what... The dangers of parasocial is that you only know the best traits of a person, I guess, you know? Opinion on taxes? <laughs> what a transition. Yeah, it's a never meet your heroes kind of thing. Eh, I mean, 
as a content creator who has met several content creators I've looked up to, I don't think it's uh, never meet your heroes because a lot of the people I watched growing up have turned out to be really cool guys, you know. And and I think I think that's pretty cool. Like I don't know. I think it's meeting. Okay. Here, like, here's an example of parasocial. Like, I grew up watching certain creators, and then I met them in person. I had to unlearn everything I've known about this person, you know? Because it's like, it's not fair for me to know these things about this person and then, like, assume it's true now. So, uh, like, you could even say, like, Ross, like, Rubber Ross is one of my closest friends. But I did watch him on Gang Rumps go growing up. So whenever I started getting close to him, I was kind of like, oh my god, you know, like I watched this guy for years. That's so cool that we're friends. But you don't want to feel like it's cool that we're friends because I felt like that mindset is annoying, you know? It's, uh, you know, meet your heroes, become friends with content creators and stuff like that. Uh, but. Yeah, I guess. I, I don't know. It's just, you gotta unlearn it. You just have to unlearn what you know if you want to be friends with someone who you might have some kind of parasocial aware... Uh, just, just knowledge of? I don't know. Yeah, don't put them on pedestals. You just gotta separate the persona from the person. Yeah, that's all. I always get nervous whenever I start becoming friends with someone I used to be a fan of. Yeah, no, it's, it, it, it is nerve-wracking. I thought I was immune from it, but uh, sometimes... I think if I became a fan of someone right now, I really like their stuff, and then I met them, I think I would feel nothing. But if I met someone who I was a fan of when I was younger, I would get nervous. That that's it's weird. Like that's where the divide is for me. Dude, that's me. If I ever meet Markiplier, uh. Dude, I didn't even watch Markiplier growing up, and uh, he sat right in front of me at Creator Clash, and even I was, like, starstruck, because uh, I knew about him my whole life, you know? I, I never really watched him growing up, but it, it was crazy, uh, and and I, I thought it was was really cute, because I didn't even know he that was Mark at first, because this was just a, a dude with his hood up, sitting in the chair throughout Creator Clash saying nothing. <laughs> and I, I thought, I was, I was like, I don't know who this guy is. And then uh, Ethan was on stage. Crank Gameplays was on stage, uh, you know, doing his Creator Clash. And then Mark Adams started screaming and cheering and I heard his voice and that's when I realized it was him. But I kind of thought it was, I was like, oh, that's nice that like he came out only to support Ethan. I don't know. Like, I thought it was a nice moment from two people I... Well, I know Ethan pretty well, but, like, I, I don't know Mark. I was like, you, you see. So that's, like, a parasocial moment for me, right? <laughs> but I still thought it was a nice moment. Do you get nervous when talking to other content creators? Uh, I don't... I don't... Kinda. I think it's, like, talking to content creators is... is uh, as a content creator... Uh... I'm going to change his name to 50% charge now. Uh, is it 50% battery? Yeah, I think 50% battery. Uh, I think, like, it's it's hard talking to content creators. Because, like, this sounds shitty, right? It, it sounds shitty. But you always have to ask, why is this person talking to me? Uh, not in, like, a get away, peasant. But it's always, like, what are their intentions? Because uh, for me... Uh, I always used to, like, assume everyone was talking to me with the best of intentions. But sometimes you realize that some people just want to talk to you so they can tell other people they talk to you. And that feels pretty shitty. You know? And... And it's... it's Sometimes it's with other content creators. Sometimes it's just with random people. Um, yeah, it blows. It's... This is not a mentality I had when I started content creation. It's something that has been reinforced over like the past six, seven, eight years, you know? 
it, yeah, it's just, it's, it's, this isn't unique to me. Uh, if you ask any content creator, they can tell you an experience that they've had of someone who just, just kind of viewed them as, as a prop, you know? Oh, that Beedrill, that's crazy. I haven't seen Beedrill yet. Like delusion, man? I don't think it's delusion, man. I, I think it's, I, I think it's people intentionally. Like, I think they're following their life as intended. I was saying the internet was a different place back then. I mean, I think, I don't think I really became too self-aware of it until uh, I like moved to LA. Because uh, if you could imagine it, Los Angeles is very clout chasey, just, just all around. Um, which makes complete sense when you think about it. So uh, living in LA, uh, you'll go to like LA event. I just had a lot of people like this butterfly, not butterfly effect, like this telephone effect where someone was like, oh, this person told me you guys hung out and you know each other and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, who the fuck is this person? <laughs> you know, and then they'll like show me a picture of them. Or, like show me their socials. I'm like, oh, I, I think I was maybe at like a, a party with them and we were in the same room. Y you know, like it's it, it's stuff like that where it's like, uh, oh, why that? Why? Why am I even <laughs> mentioned in this? Yeah, that happens a lot. And I think those are the stories that feel the grossest. When it's like another creator you know and they like mention you, it doesn't really matter. I don't, I don't feel weird about that. But it's like someone you just have, you have no idea who they are. I don't know. It's weird. Internet is just high school drama cranked up to 100. I, I don't think it's cranked up to 100. I think it's just high school drama. Uh, I think I try to... Def I try to befriend people who kind of stay in their own lane. And I think that's why I'm never really going to be in that like inner circle of Twitch. Uh, because uh, I, I feel uncomfortable commenting on drama in any capacity. Because if like it's then it's a statement. It's it's like a, it's something. I don't know. I, yeah, Bobby. I just like being on my fun little island. Uh... I like just doing my own thing, and I, I take a lot of pride that I, I am on my own little island, because that's exactly where I want to be. I love not knowing what's going on. Okay, but here's the thing. I love knowing what's going on. <laughs> uh, but I don't, I don't want that to be my platform, you know? <laughs> I love being in the know, don't get me wrong. But I want to be in the know as like someone reading a tabloid, not someone writing the tabloid, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> yeah, you know, like, uh, <laughs> I think that's reasonable. You know, <laughs> I think that's a very understandable situation to be in. Sometimes the tea hits, that's all I'm saying. Weren't you in the running for biggest gossip? Yeah, of my friend group, that is different. <laughs> Also, I didn't win for the reason. Alpha, there's a shiny. Was it the Pidgey? I thought that Pidgey was shiny, but I already have a Pidgey. I don't think it was. I mean, I think people a lot of the time see like the red sparkles. It wasn't even a competition. Uh, dude, okay. I... I have this really funny screenshot. Here, let me, let me, let, let me see if I can find it. Uh, so this isn't something that everyone in our group of friends or like, if you guys watching will not fully understand this, but I promise you anyone watching in my group of friends, 100% understands this. Uh, anytime there is any minor drama in our friend groups ever, uh, this is what my, wait, shit. This is what my Discord looks like. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's all I want to say. That, that, I think this image says everything, okay? <laughs> any Anytime there is anything drama adjacent, that is what my DMs look like, okay? <laughs> so, uh, now you know. <laughs> That's how I know some shit went down. <laughs> what?
Why do they go to you? No, 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 it's not that they're going to me. It's it's that, like, they just want someone to talk about it. Misery loves company, okay? <laughs> it's like, I'm, like, again, I love being in the know, and they love being in the know. They'll ask me if I know something, or if they know something, they will also just tell me. So it's, uh, everybody wins here. Do both of them have similar screenshots with you? I mean, I think the three of us just message each other. Clearly, if they're messaging me, I am messaging them. Um, but yeah, there is a, uh, a... Like, obviously, our whole friend group has, like, a Discord server. And inside that Discord server, there is a, a girly pop group chat. And, and uh, I, I am definitely in that. I think that speaks for itself. Oh, who, who did I just run into? Um, okay, so this is the 100th encounter. Uh, also, Cosmic. Thank you for the 10 gifted. Um, okay, so what, I, what I'm always going to do, 100 low-key means 101, because I'm going to give you guys the 100th spawn. So uh, we're going to catch this Pokemon, and afterwards, if a shiny spawns after that, we're going to count it. Uh, if not, we run another prediction. Oh, yeah. The doubters statistically should win on the first hundred. Uh, they have lost before, which was a statistical anomaly. But, uh, let's see. Any shinies? Spawn? Nope, that one was not the shiny. Uh, okay. So that prediction is over. The doubters win. Kind of as expected. Um... Now let's go and make another one. Uh, and this one is for 200. Um, yeah, but Cosmic, thank you again for the subs. Um, can you join the Crazy Frog Discord? Oh, I was in the Crazy Frog Discord, but I left a while back. It became too much. Too much drama in the Crazy Frog Discord, man. Uh, what was funny was the Crazy Frog Discord is probably one of the most elaborate, elaborately set up discords I have ever seen. And they have chat rooms for like every language, which makes sense. But then they have one for the seven seas. What the fuck does that mean? Uh, so me and my friends thought it would be funny, so we all joined the One Piece server, or the Crazy Frog Discord, and started talking in the Seven C servers about One Piece. And then a lot of other people kind of followed suit, and there was one guy who started leaking One, leaking One Piece. Just saying the most outlandish shit is gonna happen, and just be like, trust. And so far, uh... I, yeah, I think he was just making shit up, but he got a couple things right. <laughs> Which is fucking crazy. So, uh, shout out. Yeah, I, I don't think it was like a, he was an insider leaking stuff. I think he just said some bullshit, and in a very roundabout way, it was true. What was it? Uh, it was 1044 related stuff. I'll just say that. Like, it, it was kind of stuff you could have predicted, but, you know. Yeah, his source was that he made it the fuck up. Yeah, we would ask for a source, and he'd just say trust. And we'd go, okay. Bulbasaur, please move. Uh, okay, I'll take this Caterpie. Get good vibe from this little patch. Didn't you say something about Laboon being an ancient weapon? He did say that, yeah. Uh, that was not what I was referring to about being correct. Also, did anyone go to Anime Expo? Any anime-only One Piece fans go to Anime Expo asking for a friend? Because, <laughs> dude, fuck anime watchers said Anime Expo. Dude, they, they spoiled a massive thing that's manga only. And anime watchers didn't even get a chance. <laughs> they didn't even get a chance to be caught up. 
And that shit is funny to me. Unfortunate, but holy shit. Oh, that's so funny to me. They said fuck anime watchers, man. They spoiled it more than Jump Force did. I don't think that's true. I think if that spoiler was out at the time of Jump Force, they would they would have absolutely spoiled it. Because Jump Force definitely spoiled the characters and newest transformations that were available at the time. So, I, they definitely would have. They definitely would have spoiled it. Yeah, it would have been in the trailers, my dude. I'm shocked Jump Force didn't just drop 1044 DLC, man. <laughs> He, he thought they would have. Wait a sec. I just see an, a wild Evan in chat without a VIP button. Let's fix this. Uh, did Jump Force 2 get canceled? Dude, I have no idea. Uh, I used to have a connection at Namco who would talk to me and invite me to things. And then I made my Jump Force video, and I have not heard from them since. So, uh, maybe they don't work there anymore. Maybe I'm on their shit list for that video. Either way, I understand. <laughs> you you gotta understand, when you make those videos, they come at a price. Womp womp. Yeah, I, I do wonder, though, if they would make a Jump Force 2. Because I, I feel like the game sold pretty well, if I'm not wrong. Uh, I would talk to several casual friends, and they were like, Dude, you're gonna play Jump Force? Like, I think a lot of casual anime and manga readers were, uh, like, excited for it. I do hope they make another Jump Force, though. Because I don't think there has ever been a better bad game. And, like, I, I say that confidently. Uh... Like, it's just they take all these characters that have established story and then bastardize it by putting them all together. And it's just so funny. Like, I don't know. I, I can't think of anything else that has been unsuccessful in being that bad of a funny game. Like, dude, they have... Think of, like, the Dio clip I have. The, you know, Light Yagami asking Goku about the Dragon Balls. Like, it's just such funny concepts only plausible in fanfic. Oh, it's so funny. It's so... F Sonic Boom, though? Like, okay, Sonic Boom is... Is funny. Don't get me wrong. But I do not think you can compare Sonic Boom to seeing Light Yagami talk to Son Goku about the Dragon Balls. That shit is hysterical. I don't know, man. Like, it's... It's... You cannot compare it. Yeah, and Deku is racist in it. You know? Like, that's funny. Like, when when uh, Dio reveals himself, you expect him to say, it was me, Dio, or some meme like that. But instead, he just says, I am Dio. <laughs> yeah, dude, for Christ's sake, it spoils every series and its own. The final boss is playable in, like, the middle of the game. That is funny as fuck. Oh my god. Did you see the Sonic Chronicles devs talked about the sequel was going to be? Uh, I saw someone talk about the devs talking about it, and I did like a couple Google searches and couldn't find it. Uh, what was Sonic Chronicles 2 supposed to be about? Because um, I know Eggman was obviously the antagonist, given how it sets up. Uh, first time chatter says, I like MILFs. Okay, thank you. I feel knowledgeable. Uh, Knuckles X Shade. Oh, do they... Do they single-handedly repopulate the Echidna race? Damn, that's crazy. That's crazy. That, that, they shoved that ship in there, didn't they? Oh, here's the summary. Okay, here, let me, let me look at this. Uh, just like in the teaser of the inn, Eggman took over... Oh, thank you. Saved you a click. Uh, revolve, revolve. Shut up, Twitter. Revolve around the exploring the world with Eggman's aesthetics, freeing the people, building an army to stop Eggman. At the end, Mega God Argus would appear, and Sonic and Eggman would team up again. Fucking okay. Actually, that's kind of stupid. 
<laughs> That's fucking dumb. <laughs> and the fact that they've they've posed Eggman to be a villain and then at the end they go, actually we gotta team up again. That is uh how they make Sonic Chronicles 3, actually, where Eggman's like, okay, now I'm gonna do what I wanted. Will you be attending the Pac-Man 99 funeral? Oh, I did not know that game was dying. Shout out Tetris 99 for surviving. I felt like all those games are gonna die. I'm still real life upset that Mario 35 died. Cause that was one of the most fun games I've played in a very long time. Uh, I really enjoyed it. Mario 35 was a genuinely good game. And then they just decided, what if you didn't get to play it? Yeah, they, it had such good content potential. I understand the viewer base or player base might have dwindled, but like, I don't, I don't know, man. It sucks. It sucks. Ever played the J Stars game? Uh, I think I did. I played the Smash Bros. Type One on the the DS. I don't remember what it was called though. I think it was J Stars though. Um, I think it's a cool idea. I wish... Dude, if we got, like, an actual platform fighter with shonen reps... Oh, it's over. Like, I'm very slow to call anything the Smash Killer, but I would put my money on that. No, dude. Like, I think the hardest part... I think the reason Smash is so successful is nothing to do with the game mechanics. I think it has to do with the casual appeal and the IP, the brand awareness. I think it's literally just those two things. I think people come for the IP and then they stay for the mechanics. I think the mechanics help keep the player base, but uh, it's, it's really just people want to play as their favorite characters. It's that simple. Um, no, for real, I think I saw a shiny Bulbasaur. Uh, I feel like chat would... Everyone would tell me if they saw a shiny. Yeah, like... Here's one thing. Uh, whenever... I love Rivals to Death. I, I do. Um, no, this one's not shiny. If that's the one you were talking about. I love Rivals to Death. But, like... I, I get excited every time they add a new character. It's like, ooh, let's see how this one plays. But when it... When you even hear that a Smash reveal is gonna happen... It's like, clear my calendars, you know? Like, I I hate the season of Smash, spe Smash speculation for DLC characters. But I cannot say it's not the hypest part of every Nintendo Direct. It, it is unreal how exciting new characters in Smash Brothers are. It's, it, it's like, I'm happy when it's over... But I'm, I miss it when it's gone, you know? <laughs> it's... Yeah. I hate to watch her go, but I love to watch her leave, you know? <laughs> That's how I feel about Smash reveals. Yeah, I think if Rivals got too bloated, Workshop would be ruined. Eh, I don't, I don't think so. I am shocked, though. I am so utterly shocked that Rivals didn't blow up uh, when they added the Workshop patch. I thought that was going to blow Rivals the fuck up because people can play Riv a platform fighter and fight as, like, Sans Undertale versus Jerma. You know, like, how the fuck is that not appealing to people? You can throw in Goku. You can throw in Springtrap. You can throw in Among Us Crewmate. Like, it's it's Smash Brothers with any character in the world. Yeah, even Gangster Mario. It's, like, I understand that there's, like, a very diehard competitive rival scene and they want to be known as more than rivals or more than Workshop. But the thing is, Workshop is such the, it's the perfect gateway to get people to play rivals. And I am so utterly shocked that it did not convert more people. Like, I am shocked. No, it's such a good game. Don't forget Ronald McDonald. Oh, I haven't. 
Yeah, you want to play as Among Us crewmate? Yeah, it's just fan-made stuff. And it's like, if you really want to add any character you like to this game, you just can. They have publicly accessible tools, and you can just rip sprites and add them to the game. Like, it's insane. What's the full game name? Uh, Rivals of Ether. Uh, it's on, the workshop is only available on uh, PC, but if you want to play the base game on like Switch, Xbox, whatever, you can. Uh, but just know workshop is only on PC. Yeah, I have not made a character in that game. I have just uh, taken the hard works of others and turned them into YouTube videos. So I don't know how easy or hard it is to actually make characters. But it's clearly possible because there are several people who have done it. It's probably due to a lack of awareness. No, it is. It 100% is. The game did not blow up because people are not aware of it. Uh, like, I agree. That is that is the logic. But I'm just shocked that it didn't spread. Like, I'm surprised there aren't more Twitter clips of people being like, imagine showing this to someone in the 1900s and it's like Springtrap versus Among Us, you know? <laughs> I'm surprised there aren't more of that that spread the game. Uh, Rivals 2 is coming out. That is true. Uh, I'm going to play it. I'm excited for Rivals 2. I was talking to Dan. Like, Dan, the creator of Rivals. I love that dude. Uh, we don't talk too much anymore. Uh, but he was reaching out to me because he wants me to try Rivals 2 at PAX or something. And uh, I don't want to go to PAX, but I want to try Rivals 2, you know? <laughs> That's where I'm at. Um, who is your favorite Gen 1 Pokemon? Uh, my favorite Gen 1 Pokemon? Uh, I don't know. I'm going to say... Uh, it probably is Vaporeon? No, it's probably Dra uh, Dragonair. Actually, I think it might be Dragonair. Uh, my top three would probably be Dragonair, Vaporeon, Gengar? Uh, Charizard X, if we're counting Megas? But uh, I think that would probably be like my favorite few Pokemon in this gen. I think Charizard is overrated. I hear you, but at this point, I think that's an overrated opinion. <laughs> I think Charizard is cool and you guys are mean. <laughs> and I'll stand by that one. But it's true though. No, I understand. Charizard is a very well-liked Pokemon, but it might just be because it's a cool design. Okay? All right. I think one of the funniest tweets I've ever seen, it just perfectly appeals to my humor. Uh, it, 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 this is a very specific tweet, but it was uh, the BBC tweets da or treats David Tennant like Pokemon treats Charizard. And I just thought that was the funniest shit I've ever read. <laughs> it is such a specific tweet, but it makes perfect sense. Whoa, there's a lot of Pokemon here, I feel. I'm overwhelmed. I'm going to move over here. Me and Charizard are the same height. Charizard being 5'7 is so funny. <laughs> I don't care what you say. As a kid, you expect it to be so large, but that dude is 5'7, and that's hysterical. Dragonite's just Charizard, but better? I disagree. I'm not a huge Dragonite fan. I think he looks too goofy. He's too Barney the Dinosaur for me, man. Like, it's... I don't, like, I don't understand how he's supposed to be cool. Like, I, I am, I wouldn't say I'm a Dragonite hater, but I'm definitely not a believer. Salamence is 411. I think that's a bit more understandable because he's, like, on all fours. Uh, that is still, like, shorter than I'd imagine. But I, I do think Salamence being 411 is, like, a bit more understandable. I think if Charizard laid on all fours, he's probably also, like, four. Uh, he's like four feet. He's probably smaller. Uh, 
Uh, favorite Pokemon from every gen? Uh, well, I made a tier list. If I had to say off the top of my head, uh, Gen 1 is, I'll say, Dragonair. Gen 2 is Heracross. Gen 3, I, I like a lot of Gen 3, but I, obviously Absol. Uh, Gen 4, uh, Togekiss, maybe? Togekiss Garchomp. Uh, Gen 5... I would say Gen 5 has a lot of bangers. I think Gen 5, I have to say Whimsicott. Uh, it's Whimsicott or Levani. Like, I know Levani is out there, but it has to be Whimsicott. Uh, and then Gen 6, Sylveon. Gen 7, uh, Buswell or Primarina or Mimikyu. Uh, Gen 8, Hatrim. <laughs> Easy pick. Uh, Gen 9. Uh, Serilege, Miascarada, Iron Gender. Iron Valiant. Sorry, I legit forget that's not its real name. <laughs> uh, yeah, probably anywhere in those. I nicknamed my Iron Valiant Iron Gender, and I kind of forget that's not its real name, I'll be honest. Yeah, Tinkaton's up there too. I forget. I genuinely do. What's your favorite glitch Pokemon? The fuck? Like, like missing no? Is that is that what the question is? What's my favorite Pokemon game? Dude, okay, so... If you ask me what my favorite, favorite series is, I would say Pokemon. If you ask me what my top 10 favorite games of all time are, none of them are Pokemon. I, I feel like... I feel like Pokemon games aren't meant to to be good. <laughs> they're, they're meant to be played. Does that make sense? I don't know what the fuck my favorite Pokemon game is. I, I feel like I like visually black and white the most, but everyone's like, that's when the plot's good. And I'm like, I think that's when the plot is acceptable. Uh, I like Legends Arceus. I like black and white. And I... But... I replay Emerald the most because it has the mons I like the most, but I am also 27 years old, which means I grew up with it. So I don't know. PMD2, yeah, if you want to talk about like the the one well-written Pokemon game, I'll give you PMD2. Yeah, Pokemon is an institution, not a game series. That's truer words were never said. Show me shiny Caterpie. Oh, but what if? Oh, but what? But what? What if? Oh, but what if? Have you ever played non Pokemon Pokemon games? What the fuck does that mean? What the fuck? Wait, what is. Am I. Oh, like Tim Tim? Or just JRPGs? You've been at this for way too long. Oh, first time? <laughs> first time, huh? <laughs> I think, yeah, do you mean RPGs? <laughs> yeah, I have. I have played non-Pokemon Pokemon games once or twice. All right, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to the bathroom real quick. I can't put you guys in an encounter because they might run away and then we lose. So, um, uh, do your best. Try to count to 100. We'll see what happens.
Hey, do I have any uh, New York viewers? Uh, specifically cl ones close to Times Square? Uh, because... Uh, Medify recently tweeted out, I was like, hey, the most liked tweet response to this we'll put on Times Square. And, uh, to, wait, it's, what, what the fuck is today? Uh, it's the 11th. On July 13th, in two days, on Thursday, at 12.30 p.m. on the dot, Eastern Time, uh, Dot Collins' face will be on Times Square. So if anyone wants to make plans for that, uh, please get a picture of it in live time. Yeah, the, the picture of, of Colin's face. Uh, 12.30 on Thursday. On the dot. The same emote that's you've probably seen in Omega Strikers. That everyone's seen in Omega Strikers. Uh, Colin also, in our, in our Discord server, he posted a DM. He got from a random person. And they... I think, okay, I, I see how this lie happened, right? Someone in their friend group, not Colin, just a random person, said, who the fuck is this emote you keep uh, spamming? And then that person said, oh, it was a Make-A-Wish kid whose dying wish was to have his face be added to Omega Strikers. And then they DM'd Colin and was like, is it okay if I keep saying this? So, uh, I think Colin said yes, because that's kind of funny. But I think th that emote is so much funnier if you think about it as, like, someone's last wish was for this good picture of them to be added to the game. My sister was a Make-A-Wish kid. That's kind of messed up. Okay. But it's coming from the perspective of a complete stranger on the internet. I think you just kind of got to ride that one out. Like, it's... I, I have no control over this random person. Yeah, it's a, it's a womp womp kind of moment. Do I think it's a morally good? I'm not dying on that hill. Is it a funny DM to get from a complete stranger? Yes. That is what I'm laughing at. Uh, what? Okay, this is something... Uh, I don't talk about it often, because I think it's weird to. But I have done a few things for Make-A-Wish. And I think that's fucking crazy. Uh, I have played Smash Brothers with, uh, I think, three or four... I think, yeah, four... Uh, different kids from Make-A-Wish for like an hour. And that's fucking crazy to me. Like, I don't know. I like, I just get reached out on my business email. And did you forward Ariel them? Okay, so one, not funny. Two, uh, so I let's talk about that, right? There, There is like a, a precarious space in, uh, in time when you are playing Smash Bros with a Make-A-Wish kid, uh, because you really have to ask yourself, should I, should I win? And and how how hard should I win? There there, there is a limit. I will keep it a buck right now. Uh, I I have never done one of those things and tried my hardest. Uh. I, I think that is the morally correct answer, but it is something you have to mentally tell yourself to. You, you play doubles against CPUs. Well, you're pro like, okay, a lot of the stuff I did was in the pandemic on Wi-Fi. So it's like, you don't really have that luxury of playing against CPUs. None of, none of it has ever been in person. Um... Didn't Scott the Wasp make a whole 45-minute video for a Make-A-Wish kid? Oh, that's pretty cool. 
Uh, no, I mean, I, I, I didn't do that. I've never, I've always had them like, hey, let's play a game or talk for an hour. I've never had anyone like, my, my wish is for you to uh, make a video around this topic. And like, I, I, I think like, I don't want this to sound shitty, but I would probably turn that down. Uh, unless it was like something that was like closely related to me. Like if someone was like, uh, I want you to make like a Dark Souls video. It's like, ah, I don't really want to. You know, I like I think it's uh, I think that's a weird thing to, to ask. Uh, link your Twitch on your YouTube somewhere. I see your community post and the stream. Then there's no link. Okay, so hey, dumbass. Um, <laughs> that was mean. Uh, you can't put links in community posts. Otherwise, YouTube doesn't s s promote it because they don't want people to leave YouTube. So, I can't do that. If you go check the comment section, every single time, it is in the pinned comment. Because that is how you get away with it. So, yeah, hey, hey, dumbass, so aggressive for what? I, I, I stand by it. This is nothing new. People know how social media works. Could you put in the profile bio? On YouTube? Just check the fucking comments. That is the easiest place for it to be. You have to work so much harder to find the bio on a YouTube page than to just look at the pinned comment. Yeah, I'm sorry for opening with Hey Dumbass. You brought a really real concern, but you also did scream at me a little bit. So I think it goes well. Yeah, also I have Alpharad on Twitch. <laughs> yeah, you could probably Google Alpharad stream and find it very easily. Damn, these motherfuckers do not want to be shiny. Or just join the Discord. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, if, if they don't know about the Twitch, they definitely don't know about the Discord, right? Do you think you can beat Jaden in a Pokemon battle? What are what are what are the stakes? Like, what what are, what's the context? Like. We both build a team from scratch? Uh, maybe. Unless she made a team that counters the team I make. I, I don't know. I think that's such a, a rough question. Uh, if we're playing random doubles, I think I have a win rate. Random doubles, I think I have a positive win rate on Jaden. Uh, we play random doubles like once every few months. And we'll play it for like six hours. And... One of us, we either play for six hours or like 30 minutes. Because sometimes you'll just play with a friend and one friend gets absolutely shit stomped. Not because they're not a better player, but because that's how random doubles goes. And, uh... Uh, your favorite Pokemon versus her favorite Pokemon. Um, well, my favorite Pokemon is Fluttermane, uh, Goldingo, and, uh, uh... Uh, like what the, I, I think that's my favorite joke of all time when people will say like, uh, I wish people played with their favorite Pokemon and then it's like, okay, mine is my favorite Pokemon is Max EV Landorus T and <laughs> yeah, like if you really want to say my number one favorite Pokemon, oh, okay. Yeah. Blaziken versus Absol. Wonder who wins in that. <laughs> Yeah, my favorite Pokemon is Pre-Nerf Zacian. <laughs> That's, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Fluttermane's cool. I do think Fluttermane's pretty cool. But it's also one of the best Pokemon in current VGC meta. Which is why it was funny in that joke. Um, hello? Where, where are all the Caterpies at? Yeah, my favorite Pokemon is um, Fissure Ting Lu. <laughs> my favorite Pokemon is e e Eternatus Eternamax. That's. What are the stats on that thing? Because it's like unreal. Isn't it like base stat 1300 or something like that? I know it's. It's like a lot. Yeah, I know it's over a thousand. Let me 
grab one of these guys. My favorite Pokemon is Regigigas after five turns. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good answer. My <laughs> Sky, holy shit. Or Ash, what the fuck? I've never called you Sky. I just read the first word. Yeah, my favorite Pokemon is Facade, Trick Room, Flame Orb, or Saluna. <laughs> Ash, what what happened to you? <laughs> I didn't know you were that deep in a, in a competitive Pokemon. I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> yeah, you're in deep if you're dropping that. <laughs> My favorite Pokemon is Fissure No Garden Machamp. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, buddy. It, yeah, it's... I love the argument of, I wish people would fight with their favorite Pokemon, because it's like, uh, fuck you. That is my favorite Pokemon. I, I actually also liked... <laughs> I've always loved uh, uh, playing Paris Trap. Specifically the Pokemon that allow me to do it. Hello, Caterpie. Are we gatekeeping favorite Pokemon? No, no, it's just... The, the joke is that people always say, like, I wish people played with their favorites. It's like, well, what if? What if my favorite Pokemon right now happens to be... Why did, why, I, why did I take a drink of water there? Like, my hand just did it. I was going to say Fluttermane, but I don't know why I took a drink there. My favorite Pokemon is Babu. Yeah, I we have done a lot of... We've done a massive impact to the Bob the Hopip community. I will be honest, when I see Hopip, I, my brain says Babu, not Hopip. It's crazy how rewired that Pokemon is in my mind. I I have to like remind myself it's called Hoppit. Yeah, I think uh one of these next few streams. I know even if I do this casually, uh I am going to play, I think soon. I'm going out of town for like uh, two and a half weeks. Uh, I'm pretty much going to be gone all of August for the record. So no streams in August. But um, that will sometime in August or before then, I want to I want to do a playthrough of Emerald Kaizo without permadeath. Uh, I, I, if I were to grind, I think I, you know, you guys can believe this if you want. I think I could beat Emerald Kaizo if I really wanted to. I think Emerald Kaizo is a grind. And it takes, like, too much of your time to for it to be fun for me. Like, I think Emerald Kaizo is just... A, it's a knowledge thing. You take it very slow. And if I wanted to take it at that speed, I think I could. If I wanted to run Calx, if I wanted to plan out every single battle, which is very popular, that's how you beat Emerald Kaizo. Um, I think it would be possible for me to beat it. I just don't want to. <laughs> uh, I just don't want to do that. Um, it just it just doesn't sound fun to me. Yeah, the resources are there, and you definitely have people. I have people I can talk to about every split if I really want to. Um, there are guides for which encounters you should try to get. There are encounters for, what, like, guides on how to, like, ability check. Like, it's it's so possible to do, especially if you plan on every battle ahead of time. Uh, I just don't like running calcs for battles because I love uh, doing shit in the moment. Um, and you can't beat Emerald Kaizo that way. So, uh... I what I want to do for Emerald Kaizo is I want to play it without permadeath, but I'm going to keep all other Nuzlocke rules on. Like I'm only taking the first Pokemon per route. Uh, I'm only going to I'm not going to use items in battle, but I'm just not going to have permadeath on because it just it just doesn't sound like it'd be fun. It sounds like it'd be math homework. And I think if I do no permadeath, I'm allowed to go in blind. 
uh, because realize, uh, yes, it took Yawn like 151 encounters to beat the game, but what, like the first half of them were entirely blind, and this was bef he was the one who popularized the ROM, so like the community wasn't there for it yet. Just do what Small Ant did, and you'll be fine. He hasn't fucking beaten Emerald Kaizo. He played it for the first time the other day. And just did, like, one isolated split of it. With the counter, the encounters already predetermined. Not to, like, downplay him, but, like, let's give Emerald Kaizo runners a bit more credit there. <laughs> like, it, it's not something you can just do. Like, Emerald Kaizo is not something you can just pick up and do. Uh... Didn't Captain Kid beat it in eight attempts? Yes, but you have to realize that Captain Kid being in, in eight attempts is imp it's impressive. But there is so much more information done now than when Pokemon Challenges did it way back when. Y you know, like it's uh, knowledge is so crucial in a run like that. And just the fact so many people have done it before Captain Kid makes it so much more possible. Yeah, like, again, Yon went in blind for Pokemon, like, Emerald Kaisa for most of it. So when this Pokemon has some wild coverage move, he has to figure that out through a failed attempt. Yeah, and also, Brayden had 151 attempts from Pokemon Challenges to study, you know? Yeah, like, Pokemon, like, Emerald Kaizo is really just a game about knowledge. That, that is, that is, that is it. If you want to do a Nuzlocke, you cannot just, you can't, you, you can't. You cannot do that shit blind. Oh man, Shiny Caterpie looks a lot like Weedle. Uh, Ash, you want to, you want to know something funny about that? Uh, you are correct. Uh, so you see right here, uh, we have a shiny bee drill. Uh, well, uh, we also thought this was a shiny Caterpie at first. So you are correct. Uh, they do look a lot alike. I, I agree. I, I do agree. Uh, it is, uh, some would say too similar. And I didn't even realize until I already threw the Pokeball. Because uh, I was popping off, and then I looked at chat, and they said, does he know? And I go, uh-oh. If, as a streamer, if you ever see does he know in your chat, you have fucked up beyond belief. Uh, does the shiny of the color in the overworld show up? Yes, it does. Yeah, it's shiny in the overworld. Uh, even if a shiny looks a lot like the original, uh, it has, like, sparkles around it, so it's probably pretty easy to be able to tell. Um, my favorite raid message is when you get people to say, like, does he know, like, 10 minutes after the raid. Because I think it makes people very scared. Um, okay. I'll just take one of these little guys. I wish we had Sparkles and Scarlet Violet. Dude, I think day one, uh, I don't know who was here for the day one Scarlet Violet stream, but I definitely walked over a, a shiny and overworld in Scarlet Violet. And I know a lot of people did, but it's like Legends Arceus, just the sparkle sound and visual cue, it's so good. It's so good, and why remove it? Like, if you want to say, oh, they should be more rare, they shouldn't just like tell you when you find one. Like, I think you could argue just accessibility in general. You know, I think that's very helpful for people. It's such a good, it's so good. Yeah, there should 100% be a shine. I love the sound. Uh, so, I think, okay, here's the issue. I'm sure a lot of people, is this good, Leech Life, by the way? Uh, yes it is. Um... I'm sure a lot of you guys right, ran into this exact same thing as I did, or this thought process, where you say, 
Legends Arceus did so many things right that Scarlet Violet did wrong. How? And I, I think it's because both games were being developed at the exact same time. I I think, like, I understand, no, no, people say different teams. I think it was just that they were being developed at the same time. Because uh, I think if Scarlet Violet came out a year later, not like they had a year worth of production time added to it. Like, if it just, like, development started a year later on Scarlet Violet, they would have added that shit in. Because they didn't get to learn from each other. You know, Legends are Arceus didn't get to learn, learn from Scarlet Violet. Scarlet Violet, despite coming after, still didn't get to learn from Legends Arceus. And it's just because the games weren't out. I promise you in the next Pokemon game, you know, maybe this is hopeful thinking, uh, but I believe that, like, a lot, like, riding a bike sucks in Scarlet Violet, but it's so good in Legends Arceus. I, I do wholeheartedly believe that the next Pokemon game will have all those quality of life changes. Like, uh, if they make Scarlet Violet 2, or, you know, just Gen 10 or whatever, or if they make, you know, God forbid, Gen 5 remake in uh, Gen 9 style, whatever they end up doing, it will have the shiny thing on it. Uh, I, I do believe. Or Gen 9 style. I, think, I don't know if I said Gen 10 or not. We need a Pokemon Black White remake. Dude, I... I don't know if you guys have seen it, but it's the here. Here, let me let me let me try and find it real quick. Uh... Uh... <laughs> uh, I I found this image the other day, and it 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 uh it hit home. It hit home a, a little a little too much. Okay, so so this meme right here. Obviously, you guys have probably seen it. Uh. The caption of it was just, uh, wow, Omega Ruby, Alpha Sapphire, what an awesome remake. And then it was, maybe we don't need Gen 5 remakes. <laughs> like, it, I've never seen an image just hit my soul so hard. <laughs> and, and then I was like, oh, oh, it hurt. <laughs> it's so, it's so truthful. <laughs> Yeah, Penny got Evangelion. She she sure did, man. What's wrong with Omega Ruby? No, nothing's wrong. Uh, they're saying what has happened between Gen 3 and Gen 5 remakes to cause that. It's not even really about the Gen 4 remake. It's just about you grow up, you kind of learn what's acceptable and what they can... Oh, no fucking way! You are fucking kidding me! Really? Really? Dude! Dude! This is the second time this shit has happened! Oh, you know, I'm not known. This guy can burn in hell. Deepest pit in hell opened up for this guy. Oh my god. No, he can... He's gone. Do not want him. Do not want him. No, sir. Nope. For a second there, I thought it was awesome. I thought it was a shiny Caterpie. Jesus Christ, man. Jesus Christ. How's this? How? How? How we found three shiny Weedles. It's it's just, we just need one Caterpie. Just one. Payout, a shiny was found? No. The rules are a shiny that counts towards the decks. And that, that shiny Weedle would not count towards the decks. I'm sorry, but those are the rules. They have always been the rules. As of today. Someone says, chat, the fine print. No, I literally said that explicitly. Explicitly. Maybe you should just collect shiny Weedles. At this point, perhaps. This Jesus Christ, dude. Should have killed him while you had the chance. Uh, if I could have killed him, I would. Unfortunately, that is not an option in this game. Womp womp. Alright. Like, I saw the shiny, shiny sparkles, and for some reason, I didn't even believe. 
Like I was waiting to get excited, and and I was right to hold that excitement. Can I be Pokemon with only shiny Weedles? I think in this game, if you give enough steroids to anything, you can you can do any solo run. This is probably the e it, well, you have to still catch 50 Pokemon, but just just catch 50 of one Pokemon, then you're fine. Um. Oh, hello, Bulbasaur. I think uh, doing a solo run in this game with just like just Pikachu would probably be possible. Uh, the the Pokemon's not broken, but if you start like farming candies off of it and stuff like that on the others, uh, Pikachu gets such a diverse move set in this game. Uh, I don't see how Pikachu couldn't win. Hello, e Eevee is even easier. Uh, why? What about Koga? Yeah, clearly you have to still catch 50 Pokemon. I'm, I'm, but like, you know, if you have to do that, it's it's just more of you do that and then you box them all because that's what you have to do, you know. And you also gain XP by catching them, so you could even argue like, oh, I only catch them for XP, and then you just release them. Yeah, diverse move pool, eight different types of crazy moves. Yeah, because I know you have... I think just getting a dark move uh, is not super useful, but it helps on Sabrina. Like, there's just not a single dark Pokemon in this game. Right? That's true. Yeah, you get a couple Pokemon that have, like, Crunch, I guess. Uh, but there are there's not a single dark Pokemon in Kanto, which is crazy. I'm surprised not a single Pokemon got retcon to be dark. I'm surprised they didn't give Gengar Ghost Dark instead of Ghost Poison. Uh, well, have they ever... I know they've added typings. Alolan forms. That's not... Nice try, buddy. Nice try. Uh, but have they ever... I know they've, like, added Fairy type to other Pokemon, but have they ever taken a type away from a Pokemon? Because I, I guess that's why that hasn't happened before. Yeah, they've never removed type. Oh, Togekiss. No, that's true. Because uh, there's normal flying, and now it's fairy flying. That's true. That is an example of a type removed. Oh, yeah, isn't fairy? Clefairy went from normal to mono fairy, whereas Jigglypuff is normal fairy. Agron loses rock on Mega. That is not an example of what I'm talking about. Yeah, so they've really only replaced normal with fairy and that's like it well i mean I guess that's also the only one of the only three new types created so i guess it makes sense right it's more than a type got replaced than removed that that was the question yeah does steel exist in gen one no steel and dark got added in gen two Magnemite gets steel in Gen 2? Yeah, but it doesn't lose it. Is it when I'm, like, it goes from electric to electric steel. I, it's just very niche situation where, like, a, it's usually monotype gains a new type uh, whenever they add one of the new three types. Whereas uh, fairy type, they actually replaced some. It's so crazy I've had to repeat the rules multiple times. Oh, not fully really, but Talo and Swello were mono flying in Gen 3 beta. That's interesting. That is actually kind of interesting, because what, they didn't have a mono flying Pokemon until uh, Gen 5? And then again in Gen 8? Like, mono flying is probably the rarest type in all of Pokemon, right? Yeah, there's only three. Because uh, I know it's uh, Tornadus, Rookadi, Corvusquire. I think those are the three mono flying Pokemon that exist. Even primary flying is rare. That's true. 
Flying is such a strange type. Like, it's so crucial. Uh, I always complain about, like, rock and ground type. Because I feel like, just even visually, those two types are so similar. Uh, that it kind of upsets me. But I think from a balance standpoint, if you don't have rock, flying gets away with murder. You know what I mean? Like, it's... Um, at this point, rock just kind of exists to counter flying. Yeah, rock top... Or rock is, like, worse ground. It just has a different matchup chart. Like, that's all it is. Uh, I would say, yes, ground is better by far. But... It's like rock kind of fills the same niche as ice, where you want to have a Pokemon with rock type moves, but not a rock type Pokemon. I'm sorry, I like. So the intrusive thoughts win again, I can tell. Uh, someone just said, uh, rock type boobs? Question mark? And it's like, what? Just what? <laughs> I like, I don't, I don't even, I don't even know. <laughs> like, I don't even know what it means, you know? Yeah. Most normal Twitch shatter. <sighs> we need more 100% accurate physical rock type moves. Yeah, I think what's crazy is like rock types offensively are pretty fucking good. Um, I mean, bug is kind of irrelevant, but uh, fire and flying are both pretty good offensive types, especially, you know, when you combine them and then Rock Slide just kills Talonflame instantly. What's the worst type? Uh, it, it's kind of, kind of clearly bug, right? Like, it, it's, it's sad that bug is not very good. Oh, P uh, the Pikachu sound always makes me think there's a shiny for some reason. I don't like. I always look at the screen when I hear Pikachu. Bug types are great when paired with Steel. That's true. That's true. I think it's just more so like the move set for Bug type Pokemon is so limited. I guess Leech Life was. I think yeah, Leech Life becoming good was the biggest buff we have ever gotten for Bug type Pokemon. Also, yo, shout out Kony. Thank you for the five gifted. Why? You, you, why? <laughs> Feels like unnecessary. They kind of, they kind of got it. Did, did you, did you fuck up a raid? What, what happened here? Oh, I get five gifted because your chat couldn't name my boy Fred. Ah, okay. I see. I didn't know I got five gifted out of that. Oh, they got Fred? Wait, did they or did they not? If they did, how the fuck? No? I'm so, I'm so lost. So they asked me the color scheme and I said yellow. But he was orange at first. Dude, I'm sorry. Fred is 100% yellow. <laughs> that dude is 100% yellow. Oh, I was supposed to give you 10, but I'm giving you 5 because I messed up. Why do I get punished because you messed up? What the fuck? I deserve that 10. <laughs> well, why, why am I getting punished here is all I'm saying. Thanks, says Coney. All right. Yeah, see you later, man. Uh, okay. So to, to educate you guys on everyone else who doesn't know what the fuck just happened. Um, Coney... Reached out to me today. He's, I think he's, I think it's all for farming on YouTube videos. I asked 10 YouTubers to give me well, fucking whatever. Um, he asked people like YouTubers. Oh, uh, thank you. Thank you for two people 
Gifting, giving me five subs. Oh, no, no, that's uh, Alcy Days. Thank you for the five gifted. I appreciate it. <laughs> and now we're even. Cody, we're even. Um, yeah, so Coney had a had a thing where he asked everyone... He wants his, to see if his chat can guess. I think they're playing like 10 questions or 20 questions with uh, like a random obscure video game character. So he asked me to pick one. And uh, I picked... Fred the Chameleon from Hit Nintendo 64 Classic Chameleon Twist 2. And uh, he is a yellow chameleon with depressed eyes. And apparently, when they asked what color he was, Coney said he was orange, which is just blatantly untrue. Uh, so I guess that's how uh, I got robbed. You guys got robbed. Coney viewers got robbed. But so did I. <laughs> why, why, why the fuck did I lose out on five gifted subs? That's bullshit. I wish, uh, you know how Venmo, you can request money? I wish I could request gifted sub from other streamers. I think that'd be funny. I would do it right now. That would be so toxic. It would be, because, like, <laughs> you would have... Imagine looking at the sub request form from, like, XQC or something, you know? <laughs> Fred's one of the realest ones out there. So true. What I thought was crazy, actually, I you know what? I'm not going to say it. I, I think I don't want to spoil it. Uh, but Coney did say someone else. You know, fuck you, Coney. I'll, I'll say it. It's any Coney viewers watching, there's another Chameleon Twist 2 character in the roster. Okay? So uh, just stay on your toes for that one. <laughs> yeah, earn your subs then. Yeah, get his ass. No, the intrusive thoughts won. Okay. So I was talking or thank you, Merkley, for the five gifted subs. You know what? Coney needs to fuck up more often. You guys you guys are being very helpful. Oh god, I just got scared. I got jump scared by her talking. I was mashing A for no reason. Give me a sub while you're at it. Yeah, I hear if you beg loud enough, it works. I Like, most streamers are so against you begging in their chats. I find it uh, funny. I like watching people in their most desperate and pitiful state. So, uh, keep it up. No, it's it's humbling. It, it reminds me that I'm like, at least I'm not that guy. Yeah, it's just a, like a what happened to Shane, you know? And I, I love that. I love watching that. Uh, anyways, thank you, Tina, for the five gifted. I hope you gave it to five people who were specifically begging so they feel rewarded for the behavior. No, I, I, I love seeing that. Okay. Show me a Caterpie, please. Um, I'm just happy to be here. Thank you, first time chatter. No, I'm, ha I'm happy for that. You know what? Uh... You know what? Come here. You know what? I'll give... Wait, can I gift a sub from this menu? Oh, from the mod? Oh, I forgot it changed. I, I cannot... Ah, oh, shit. Oh, okay. I have to be on a different menu. Ah. Oh. But by the time I finish this, someone's probably already gifted them a sub. Because every time I try to gift subs, I just time people out on accident. It's never a good thing. You almost got a sub for me. But the menu... They changed how the Twitch dashboard works now, and now it's a little harder to uh to do that so uh, you almost got one I, I tried i definitely tried okay the the sparkles on the pikachu gave me hope for a second i swear to christ man if i find another shiny weedle i'm dude I think about this, like, I think about this a lot, honestly. I miss Chubby Pikachu. I am upset that he felt like he had to conform to modern beauty standards, and Pikachu couldn't just stay chubby. I feel like it became more of a soulless mascot every time he got a little slimmer. Oh, I miss it. I, I, I miss the, I hate the yassification of Pikachu, I'll say it. I don't like what they had to do to him. 
They didn't have to. I accept everyone liked Pikachu. Ah. What what a what a chunky little guy. It's gone to the sands of time. Yeah, Chubby Pikachu was a real one. Gone but not forgotten. I forgot I'm also looking for Bulbasaur. He's just uh, shiny Bulbasaur would be awesome. But isn't it a little shocking that we have found some Pokemon so fast? But for fucking Caterpie, we have struggled so much. So much. Uh, and then when I was trying to get Geodude, also struggled because that's when we got Zubat on accident instead. Low key, I just saw someone mention it. Uh, I am a little surprised that we never got Raichu in Smash. Like, uh, not like not an ultimate because I don't think we ever get that in ultimate. But I feel like I'm surprised we didn't get it in like Brawl when they cut Pichu. You know, just like a stronger Pikachu. Like, uh, it's stupid, but I feel like Smash logic at the time was pretty stupid. Like, you know, like they almost cut Ness to add Lucas, you know, because they felt like they had to. Uh, yeah, Doc, but Raichu. Like, Raichu would have made a lot of sense in, in the Melee era, but they already had Pichu. It's just like, you know, they cut Roy, they add Ike. They cut Pichu, they add Raichu. Like, it's stupid, but it would have made sense at the time. Or cut Pikachu for Raichu. Just say evolved. Like, yes, but they were never cut that mascot from Smash Bros., let's be honest. Alolan Raichu and Ultimate would go hard. Okay, actually, no, 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 you're on to something now. Oh, Plusle and Mining were cut. Yeah, true, they were in the Forbidden 7 of Brawl. But I, I stand by Raichu. Dude, okay, like, okay. I know Plusle and Minin had, like, data in Brawl. That shit would be my own personal hell. What, Ice Climber's Pikachu? Fuck me, right? Like, <laughs> I, I do not want to deal with that shit. Like, they cut it, and they are heroes for it. <laughs> like, oh, we the society is better off without it. Oh, the Forbidden 7. Oh, someone didn't watch Did You Know Gaming videos in 2014. Uh, there were there were seven characters in Brawl's data uh, that were cut. Were, were Was there any real data or anything? No, not really. Um, who was it? It was uh, Plus and Minin. I don't remember if that was two characters or one. Uh, I know it was Toon Zelda, I think Tetra, I think Roy, uh, uh, what was the Dr. Mario, oh, Dixie Kong, and then, did I say, I, I don't think I counted Tetra. Oh, worse ad timing, oh, they got you right, I'll, I'll talk about it in like two minutes then. Oh yeah, Mewtwo and Roy, they had a little Wiimote. Uh, nothing was funnier to me than uh, Wiimote screaming, specifically Captain Falcon. That shit's so funny. That shit's so funny. What made you start doing YouTube? Uh, bored. Have you ever uploaded a YouTube video? Why'd you do it? Probably the same reason I did. We're, we're probably not too different, you and I, when it comes down to that. Uh, mine just happened to get views. <laughs> that That is the only difference. And it was luck. You could have had that happen too. We could have been in different positions. It's so possible. It's like, uh, I think there is a skill to YouTube now because I think enough people are talking about it. But back then, the only people who knew how to do YouTube were people who were doing YouTube already. You know, but I think like, I do believe you can sit down and watch enough Mr. Beast interviews with who the fuck ever and learn how to be a YouTuber. I, I I would say like this past year is the first time I have ever felt like there are resources on how to be a YouTuber online. Like, like I feel like it started being publicly accessible starting this year. You know, like uh, 
it, it has just not been possible before because a lot of the info was kept private, not intentionally, but just uh, no one was taking time to talk about it, right? But I, I think it's interesting. I like talking about the inner workings of YouTube because I think, because I would have found it interesting uh, back before I knew what I knew now. And so I like to talk about it because uh, I'm sure other people think it's interesting. I feel like gaming the algorithm doesn't produce good content. Uh, I I disagree with that. Okay, okay. So like, let's assess like uh, or assess that statement. Gaming the algorithm does not produce good content. It depends on what you're putting out, right? Um, I think knowing about the algorithm and what they promote, what they because it's. It's not really, okay, this sounds really stupid, but it's not about understanding the algorithm. It's about understanding the psychology of what a viewer would click on first. Like those are two very different things. Uh, algorithmic stuff is just a lot of like back in SEO type things. Uh, it has nothing to do with your content. Uh, so gaming the algorithm, I think it has nothing to do with the kind of content you're doing. Uh, the only way it starts to, if you're uploading like eight minute, one second videos, uh, to capitalize on viewer duration, that is when like, I'll open the discussion of maybe gaming the algorithm produces bad content. Uh, because some people upload very condensed, like, uh, you know, this is a very popular, I, for the record, I do think Mr. Beast makes good content, but I think he has mastered his style because that breakneck speed editing is very hard to master. It's very hard to master and still have the pace feel natural uh, because all he does is specialize in viewer duration and it works. Like Mr. Beast is good with titles and thumbnails and he keeps you watching because the videos are so condensed. Like this guy is not afraid to condense 50 hours of footage to eight minutes, you know? And that is a talent. Like that, that is a genuine skill that his team has crafted. So like, I, I give kudos to that, but at the same time, like, I would say I'm, I'm a pretty successful YouTuber, not at the size of Mr. Beast, obviously, but I made the decision. I was like, do I want to make eight minute videos that are super condensed that focus on viewer duration, or do I kind of want the story to breathe? Do I want to be slower? Do I want to be like 15 to 20 minutes? Uh, I always make the decision to make it longer because I like the narrative breathing. I like telling a story like I naturally would. And, but I have to recognize that is not the 100% opt optimal way to make a video. But I don't think I would be fulfilled making eight minute condensed videos, you know? So it's kind of like, uh, you got to focus on that own fulfillment before you focus on, on yours. And I don't think I'm like morally superior because of it. In fact, I think I'm a little foolish for having that much pride, <laughs> you know? Okay, but that is, uh, that is, uh, the 200th encounter, but as always, I will give you guys one additional encounter, just to see, just to see, uh, where's the next roll? Oh, there it is, there it is, believe it or not, the doubters win again. They did witness, um... A shiny Pokemon, but unfortunately, it was the incorrect one. And uh, here we go. Uh, I love gambling these channel points because there's nothing to spend them on. It's silly made-up numbers that make brain go brr. Doubters always profit. I feel like doubters always profit until they don't. <laughs> Eventually, they have to lose. I, I am that stubborn, after all. Yeah, who's believing? It's like the more time passes, the more people want to convert uh, to believers. Because the optimal, I think the optimal gamble is you always go doubt first. Especially in shiny hunting. Because the odds are not in your favor for the first 30. But, but then, uh, I, I, like, I think you should believe on the second one. I think believing on the second one is the correct call. Sometimes it doesn't always pay off, right? But uh, there is no statistical advantage, technically speaking, voting for 300, believing on 300 over believing on 200. 
But there is genuinely a statistical advantage betting on 200 over 100. Didn't you get Charizard in like 30 rolls? I did, but that was like an anomaly. Like, it's definitely possible, but we can't say that that was likely, you know? I think uh, Doubt Doubt Believe is like the statistically like correct. Like, you know, if I have one in 300 odds and let's say I hit it on the 300th one every single time, that's not correct. That's not how it's supposed to work. So, uh, two, like, statistically speaking, 200 and 300 are, are uh, the same number. They, they are. But if you want to bet on channel points, yeah, if some people bet on the payout, I get that entirely. Because if it's like 90% against you, if you believe on the first one, even though it's stacked against you statistically, like, you can still get a massive payout if you're right. But we got Charmander, who is, like, one of the hardest ones to get. We got Charmander, like, 30 rolls, and then we got Vulpix and, like, 750, you know? So it, it can really go either way. Statistics are a fickle little bitch. How many Pokeballs do I have? Not many, but it's very easy for me to go buy more when I've... Uh, sell all the Caterpies. Um, and harvest their organs for candy. Yeah, it's pretty easy to get money. Wait, it's a gamble? Like, if you win, you get channel points back? Have you never won? Oh no, I'm so sorry. Yeah, yeah, when you gamble, you can make money back. Oh no. Oh no, we just met the unluckiest person in the world. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh no, they just found out you can win in roulette? Oh, I I always put in money and lost. Oh no. Oh no, that's so sad. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh. oh, poor guy. Is Al is, <laughs> is August going to be an alpha list gold month? Uh, I am going out of town for nearly the entire month. But Joe and I are going to try to record uh, a month's worth of content prior to that. Which is kind of why I'm starting to stream. Uh, there, there's some crazy part of me that would love to finish this specific run before I go to Japan. But I, I, don't, th I, I, I don't think that's going to happen. But I would, I would love it if it did. I would love it if it did. I, I might stream a few times from Japan though so uh i just got to figure out how uh i know that i've had a few friends in japan offer me like a spare stream setup which is really cool uh, but i would love to be able to find a way to make the internet at my airbnb good enough where i can just stream on my laptop you know because I, I, I just hate burdening people even if i'm not burdening people i hate feeling like i'm burdening people more so than actually burdening people you know what i mean I think that's a very common mood, where uh, regardless if they tell me everything's fine and they offer these things to me, I uh, if I if the evil voice inside my head tells me I'm being a burden, they're right, <laughs> they're they're right, and I gotta do something about it. Am I gonna go to Pokemon World while I'm in Japan? Uh, that is the sole reason why I'm going. Uh, Pokemon Company said, "Hey, do you want us to fly you out uh, for Worlds?" We love your videos, and when you say fuck, and I go, sure, <laughs> yeah. And I said, do I have to post about it? And they go, no. And I was like, okay. Uh, I, I'm going to post about it, because I think it's a kind offer. But it, it was just strange that I was like, oh, okay, so I had to post. And they're like, nah, uh We just want to spend $2,000 flying you to Japan. And I go, okay. <laughs> Yeah, like, it's the strangest offer of my life. But, uh, I, I take it in pride. I, I think, I like, from the people I've talked to, I, I think once you separate Pokemon Company from Nintendo, uh, I've had a lot of good interactions with the people at Pokemon Company. Because any company, like, based in Japan is typically very archaic with, like, how mods work and stuff like that. But I know that, uh... Pokemon Company recently sponsored a Purple Cliff video that was modded. And it might not seem like anything to you guys, but that is, that is huge. That is actually huge uh, of having them accept modded. Because uh, 
Um, uh, for I've done, I've wanted to do a few Pokemon videos with friends who are like Pokemon partners or ambassadors or something or official casters, right? Uh, and they don't want to touch modded content, which is understandable, but it's a real bummer. So I'm sure that eventually we'll get to a point. Um, like, you, you, I've told the story of, um, like, I have some, I have some people who are like affiliated. I, I'm friends with with actually working on Pokemon Company. And some of them were like, I don't want to submit an egg for the egg lock because I don't want to, like, Pokemon to get mad at me. And it's just like, yeah, that's fair. You know, like, I'm not going to push on that. But uh, it, it's still like, uh, uh, yeah, I get that. But maybe one day we can live in a world where uh, uh, Cybertron can play modded Pokemon with me. <laughs> that's the world I long for. God, Nintendo kind of sucks. No, 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 no. Keep in mind. Okay. I know this sounds very backwards, but Pokemon Company and Nintendo are two separate companies. Like, they operate differently. And I, I know that sounds really backwards, and it sounds weird, but internally, it's true. You, you have to focus on it as two separate organizations. Um, Like... Like, uh... What, what, what's an example? Is Pokemon Company or Nintendo more strict? Nintendo, 100%. Uh, I think, okay, working as a content creator, you have to know how each company works. Working with Nintendo is working around Nintendo. They have their guidelines set, and it's more of like a... I, whenever I describe Nintendo, like uh, Point Crow, with all of his drama surrounding uh, his videos being taken down with Nintendo and everything, uh, I, I kind of, I reached out and I kind of advised him. I was like, I, I've talked to people. I, I had Nintendo. I know how they operate. Uh, Nintendo, like, I'm not going to try and defend it, right? But there are guidelines as a creator that they want you to follow. And if you don't play by their rules, they will take action. And it's all about playing within there. I, it sounds weird, but I, I describe it as like a don't ask, don't tell situation. If you don't flaunt that your shit is modded, they're unlikely to do anything about it. Uh, and I, I think it's weird, but uh, Nintendo West will typically try to, like, you know, stand in the way of, of Nintendo Japan saying, sick them, you know? So uh, if you can give them deniability, they will usually not fuck with you. So, yeah. Point Crow did publicize that mod a lot. Yeah, there was a countdown on it. It was publicly, like, it, it, it was not only that he advertised a massive Breath of the Wild mod, it was that he did it right before Tears of the Kingdom came out. So it's like, they're looking for stuff like that. Uh, it's, you know, I'm not saying Nintendo is in the right by any means, but I think as a creator who specifically makes modded Nintendo content, you kind of got to know how to play ball with them. Uh, cause, uh, if, if they take your shit down, they're, they're probably in the legal right to do it. So you're just fucked. You, you just have to stay on their, on their side. Yeah. It is, what are some rules you found? Is it mostly mods? Yeah. I mean, I think Nintendo doesn't really give a fuck what people do. Like, it's just, it's mostly mods. Yeah, it's mostly mods. But I think Pokemon, uh, and also I think there's like a, a calling card almost. If Nintendo ever takes a game down, it's either because it misrepresents their IP or it's because they're working on the exact same game. Uh, so you can kind of get uh, spoilers. If, it, if It's like if it does not look like it's misrepresenting IP, they're 100% working on the exact same game. Uh, yeah, AM2R. Uh, think about Mario Battle Royale. Uh, that was just Mario 35. Yeah, so uh, I, I think that's like kind of like the rule of thumb I follow. Whenever I see a game get taken down, I like I was like, okay, that's coming out soon. <laughs> um, but then with Pokemon, uh, with Pokemon, I think they really only care about uh, misrepresentation of IP. Uh. Because realize there are so many Pokemon mods, ROM hacks, everything that are like flaunted and publicly accessible and everything. 
but the shit that gets taken down is like Pokemon FPS, gun, bloody gore, shit, you know? Like, like I I think when you look at it that way, you're like, okay, yeah, that, that, that makes sense, you know? I think, I think Pokemon only shuts down uh, in modern times based on, like, misrepresentation of IP. Uh, Brick Bronze. Uh, that was a while ago, though, right? Like, I think, I'm just saying, I think Pokemon is a different company now than they were even, like, three years ago. Like, so, um, I think it is a little different. But, uh, like, yeah, I get it. I don't know what the misrepresentation would be there. I think they used to shut down things a lot, but now they really don't. So I think I I like to focus on what people and companies are doing now, I guess, you know? Yeah, yeah, I guess like if they were really after fan games and stuff like that, Pokemon Showdown would be gone instantly. Yeah. I think Pokemon Showdown is proof that they give a shit, right? Because that is such an easy... Like, a battle sim is so easy to take down. Oh, Brick Bronze had microtransactions? Oh, that's 100% why. Oh, okay. No, th that makes so much more sense then. No, that is 100% the reason why. Yeah, yeah, no, I get that now. Yeah, Brick Bronze didn't make a lot of sense to me, but if that was the thing, yeah, no, that makes sense. Yeah, that's why, like... I think no matter what the fan game is, uh, if you're making money off it, Nintendo typically steps in. Like, uh, I, like, kind of sucks that that's the case, but that is typically always going to be the case. I don't think they're growing out of that one. God, look at all this Caterp- I'm not going to sell any of the Caterpie candy. I'm going to hold on to it. I'm going to see how much we get. That is, uh, five- No, that's not 563 Caterpie's caught, right? Is it? It might be. Oof, that's a lot. Am I looking forward to Pal World? Um, I I think Pal World will be very funny. I don't know if it'll be good, but also I don't really need it to be. <laughs> it just sounds like a funny game. Uh, I'm gonna I'm just gonna get like. Yeah, that sounds good. Have I played Pokemon Chess on Gold yet? Uh, no, we actually haven't. That is a, a good suggestion. Um, what happens when you run out of Pokeballs? Uh, you won't. Uh, you get so much money from catching Pokemon and harvesting their organs. It's like, you're not going to run out of money here. Uh, I thought I was for a little bit, but no, it's super easy to always get more Pokeballs. Because, like, I just bought, like, I could have bought 450, and by the time I use all 450, I'm going to be able to, you know, earn, like, 500. Yeah, I think Pal World will be very funny for, like, the first day I play it. And uh, that's all I need it to be. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll probably play through the game. It's just Pokemon with guns. It just, it shouldn't be together. And, because, uh, you know, all other versions of it get taken down. He just got back. Any shinies uh, since the Eevee? <laughs> Anyways. Uh, how's the weather been? Yeah. Oh, can't forget manual labor. Oh, true. Based. That, that, that's so true. Oh, no. Oh, no. Dude. Okay. L let me explain to you what living with Jaden is like. Uh, first off, we have a room. We have two rooms in this house. That is completely filled with giant plushes. Not one, but again, two. Uh, one, her office. Two, our guest room. Uh, so, that's that's just the case. And then, uh, here, let, let me let me let me let me paint a picture here. Uh, can I? Can I? Can I? Can I? Can I do this? Oh, why is it? Okay. Here we go. Uh, and then imagine just looking over at your computer and getting a DM from Jaden that just says, oh my god, with this attached to it. Like, oh, dude. At what point is it a problem? 
At what point is it a problem? Okay, but that's neglected by the giant A statue. Okay, I bought one giant life-size statue, and we're gonna say that's the same thing as two bedrooms in a house filled with giant plushes? I think that one statue does not even come close to how much money Jane has spent on plushes. Like, it adds up, man. It adds up. Who asked for electric? Okay, well, no need to hate. That guy is pretty cool. Yeah, I, the coolest part about being a YouTuber is uh, not buying luxury homes, luxury cars, but having the fuck you money to buy anything on your timeline that looks fun. That, that, that is uh, what having money is all about. It is about uh, getting to buy everything you wish you could have as a child. I'd buy so many Pokemon cards. Oh, I have. That's the crazy part. Um, I have like six boxes of Scarlet Violet that are just unopened because I got too tired of opening too many cards. Uh, because it was a... I just kept doing it. Because I can. And no one can stop me. Uh, every sub you gift, every prime sub you drop makes me a little more financially irresponsible and I get away with it each and every time. So uh, thank you for supporting the channel and uh, thank you for supporting every addiction I have now and every hyperfixation I'm going to have like two months from now. Uh, it will not be the same as it is right now, but thank you for supporting it anyways. You, you have fed an addiction more than you could ever know. <laughs> Oh my god, thank you for the 10 gifted subs. Oh, that was like... I feel like I'm getting reimbursed from the life-size ace statue I brought. Or I bought. Uh, which, by the way, uh, got delivered today. Uh, it took a while, but it's delivered. Uh, it is in several different boxes, so I can't show you because I have to put it together. Uh, and it is, it is like... The boxes are secure. So I have to... I don't have, I'm still recovering from like COVID and all. I do not have the energy to tear apart these boxes and put it together yet. So, uh, it, it I will have to put it together in time. Uh, but soon, soon I will. I just genuinely do not have the physical energy to put it together right now. I am still recovering. Why a statue of characters? Uh, it's more so I really like Ace. Yeah, I have the ace tattoo, and I, I I think he's a cool character. Yes, there are One Piece characters who I like more, but I just happened to find the ace statue. It was just kind of like it found me, you know, and the story was funny. Uh, will there be a stream video of the unboxing? Uh, I've made a short out of it. I'm just missing the footage of me putting it together, so that'll happen soon. I thought it was an asexual statue. Okay, um... Let's talk about that. What the fuck does that look like? I hear you, I understand the confusion. But did you ever think for a second and be like, wonder what that looks like? No? No, okay. Just a giant flag, perhaps? But, but what does the phrase life-size mean in that? You know, like... What is a life-size asexual statue? Huh? I'm just curious. Just, a, just an ace person? Oh, okay. Just like just like a guy or something? <laughs> okay. Yeah, gotcha. Thank you. Thank you for explaining. Yeah. No, I understand. Yeah, no, that's on me. I was being insensitive. No. No, 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 no. You guys are right. You're right. You're right. Yeah, I should have just assumed that's... Yeah, we're all on the same page here. Yeah, no, no, thank you. Thank you for understanding. How long before Jacob gets a statue of himself? My ego will never be that unchecked. I can say confidently. Uh, I don't want that. I, I do not want that. Uh, why'd you skip out on the shiny Weedle? Uh, because we've already caught two. And we only need one. There's the U2s. Are you comparing me selling merch to owning a life-size statue of myself? I, 
I, I see the parallel you're trying to make, but realize those are two wildly different things. Do you get money from viewer duration? Uh, a strangely worded question, but, but like, yes, technically. It's not that, like, I get more money from viewer duration. It's the longer you watch, the more likely you are to watch ads, you know, or the, the more ads you will consume, the more you watch, you know? So I guess the answer is yes, but not, like, you see what I'm saying? It's like a, it's like a roundabout yes. It's like almost like a confirmation bias yes. Yeah, it's like not directly, but I, I because of it yes, I guess. It's more so like uh, good viewer duration just causes more people to see your video, algorithmically speaking, and therefore exposing it to more people. And, and, and the longer they watch the videos, the more money you make because they saw more ads. So it's like, like yes, the answer is yes. Just a, just a strange yes. Yo, it's Hayden. Man, thank you for the raid of one. Huge shout out. Yeah, thank you, man. Thanks for supporting the channel. No, yeah, no, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, man. Yeah, no, I, no I, that's huge. Thanks. Start selling alpha red body pillows. Okay, so that's actually a good uh, start. starting of a topic that I meant to bring up earlier. Uh, first off, no. Uh, second, I think creators can be like parasocial with their audience. Because I think as a creator, you got to be responsible. I think I say that and you can think of like three creators in your head who you think they are not, <laughs> right? Where it's... I think by putting stuff out there like that, I think it allows your audience to kind of romanticize you a bit more. Uh, so, like, first off, I think making, like, the body pillows would be a, a weird thing to do. But second, I think it also enforces this kind of energy where it's like, oh, it's okay to think of me like that or, like, sleep with an image of me. You know? Where... I, you know what I mean? It's like, uh, like your audience gives what you put out. You know, sometimes I get annoyed that you guys are as snarky and sarcastic as you are. You, you, but you know, like I understand you guys watch me because I'm also snarky and sarcastic. You know what I mean? <laughs> so like, yeah, it's kettle meat pot kind of thing. Yeah, so I think it's, uh... Yeah, you give what you get. Yeah, I, I do believe that. I think uh, a creator's audience is is very reflectant. Or it reflects what who the person is. And I know you might think, like, I know some good fan bases where they don't have that. I, I hear you. But I think it's stuff like, um... Like, here's an example. Uh, let's say 2019, Alpha Red Plus, right? Um, Joe and I had, like, a lot of bits where we'd be like, hey, go tell our friends we said this. And, you know, in our minds, we're like, oh, we're giving them more viewership. We're shouting them out. We're supporting them. But what actually happens is we are sending people to give them a lot of attention, which at first is very nice, but that video lives on forever way past where the bit is funny. So someone sees the video eight months from now and that person just thinks, I have been harassed about people telling me happy birthday for the past eight months and I'm fucking exhausted of it. So you see what I mean? Like that is a product of us. They are annoying because of us. And, and that is something you have to learn how to control. Like an audience is a sword and you have to wield it properly. Otherwise, there'd be tons of casualties in this hypothetic metaphor. You know what I mean? I, I like, I, I am proud of who I am now, but I don't think I'm proud of who I was maybe like three, four, five years ago because that's called growth, you know? I think I said things I wouldn't agree with now and I think that's good. I think a lot of people like to spin it of like, oh, that's hypocritical that you thought this once. And I was like, I, I, 
I, I see that a lot with people, and I was like, I, I think it's very good for people to change their mind frequently on things. You know? <laughs> yeah, bust out the ukulele. <laughs> that's not the direction this is going in, for the record. Uh, that's not the direction it's going in. Yeah. Uh, how old are you? Uh, I'm 27. Which I think is, like, a good age to be. Uh, I, I like... I, I think, uh, I have done good at, uh, growing up with each and every year. Which, it sounds stupid to say that, but as a content creator, I think it's really easy to not. Uh, again, I know it sounds stupid, but it's very easy to have unlimited money and surround yourself with people who don't tell you no. So, therefore, sometimes you don't have to grow up, and I think it shows. And that's, like, kind of what I, I'm saying. Like, I think I've done a good job at actively trying to, like, grow, I guess. Oh, I forget. Did I forget to turn the lure on? Maybe. Yeah, because I was like, yeah, there you go. There's, like, there's not a lot of Caterpie spawning. Um, what's your average view duration on YouTube? Uh, I mean... It, it's not consistent because you have to realize I'm the kind of person who might upload a 10 minute video and then follow that up with a 50 minute video. Uh, I think on shorter videos, like I get pretty good viewer duration. Um, I, I, I think I can get anywhere between 60 to 80%, which I think is pretty good. Uh, and on much longer videos, I'll get like, I'll upload 50 minutes of video and get like, uh, like 50% viewer duration. And usually I think that's pretty good for that long of a video. Like, I think I get pretty good viewer duration. Um, I think on my uh, three, like my Mario Odyssey Supercut, that's like in multiple, like two hours long. I think that video has like 30% viewer duration, which sounds bad, but I guess in the big picture, like that's still a lot of views and it has 10 million. So it's like, obviously it did something right. 30% is average for gaming. What the fuck? Is that true? That cannot be true. Really? Is that true? I don't believe that. I don't believe that. I don't think that's true. Maybe for a bad video. 30 per... Well, I guess you're not saying how long the video is. Yeah, if it's like a... If you're talking about like 20 minute videos and it's 30%. Okay, maybe. Yeah, no shot. I don't think that's true. That sounds way too short. Um, lots of bad videos out there, brother. Okay, but like... I guess, like, what is the pool? Are, are we... When we talk about average viewer duration in gaming, are we also talking about the channels that have three subscribers? Because if so, that feels disingenuous. Uh... What is this? PewDiePie has 100 plus mil subscribers and he's just about 3-4 mil views per each. I don't know if that's a lot, but you have 3 million views, L'Oreal fan base. Um, so I, I think I, I think looking at people's sub count and trying to figure out their average view count is also a disingenuous process because I would say like getting 3% of your audience to watch your videos is probably pr like a bad number. But um, the thing is, uh, you have to factor in every uh, channel's dead subscriber weight, which like there are channels that have like a sixth of the subs as I do, but get the same amount of views, if not higher, uh, because converting views to subs is another talent and that like you have to factor in. And, and then, uh, on top of that, you have to just think about how long ago did they get the bulk of their subs. Have you guys ever s just stumbled across a channel that had like 100k, but was like struggling to break even like a thousand views? And it's like, it feels weird, like it doesn't make sense. But in reality, what happened was that channel probably got 100k subs like 10 years ago and has never gotten new subs since. And if you're not growing, you're dying. 
So if you're not bringing in new subs, you're only losing old subs. Or they got shadow ban. Okay, first off, I do not think shadow ban on YouTube is, is real 99% of the time. Uh, there's a 1% edge case where I believe it, but I think it is just a cop-out for people underperforming. You know, I think if your channel's not performing well, it's probably safer to look within. Yeah. Yeah, I every time I hear people complaining about YouTube or the algorithm or something like that, it's mainly a lot of people who would blame the algorithm before they blame themselves. And I mean, I, I admit, sometimes the algorithm works against you. But at the end of the day, the algorithm is designed to show people who want to watch your video. Or show your video to people who want to watch it. Guys, how many times have you been on YouTube and watched a random 50 minute video over some shit you never knew you wanted to watch, but then you watched all of it? That is literally the algorithm working. You did not find that video by chance, you know? Like, they presented it to you because the algorithm was working as intended. Like, uh, like, it's, it's just, people say the algorithm is not supporting my video. And it's like, because people don't want to watch it. it it's... I'm not saying, like, every small creator. Like, everyone has to start small, right? Like, you have to. That's a rule. You have to grow over time. But, like, if you are not growing, you, you probably have to figure it out. I think growing from 0 to 100k... No, no. 0 from 1,000 is way harder than 1,000 to 100k. So, like... I, for, for what it's worth, I'm not talking about the person who cannot get any traction at all. Because that shit is hard. I'm talking about the person who is at like 500k complaining how they're not growing further. You know what I mean? I think the first step is the hardest. So, if you do not feel like you're growing and you're at like... Like, if you're under a thousand subs and you're trying to make it... That is the hardest part of the journey. <laughs> like, uh, once you get past, like, a thousand subs, it, it's still an uphill battle. You know, it's it, it becomes easier and easier the bigger you get to appeal to, to more people. But, uh, it's possible, you know. Well, I guess let that be motivating. Uh, Al Algorithm hardly ever gives me content outside of what I watch. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Mr. Beast's brother was handed a couple million subs and crashed and burned. Uh, I remember that. Yeah, yeah, it was, was it? Uh, Mr. Bro, right? Uh, okay, like, do we want to say that that was an algorithmic thing, or was it just because, like, hear me out. I'm not obviously not on the scale of Mr. Beast, but let's say you were employed. Let's say you had your own business, and you felt like you had a chance to give anyone in your life... The ability to just print money. Would you try to give it to them? Like, I don't even think it was the brother trying to ride off of Mr. Beast. I think it was Mr. Beast trying to give him an opportunity. Like, I in my position, I've hired a lot of my friends. You know, I, I know they say, like, you shouldn't always hire your friend, blah, blah, blah. But it's just like, I think if you have the opportunity to give a friend an opportunity... Sorry, that sentence is bad. Um, and sometimes they want to. But here's what I think went wrong. Like, yes, it might have been that he tried to copy Mr. Beast too much. But, like, not everyone's cut out for it. Like, he might just not have been the, the same creative type brain who could come up with those ideas. So, it's like, I think that can be inspiring. Let it be known that, like... I don't think it's because the content wasn't going to work. I think it's a gold mine. I think it can always work. It might just be this dude just thought he wanted to do it and then just didn't when he got there. You know? Like, it's so easy to just, just to think that, like, this is hard. <laughs> I think content creation sounds very easy. I think it sounds so easy until you actually do it. 
So I, I I can imagine that it's uh it's just harder than people think. Hi Pidgey. Also, if people are only following you because they like your brother, it's not sustainable. Well, okay. L like, let's talk about sustainable, right? Uh, first off, I, I think it probably is. I think that channel was 100% sustainable because, like, you do not have to get Mr. Beast numbers to be sustainable on YouTube. If you think that channel could average, like, 100k views per video, at least, I think it could have gotten way more. If you think it could have gotten, like, a livable amount, 100% that channel could have lived. Okay, what happens if Mr. Beast goes away? Okay, we are moving the goalpost here. Like, <laughs> like I, I, th I think it could have worked. Yeah. I mean, I think a lot of people are focusing on, oh, the channel wasn't different enough from Mr. Beast, but I think we're being, like, uh, rewriting history kind of kind of vibe. I I got the vibe that this dude just didn't wasn't cut out for it and didn't want to do it. Cause I, I think it's hard. I think it's hard. Cause I think like no matter how low views that channel was getting, it was more than like successful. That was my take on it. When I saw it, like, unfold, I didn't view the channel as crashing and burning. I just viewed it as a guy who didn't want to do it. Because it, it just sounds like... Maybe I'm speaking from experience, where I've had friends who uh, I have tried to get into content. And what I do is, if they don't know what to do, i like, this is how I would do it. This is what I do. And I really kind of try to dress them in the same light that I would, would do, you know? And some people don't know what to do when you're done holding their hand, you know? Ouija? No, that's not... I'm not talking about the guy... No, Ouija is not the example of this. Ouija and I have always made pretty different content. How much freedom do you have to create? Do you need to work around the algorithm? Uh, I... I feel like people uh, who aren't fully versed treat the algorithm like it's this uh this digital boogeyman you know they say it with such fear in their voice but the the algorithm it, it's literally just a tool that shows people the videos they want to see if you are making a video these people want to see it will be recommended to them Space Jam 2 says otherwise. That's true. I forgot about Algy Rhythm. What a fucking character, man. Oh, I cannot believe they did that shit. Is content creation worth to do on the side if I'm not using it as a source of income? Oh, if you don't care about the money, just do what you fucking want. I, I see no, like, can you play baseball without doing it professionally? You know? Like, uh, just do it if you want. Like, Every YouTuber, actually, maybe not nowadays, but I think every YouTuber who started, like, prior to maybe 2017, 2016, started making videos as a hobby. I think only in recent years have people started being like, oh, I can, I'm going into it with the intent on becoming famous, you know? I, I think it's just become a bit more solved over the years. That's how Markiplier happened? Yeah, he falls under a creator who made content prior to 2017. Thank you for the one very niche example. And Smosh, an RT... Do you really want to list every creator that happened prior to 2017? Is that what we're doing right now? No, you need... You really need passion for content creation to survive. I, I believe I agree. I I think this industry rides or dies on passion. Uh, I don't think 
I think even the most soulless content has someone who's passionate in making it. Like, like the most soulless seeming content, you know? I, I think uh, everyone thinks they're making something great. Makeup tutorials. Dude, I mean, you have to think about shit like makeup tutorials. Like, I think the reason that industry is so big, like, makeup side of content creation, is because, like, I I'm glad you guys like my videos and all, but do you realize how much more replayable it is to watch? You can, you might need to watch a makeup tutorial multiple times. You might watch it every day. You do that look. Also, thank you, Cosmic, for the five gifted. I was just in a tangent there. But, like, uh, think about cooking videos, too, right? The thing with cooking videos is that every time you want to make that specific dish, you might watch that video. Like, there are just some industries that are much more replayable than others. Reaction videos, channels can be kind of lazy sometimes. Yes, but it, you know, hear me out. There is an art to it, right? Like the most successful reaction videos are where the person has a purpose to react to the video. And you usually see that in titles. Like, let's think about Pokemon challenges, right? Uh, Pro Nuzlocke reacts to Jaden doing the Nuzlocke. Like, obviously, that video has so many millions of views because it's like, you can picture it in your head. Oh, I want to see what that looks like. You know? Um, but if it's just some guy reacting to something to say, whoa. Every now and then, it's probably not as interesting. There's still a demand for React channels, because you can almost view React channels as curating the kind of content you want to watch. Is that, like, morally good? Is that ethical? Like, who's to say? But it still makes sense how there's, like, a demand for that. Yeah, the most important thing here, I agree with this, is that there's an audience to everything. Uh, what weird side of YouTube have you ended up on? Uh, just, just lately. Um, because I, I just want to know. Sometimes you just learn about a whole side of the internet that you're like, I guess that makes sense that this exists. Uh, VTuber, this is a good answer. Uh... Would gameplay videos be considered react channels to an extent? Uh, I, I I see the angle you're coming at it from, but I think for the sake of it, I'm going to say they're two different things because I, I think the difference of gaming videos versus like react videos is one is a passive experience and one is an active experience. I would, you know, because it's like, I am the one who just threw that ball the complete wrong fucking way, you know? Like that was me. I did that. Yeah, gameplay is an active experience. <sighs> hey, I'm just reading everything. British... Wait, here's an... Gentle British man solving Sudoku puzzles. See, that is a side of YouTube where I've never been on, but I believe that it's there. Um, and like, you know, I recently got into the FNAF rabbit hole, right? So it's just like, I'm not surprised there's a FNAF side of YouTube, but I am surprised at how big it is now that I've explored it. Um, I didn't even know there was a Pikmin side of YouTube until I watched some videos for it and started getting recommended randomizers and tier lists and stuff like that. And there, that's the algorithm at work. I showed interest in one thing, and then it starts showing me all this other shit. Like, it's so interesting how uh, everything exists. There's a, Yeah, there's a Pikmin side of YouTube. I started watching people rank every Pikmin enemy in the game with full knowledge on, like, their damage output, how much health they have, and their, their names. You know, even that was impressive to me. Um... I watched a randomizer video that had a, uh, like a, a smoky prog that just spawned on day one. And it's just like, that's funny.
Like, uh, I ended up on a weird side. Oh, dude. Okay, so... I, I saved... Sometimes TikTok recommends me, like, recipes. And I am, like... I am... Let's say level one is someone who has just started cooking for themselves for the first time. I'm, like... And then, let's say level ten is a chef. I, I would say I'm, like, level two... Two and a half right now. You know? It's so like, I'm getting into cooking. I'm having a lot of fun with it. And I, like, I saved one recipe. Like, one cooking video, I saved one recipe. They saw that I was interested in it, and now my whole for you page is just recipes. And it's fucking awesome. But it was just kind of like, when it started happening, I was like, ah, I see what happened here. <laughs> you know? Make a cooking video? Uh, no. So... I think the cooking side of the internet is the meanest side of the internet to ever exist. Uh, it, cause it is all about interpretation and you know, you can make the same dish a million different ways. And the other 999,999 ways to make that everyone else has done and they think their way is better than you. Uh, I, I like cooking and I don't post about it <laughs> because it terrifies me. <laughs> Nothing is scarier than cooking. <laughs> Isn't it a lot to do for a cooking setup? Uh, also, I just don't think I ever want to cook on stream. Just hard stop. Uh, because... This is like a content creator fear that everyone has, but I think it'll make sense once I say it. Uh, if you want to like look up houses on like uh, Zillow or like in anything, uh, the most recognizable part of a house is a kitchen. So uh, a lot of creators are really scared to show their kitchens because that is the easiest way to get doxxed, which is funny. It's like right under there below posting your address. Yeah. How? Uh, well, you know, it's not, it's not like as simple as like reverse image search the, the, the kitchen or something like that. But realize if I just have this room, like let's take it, I took all this shit off and it's just a white wall. Even if you had the floor plans to my house, you wouldn't even fucking know what room this is. You know what I mean? I remember Dream showing his kitchen. His address got found like day two. Yeah, that's my point. <laughs> like it happens, and uh, there were there were two things I warn creators about if I see it on the timeline. Uh, sometimes I'll see creators being like, "Look, I just bought a house," and they'll do this little cute thing when they take a picture of their key in the foreground and the house blurry in the background, and they're like, "Oh, you can't see it." Or sometimes they'll just take a picture of the key and be like, "I got a new house." And it's like, oh, don't post keys. People can make fakes of them now. <laughs> so, general rule, never post keys. Never post keys. Uh, it is so easy to copy the key. And if you then, like, I know finding the address is harder than finding the key at that point. But you have already done the hardest part. They now have a key to your new house, right? Never post keys. Never post keys is all I'm saying. Even if you're the most, if you have like 50 followers on social media, don't, don't post pictures of keys. Yeah, give people as little info as you possibly can. Yeah, it's scary to think about. I think as a creator, life is terrifying. Uh, life is terrifying. The amount of like security protocol I have to go through anywhere I live, anywhere I work, anywhere I go. Like, earlier I talked about how I don't really go to conventions much anymore. Uh, well, most of the conventions I went to were Smash Tournament adjacent. And anyone in the community here can attest uh, security at Smash events is fucking awful. So, for any other uh, big event planners or organizers out there watching this, I don't come to your event because I don't feel safe there. Um, not because I don't want to go, but because I don't feel safe. 
like, uh, I don't know. I think, you know, whenever people, like, a lot of Smashers uh, started talking about, like, VIP rooms back in the day for, like, top players to, to hang out in. And they were like, that sounds elitist. That sounds gatekeeping and stuff like that. And it's like, I see how that comes off that way from a grassroots perspective. But I think from a convention standpoint, you have to have that space. You like that space is so crucial for people to like power down for even a little bit. This is dumb, but hire a bodyguard. Okay. Um, so I, I hear you out, but if I feel like someone could sneak a gun into a convention center, like how I, I hear you. How useful is the bodyguard? You know, like, wouldn't you rather just stay at home? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's Yeah, it's also fucking expensive to, to something I really get little gain from. Like, I understand hiring a bodyguard, but it, it's just like, I'm, I don't feel safe at Smash events, so I don't go. I think, like, the, the true answer is every event needs better security. Uh, here, let me tell you a story once. Uh, I went to an event. I went to MomoCon. And I went last minute. Some of you are aware of this. I saw someone mention it earlier. Um, and I didn't have a badge, but my friend had a spare. So... Um, I walked in with my friend who had a badge. I just kind of walked behind them with a backpack. And I just walked straight in the venue. And then I got the badge. And then I kind of sat there and reflected afterwards. I was like, I shouldn't have been able to walk in without a badge with a backpack. You know? I haven't been to a convention since that one. And it wasn't because they were like, oh, Alpha Ride, go on ahead. They didn't recognize me. I wasn't a featured guest here. I had no, like... Y you know? And you know, some conventions do have good security. I'm not saying, like, every convention is cursed. But, you know, that's a that's a great thought. Of why was I allowed to sneak through with a backpack? It's a scary concept, yeah. Yeah, I think conventions need to step their game up. I wholeheartedly agree. I like going to conventions to, to meet fans and see people. It is tiring, don't get me wrong. But yeah, I just, I just don't, I just don't go. Uh, I saw someone ask, was like, oh, this all sounds scary. Do you wish you were never famous at all? I was like, I, first off, uh, no. I think there are way more benefits in my life uh, than, like, there are some scary elements, but it comes with the territory. Uh, be smart, be, you know. Like, obviously some people have it way worse and it sucks that it comes with the territory. But I, I would be a fool to deny all the good things in my life that have happened. Do I wish these bad things weren't present? Yes. But I'm happy with the trade-off. Um, but what was I saying? Yes, I just wish conventions had better security. Uh, I am happy, though, at, like, the level of fame I have. I, I don't think YouTubers... Like, I think there are very few YouTubers... Who have too much fame. You know, I think it's like your your Mr. Beast and PewDiePie. Maybe like Markiplier. You know, like I, I think there's a small group of YouTubers who have like too much fame. Not to like downplay or devalue their content, but to the point where they can't really like go outside safely. And that level of fame sounds awful. Uh, I would say most times I go outside, I don't get recognized. But I would say a good amount I do get recognized, and it's cool. It's fun. It's 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 infrequent enough to where it's cool still. Mr. B says he gets a harassed worldwide because of his dub channels. Yeah, see that kind of fame is just like incapitating. Like it makes you so much less of a human because you get to experience so few things. And yeah, I don't want this to be a drag on him. It's just an unfortunate side effect. I, I think, like, any A-list celebrity, like, 
Fuck, that, that is hell I do not want to be a part of. Like... I understand when you have money, you can, like, pay people to get your groceries. You know, like, sometimes I'll order groceries delivered to my house. Um, I like going to grocery stores. I don't know why. It's, it's like a... It's like a part of life. I never want someone to take that away from me. It's really weird how, how much I like going to the grocery store. Um, but my point is, uh, I could, I have the amount of money to pay someone to go get groceries or always order groceries delivered. But I like that I don't have to. There are people who have to do that because they literally cannot go out in public. And that shit sounds awful. That sounds like hell. I think even if you don't do a face reveal, people will recognize you by your voice. Uh, that's possible. I mean, I know Jaden obviously has her face public and everything, but more people know her by her voice than her face, which I, you know, because it's not like as plastered on her content like mine is. Um, I mean, I've been with Jaden in public several times and they recognize me and they don't recognize Jaden. Like, I would, a majority of times when we get recognized, they recognize me first because I, I stand out more. And then they're like, Wait a second! That Jane is way bigger than me, but that's typically how it goes. Um, also, the hair stands out more. But I think sometimes they'll ask Jane to take a picture, and she'll be like, "Oh, okay, sure." And then they go, "Wait, are you Jane Animations?" <laughs> um, one time, Jaden and I, when we were filming that Nintendo World video, uh, if you're this fan, shout out to you. I'm sorry. Uh, someone walked up to me and said, hey, oh my god, are you Alpha? I don't mean to bother you. And I was like, no, no, you're fine. I go through the script. How was your Nintendo day? Uh, would you like to take a picture? And they say, sure. And then they hand the picture to Jaden. And then she goes, sure, yeah, I'll take the picture. And then in that exchange, he's like, he recognizes her. And we saw it. He recognized it. And I could tell this man had a whole, like, that's so Raven vision into the future where he was just racist. <laughs> And he was like, oh my god, um, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but who are you? <laughs> it's like, he recognized her as Jaden, but wasn't completely confident. And then we laughed about it later, because it was like, I feel like he just didn't want to think she was some other Asian woman. Because... <laughs> The, you could I saw the whole thought process happen in front of me. No, he wasn't. He wasn't racist. He was obviously correct. It was Jaden, but he was scared of possibly being racist. He was wrong. To be fair, she did not show her face for a while. No, no, no. Like I, like I got it. Like I understood it. But you have to understand the scenario is very funny. I thought she was Caucasian. Uh, well, she's half white. She's half white, half Japanese. Um, so you're half right? Um, but I don't think you see Jaden and think, that's a white girl. You know what I mean? Sure. Uh, shout out to Emmy Ricci who got passed for Jaden on Scribble Showdown Tour. <laughs> Dude, I heard that story. It was uh, James, Odd Ones Out, went with uh, Emmy Ricci to like the, I think the Chicago, like the Bean. And uh, while they were there, someone was like, oh my god, it's James and Jaden. <laughs> Just associated them. And then I think James was like, no, no, that, no, that's Emily. And then they took a picture with Emily and was like, bye, Jaden. Just like smiles out and everything. It's a really, that's a really funny story. But I, I think that story paints how true that experience is. It is pretty terrible, but it's something they both laugh at. It's a very funny story to both of them.
They look nothing alike. Ah, you see why it's offensive now. <laughs> well, what similarity do they have? You, you see the problem now. Yeah, it was the exact same guy, you're right. Can we see the team? Uh, the team isn't really put together right now. Um, but these are the Pokemon we have. Ignore the five Pidgeotos down here. But uh, these are all shinies. We have uh, Nidoking, Throat Goat. I think the team is really like something uh, of these. Um, it's really these three. This is the core. These are the ones we've had for the longest. I've been mistaken for little Dicky a lot. That's funny. At what point do you just say yes? Uh, why do you have four Pidgeotos? Uh, okay, because it's like... Er, Pidgeots, because... When I catch a Pokemon, I gain XP. And it slows a lot of time down if you have to, like, level up a Pokemon or evolve it. So I've just kind of kept the same Pidgeots in my box because it just kind of speeds up the process. You don't have to skip evolutions as much. I have a friend who looks exactly like Post Malone without the tattoos. Well, that's an easy Halloween costume. You ever seen a person pull off a Halloween costume a little too well? Uh, I don't know if you guys remember. Uh, Void did a summit skit, and then it was like his profile picture on Twitter, where he had like the red weekend suit with the glasses. And it was like, that shit just looked good. That shit looked good. You in the Danny Phantom costume? I, I think you missed the assignment on that one. Because uh, I don't think at any point anyone saw me and was like, that's the real Danny Phantom. Like, you see what I'm saying? It's the celebrity costumes where you're just like, is that? I have a friend that looks like a FNAF character. What the fuck? Who? Who could they possibly look like? Just... Like, Vanessa is, like, the only character where I'm like, oh, maybe. Someone says purple guy. Sure. Toy Chica. <laughs> Look. If your friend looks like Toy Chica, I have no joke for that because I think it'd be disgusting to make. But I, that that is that is alarming. I, I I feel for her if she looks like Toy Chica. I feel for her. I really do. <laughs> I okay. So normally when I see chat thirsting and being weird, I usually roll my eyes at it. But I think I saw the funniest example of someone in chat just goes hubba hubba, <laughs> and suddenly it's like harmless. <laughs> now it's like funny. <laughs> Hubba Hubba is acceptable. <laughs> yeah, like, if you want to be weird and thirst over, like, Toy Chica, just say Hubba Hubba. It's a lot more acceptable that way. Yeah, Johnny Bravo hard eyes over here. <laughs> Auga? I think Auga was funny, like, a year ago. I think it's really gotten beat to death over maybe the past year or two. Uh, I, I, think it's, I think it's too much now. Wowie Zowie? I, I, Wowie Zowie just sounds too child talk for me. It, it's, it's too much. Hubba Hubba is like the perfect middle ground. Hubba Hubba's perfect. No notes. What do you think of goodness gracious? I just don't think that sounds like you're shocked at someone's appearance, I guess, you know? Goodness gracious. Hubba Hubba is like very specific, right? Humana Humana. Yeah, it, Eh, like that's closer. That's closer. Zooey Mama, you are not sliding in with Zooey Mama. Ooh la la, dude. If anyone said ooh la la to me, or if I heard anyone say ooh la la, I would alert the authorities, as that is the biggest red flag I have ever heard. That that just makes me uncomfortable. Ooh la la, like ooh la la, in like a serious context, is scarring. It's just French. 
Uh, like, you know what I mean. If I'm in France and people say it, I'm not going to call the authorities. I'll consider it, but I won't. I, I mean, you know what I mean. Stop trying to find the exception every time. Being French is enough not to like it. I don't I don't know. I think I just have like a lot of British friends. I think it's fucking exhausting of of the ew gross British, ew gross uh French thing. Because it, it feels I know it's obviously different, but it feels rooted in like the same thing of why racism is bad, because you're judging people over something they can't control or how they were born with. I don't know. I think it's fucking obnoxious. And I feel... I try to... Sh every time I'm in call with, like, a British friend or anyone from anywhere, I always try to uh, shut it down. You know? I, I always try to shut it down. Because I think, I'll, like, all of my friends uh, who are, are British or something, it's like... I think it was funny at first, but now, after so many years of it, they are also very tired of that humor. Yeah, shouts to Fires, eh? That is one example of, of a British person. Good job. Unfortunately, it goes both ways. Okay, so why keep doing it? I don't like it when they do it to me, so I'm going to do it to them. I don't know. Like, 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 I truly believe, you know, like, you get what you get, right? And I can't say I'm perfect, because th there are sometimes, like, I'll do a joke, and then at the end of it, I'm like, Huh, that is kind of hypocritical to this other thing I said. You know, you, you gotta learn. Why people just want to make fun of people they haven't historically oppressed. Yeah, yeah, sure, man. Yeah, uh, okay, so we got two more Caterpies. Uh, two, three more rolls, right? I'll give you both sides. Uh, I feel like the Believer's got to win next time. Have you seen the Harry Potter parodies on TikTok? No, gladly. I am so lucky my parents were religious and I never got into Harry Potter. Oh, it was, it's, it was like torturous at the time. Loki such a blessing in disguise. I'm so thankful for my overly Baptist mother. That is the, the best thing she ever did to me, was not let me get tracked into Harry Potter. Yeah, so blessed. So blessed from the big man upstairs. God, I've never cared for it in the first place. I mean, but when I was in third grade and all my friends were seeing Harry Potter, I wanted to see it too. You know, you... Okay. One more roll, though. One more roll. Uh. Uh. Oh, unfortunate. So let's call that prediction. Doubters win yet again. Uh, I gotta go to the bathroom yet again. Under 400 encounters. Ding, ding, ding. Let's see what happens. Uh, cast your bets and count to 100.
Did we get to 100? What's the believers? I'm trying to... Oh, 50, 50. Ooh. Oh, that, honestly, that kind of sucks. Uh, can someone vote massively one way or the other? Because now, like, if the believers win, they get, like, nothing. <laughs> oh, that's so sad. It's not even skewed against them. Even if the doubters win, they don't really get anything. Just pick a side. Just pick a side, cowards. Yeah, it just keeps evening out. That's so upsetting. Uh, the winners of this poll get fucking nothing. We get double? That's nice. N no? Uh, well, I, I guess kind of. Okay, now you do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's 1.7 times 2.3 times. Because it, it wasn't for a while. Yeah, 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 yeah I guess it is two times if it's 50-50. But it's it's still like it's such, you don't want to win on 50-50 odds. You you want to be the underdog when you win. Why do you not get much? Uh, the odds are skewed based on like how like how many people voted. So let's say 99% of people say no and you say yes and then the answer is yes. You get a massive payout for believing in the underdog. You're going to tell a bisexual to pick a side? Oh, okay, so you're one of the quirky bis. Got it. Yes. Jesus Christ, man. You, you try to say one thing. You try to say one thing. Is... What do you mean, damn Jacob? Team kill? <laughs> okay, team kill's funny. <laughs> Betrayal? Yeah, I'm sorry. I, look, if you ask me to go left or right, I can all I can do that without applying it. That's all I'm saying. Is it time for the gay poll again? I'm proud of the gay poll. Every single time we do it, uh, we have more people on uh, LGBT+. I put in a letter there on accident. Don't remember which one. <laughs> but uh, it's always the majority, which, which I think is awesome. Someone says, no, we're talking about politics now. You're in the wrong stream. <laughs> if, if all I said was acknowledging bisexuality, that, that is a wild statement. Oh, not to the gay thing. Oh, okay, my bad, my bad, my bad. You can see the timing. Oh, left to right. Oh, okay, okay, no, no, you're fine. You're fine now. <laughs> I was like, whoa. That is wild. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, buy Pride and Chat. Yeah. All the subs can do it. No, 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 I get it now. I get it. I get it. Okay, what's the prediction finish at? Uh, 5446. Yeah. yeah. I mean, here's the thing. All the money people earn, if they've just said doubt all day, eventually they will be wrong. You have to say believe at some point. You know, like that's... Or just stop. Like you can stop while you're ahead. You know, you can win one. You can win one, and then be like, "I'm good." I want gay poll. Okay, I'll do gay poll real quick. Um, I, I do it like every couple streams. Um, I, I originally I had yes or no, but but it felt like it was saying like believe it or, or not um i'm just gonna put no nah, no nah. uh okay here's the gay poll i'll put it on for three minutes uh what it doesn't meet the gu guidelines can i not put gay okay okay i had to censor gay that, that is that is obscene twitch uh okay so just keep in mind for the lgbt plus poll like Hetero trans count, or like hetero comma trans counts, bi counts, asexuality counts, aromanticism counts, anything under the, the umbrella of LGBT plus counts. Uh, so pretty much only say I am not 
if you are uh, pretty much just like straight cis, right? What if I love my homies in a non-sexual way? Uh, that is the most straight humor I've ever heard. Just click uh, click no for me real quick. Uh, no one loves queer baiting more. <laughs> All I still know that <laughs> I do remember last time uh, we did have someone in chat be like, I'm an ally, so I voted yes. And I'm like, that's not what that poll means. <laughs> uh, it, it's, it's funny when you have to explain it to people. <laughs> it's like, oh, thanks for the support. But. <laughs> Okay, a, a new comment. Uh, what if I roll the dice with a glory hole? I think if you're willing to roll the dice, there is some amount of fruitiness in there. Uh, I, that that's a real thinker. That, that, that that's a real thinker. Uh, if you said, "What does that mean?" Uh, you are not old enough. To watch this Pokemon Let's Go stream. <laughs> I don't think a, any gay person would ask, or any straight person would ask that question. Man, the ratio's changed since last time. I don't think it is. It's always been about 50% either way. I don't think we've ever had like a uh, like a super dominant. I think like one stream we had like sixty eight percent, but I think it was just we did it in Pride Month. Everyone was happy, everyone was watching, but normally it is around like fifty fifty. I think we had one. The highest we've ever had was like sixty eight, but uh, this is pretty typical for all the other polls. That one poll was just an anomaly. Is there a problem with it being 50-50? Well, you, you are you're trying to incite something with that comment. Uh, it's merely an observation that it is lower than last time. There is no issue with it. Yeah, sorry to, to oppress you for thinking that it was. Yeah, I mean, I, like, I just think it's really cool to be a community... That's accepting and it fosters people in LGBT+. Because it's like, when you look at the actual percentage of people under that umbrella in the world uh, versus this group of people I've collected right here, I think it's a pretty cool number. I think it's really cool, and I do wear that with a badge of honor. But uh, not to say the other side is wrong. It's just, it's just I, I like being able to foster a community that is important to me. That's all it means. What's the percent globally? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I would guess, like, does anyone want to look it up? Like, what's the global ratio? It, it's hard to go in global ratio, because there are some countries where being gay is straight up illegal. So a lot of people aren't super honest with that. I would guess, like, I would guess 5 to 15 percent. I would guess 10 to 15 percent. I would say 10. I'm going to say 10 percent. Is it 10%? I don't know. 10% according to Google. 10% uh, <laughs> but 20% real. Uh, I hear you loud and clear on that one. I, You know what? I think about this all the time. I wonder. Not just like people who are closeted and never felt comfortable coming out. But I wonder how many gay people are out there that will just never realize it. You know, I, I always think about that because I think if I never got like as online as I was and just stayed in like bumfuck nowhere, Oklahoma, I would have probably never realized either, you know, because like especially with a religious family. Yeah, like historically billions. Yeah, no, that's true. Like th that is the correct answer. But it's like, damn, that sucks to think about where it's like it kind of takes you finding the right crowd to kind of come to these realizations 
You know, not that they, like, convert you or make you this way, but it's like... You know, you ever just meet people who are so comfortably themselves, and it, like, causes you to explore your own self a little bit more? Those types of people are magical. They're, like, they're so crucial to keep everyone in a better place. This stream is not for me today, by golly. <laughs> now you said everything you needed to. Uh, well, I don't like... That's kind of... This is what every shiny hunting stream has been. Because it's like, what the fuck else do you want me to talk about? <laughs> I just read chat and go, I have an opinion on that. And that's usually my first mistake. Doo doo. Could you talk about Lightning McQueen? Uh, I guess. <laughs> he's, he's fast. Anyone constantly forget he's voiced by Owen Wilson? Uh, so actually here's a kind of a funny story. Uh, for, for fifth grade, they wanted to do a graduation for all the fifth graders. And the year I graduated from fifth grade was the year uh, Cars came out. So, um, a lot of people wanted to submit a song. Uh, what song do you want to play for fifth grade graduation? Everyone got to submit one. And because uh, I was a little edgy fuck I was even at that age. I submitted another song that came out fairly recently, uh, Thanks for the Memories by Fall Out Boy, because I was like, ah, thanks for the memories. Fifth grade was great, you know? Uh, and then I had my teacher pull me aside, and they're like, so that song's depressing. And I go, oh, don't know what that means. <laughs> you know, what's funny is after the chorus, Thanks for the memories. Uh, the next line after that is, even though they weren't so great. So, uh, little 10-year-old me really did not have that literacy comprehension there. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the reason I brought the story up is because we lost. Uh, the final voting came to... I forget her last name, Natasha something, uh, Unwritten versus Life is a Highway by Rascal Flats. And sure enough, Rascal Flats won the fifth grade vote, which is crazy. Uh, Jacob, top five hottest characters from the car series, go. I love of the first amendment right the right to free speech it's really powerful it really allows you to say whatever the fuck you want and everyone else has to witness it it's so impressive that we live in a society where that's just okay and that's not even the worst thing i've read today Oh yeah, it's probably the blue car. <laughs> I, I I do not think I can name five characters from cars. Don't say hubba hubcap. You you are so much better than hubba hubcap. I don't know who you are, but any person in the world is better than hubba hubcap. Yeah, dude yeah, they gave her a tramp stamp. I've always thought it would, uh, you know how, like, you'll do something that is just fun and people are online are like, what would your kids think? Yeah, you know, like, I see that a lot and I always roll my eyes. But, uh, the, the, the one thing that I actually do think that about is, uh, uh, I thought it would be funny to get a tramp stamp once. But that's the one thing, I think that's the one thing in my life where I'm like, I don't know how I'm going to explain that in 20 years. 
Like, I think it'd be funny. I think it would be funny. And normally doing it for the bit is enough for me. But that was like the one thing where I was like, nah, I don't want my kids to have to explain that 30, 20, 20 years from now, 20, 30 years from now, right? I remember hearing you say that and texting my friend, what is a tramp stamp? Oh, you poor soul. <laughs> Did I already do the shiny tier list? Nope, have not found the shiny yet. I, I think also another powerful uh, result of the First Amendment is uh, sometimes on Twitter, you see things that were not intended to be seen by you, but other people have unfortunately forced it upon you anyways. Uh, I saw a very detailed diagram on uh, the Kachusi which I'm sure some of you have also seen that. And it was shocking how, how detailed it was. Uh, I don't really feel like explaining it further because I feel like I've already said too much. But I, I hope you can all relate. What is that word? Uh, yeah, I, I'm sorry that I introduced that to your, to your vernacular. Uh, not everyone deserves to have that word in there. I, I think if you have heard that word before, you are online a little too much. Yeah, just, uh, just sorry. Alpha, what inspired you to be the Chris McLean, Chris McLean of YouTube? Uh, I, th I don't really think I am. <laughs> I think I'm like insane, but I think a lot of my insanity arc was like all like a lot of the I, I think it was like 2021 in a t early 22 was like the Chris McLean arc. I've kind of calmed down a little bit, you know. I kind of just play games in my room. Have you seen Total Drama Island? Yes. Foolish question. What drove you to be insane? Yeah, gee, wonder what other big life events happened in that time period. That affected my personality. Who knows, man? Who knows? <laughs> Life be difficult sometimes, is all I can say. Do you miss doing Smash content? Uh... No? Uh... I think it's so fine to really like this era of stuff I've done and had fun with it and look back on it fondly, but still also never want to do it again. Uh, it was, it's draining, but I, I think like the kind of content I make now is just much more fulfilling. Cause uh, if you think about it, it's like, I get to tell stories where uh, I made a choice at the end of 2020 uh, that I didn't want to, I almost quit YouTube because I was like, I'm not having fun. I don't feel fulfilled. I don't want to do YouTube unless I can find a way to feel fulfilled. And that 2021 was kind of where my content kind of like radically started changing. Oh, there's a lot of post commentary. Oh, it's bigger. Oh, it's all narrative driven. Oh, I'm not uploading every day. You know, I'm taking time. And and that, that was kind of what the change was. But... Uh, yeah, I, it really started, if you look at my channel, I think it's funny. Uh, I think it was after the best of 2020, which I think the first video uploaded was uh, me playing pretend the Bitcoin miner Among Us ripoff. It was not Among Us. I think it was like that video. If I could, I would delete every video that came before that and feel good about it. But I know people like to watch old videos, so I'm never going to do that. But I would love to, you know what I mean? Because I, I think that is what represents my current channel now. Yeah, it's part of the development. Do it? I don't, I don't want to do it. Like, me taking down every old video would fulfill like a very selfish desire. Whereas, uh, one, people still go back and watch old videos. I don't really want to take that away from them. But no, like, there was the desire that I wish I could. You know, I, I wish... I almost wish I started then. I, in that moment. But, eh.
Yeah, I think all creators hate their own old content. I don't think that's true. I don't even think I hate my old content. In fact, I like it. I think it's very good, <laughs> even. I just don't think it's super reflective on what I'm doing now, and the style has changed radically. Plus, I also... I, I like... When I see a big YouTube channel with like 200 videos, I respect it because, you know, I have like, I think 1.5K videos on my channel and that's like, eh, you know what that means? Yeah, it's eh. Do you have a video of yours you dislike or hate? Uh, I do have a few that like, I didn't feel good about the time. I've only felt worse as time went on or things I just think were like a little distasteful. Um, I, I don't really want to talk about them because I don't want to point them out. Because if I point out what's wrong with them, other people might also realize, you know? Um, I, I do think there was something I learned. I will talk about this one, though. Um, back in, like, 2017, I was super open to doing fucking anything. And I, I thought that was one of the coolest parts of my channel. But it was still, like, a core around, like, Nintendo-adjacent stuff. And I thought that was really cool. But I think I definitely pushed it too far. Uh, there, there it's, There's two videos. And uh, me and Major just got bored, stumbled upon something, thought, what if we read this and it'd be a funny video? I, And it was, we discovered on Pornhub, <laughs> each porn star has a bio. And so we just made a video of us just reading them because the bios are like this sloppy little slut sucks giant cocks. And it's just like, it's like, imagine that as like a WWE intro. So uh, Major and I just made a video where we just read some of the top bios and it, I thought it was just funny. It's funny, but it's also like, inappropriate like at, at some point like i know my audience has kind of grown up with me a little bit but there's still a lot of young people in my audience and i talk about 18 plus things and i think i, I make it clear oh hey the, you know this is for 18 plus but i think if you just if you're kind of this nintendo adjacent channel and you just drop me reading porn bios like i lost subs for it which makes sense but you know like i think i can str i am more comfortable talking about like that kind of stuff on stream than I am on like a video, you know? It's, it's different. Yeah, and then we uploaded a part two, and I think the, the both of them got demonetized, one got taken down. Uh, one's still up, but I think the title of it is Nothing Wrong Is Here. N nothing Bad's Here, YouTube. I think it might still be monetized. Why was there a part two? Um. Because back in the day on YouTube, if you recorded for a video and it turned out to be really long, you wouldn't trim it down. You would just split it in half. So it was like the same recording session that just turned into a lot of content. It's uh, like I would do CPU tournaments and if they went on for too long, eh, that's like two or three videos. Which I just didn't really like that practice, but you kind of felt like you had to if you want to be a daily channel. Uh, you know, like... I made my multiple Odyssey videos, but now if Odyssey were to come out, I would just make the super cut, you know? I, And I like that so much more, and I'm glad that over the years, content has kind of started to reward that kind of shit. Make part three happen. I, I No. First off, no. But I think you guys misunderstood what I said. Uh, do you ever watch Bluey or other children's shows out of boredom? Uh... Yeah, some children's shows I'll watch, but it's typically shows I grew up with as a kid and I'll revisit as an adult. Uh, but no, I've never watched Bluey. Uh, Jaden's watched it and I've kind of like walked in the room and, and been in the same room as she's watched it before, but I've never really paid attention, I guess. I always know, like, I know of what it's about and I know why adults like in the community around it, but I, I don't really know. I haven't really watched it. Yeah, I've heard good things. I just haven't watched it. Dude, Jesus Christ. This fucking... Fucking... Rat. Why can't I find it?
I, I think it's so exhausting. I, I know I, I always uh, 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 call attention to these negative comments, but I don't like to call attention to the bad comments. I like to call to the attention to the comments that kind of make my jaw drop a little bit. Uh, and that one was, uh, I mentioned, no, I haven't watched the show. And then I met with Smasher Pass Bluey's mom. And it's just like, huh. I'm sure there's more to the show than that, but wow. But I guess I did just answer the question of which Cars character would you fuck? It's, the internet's crazy, man. The internet's crazy. That's a dog. You know what? I am so unfamiliar to the show, I didn't even consider that part. Uh, but that, that is an excellent point to call out. Thank you. Good note. Thank you. Thank you for that one. Man, y'all horny as fuck. Here's the thing. I don't even think it's people horny. I just think people are not funny. And sex humor is so overlapped with shock humor to where that's why it's as popular as it is. You know? I, I think that's what it is. I think it's like... Um, I'm sure a lot of people will agree with me after I say it out loud. Uh, the kind of... The bat... <laughs> the bat signal to me that someone is not funny is when they, like, make multiple Shrek jokes. Like, like, you know what I, you know, you know what I mean? You all kind of know that person who makes, like, Shrek jokes still? I, I think Shrek is, like, the ultimate litmus test if, like, are you funny? And, uh, I, I kind of, I live by that rule. What the fuck is a Shrek joke? It's not a joke from Shrek. From Shrek. Because Shrek is a funny movie. It's a good movie. Don't get me wrong. It's just when every punchline is just something about Shrek. And I can't even recall one. Like an onion, it has layers. I, I don't mean just quoting Shrek. It's just more of... Uh, I think, okay, I'm also going to say it's so Jover. I think that is kind of Shrek humor. It's different, but like, like I, I think that's kind of what I mean. Yeah, layered onion. When the punchline is Shrek. The reason I can't think of a punchline is because there is not one. The answer is Shrek. Yeah, the whole... Making a joke around Shrek is not bad. Making a joke where the punchline is Shrek is... is I, I don't know. It's just like stock format humor. Yeah. I I want to call it like an ick. Like, not like romantically, but just for for anyone, you know? You, you, you probably have those kinds of jokes. Some of you maybe puns. Uh, personally, I don't like puns either. But you hear one and you're like, I'm I, I I'm turned off from whatever that is. Also, I'm upset that the phrase turned on is exclusively locked to sexuality nowadays. Because I, I don't know if it's like a southern thing. But, uh, you know, growing up, I heard a lot of like, oh, yeah, they turned me on to this music. Or they turned me on to the series or something. So... Or, or I'd be turned on to that series. You know, it's a normal thing to say. Okay, it's just the bastardization of the internet. Gotcha. Now, you can still use it in that way. Okay. Well, I didn't know if it was just a southern thing. Because every time I've said that, people kind of give you, like, the rock eyebrow. Just like an A-O. Like, when I, I feel like it's a very normal thing to say. But I think it goes back to what I said. Where it's like, people clearly understand what you're trying to say. But still want to, like repaint it. I don't know. I think that shit just kind of ignores me. Or annoys me. I think put me on is easier to get away with. Oh, it definitely is. But like, it's... it's Like, I grew up saying, like, oh, I was turned on to this. Uh... Oh, hi, Jane. <laughs> what you got there? Get a popsicle. Would you like to show the class? <laughs> Uh, where'd you, where'd you find this guy? 7-Eleven. Oh, okay. Did you go to 7-Eleven or did you order it? I ordered it. You door dashed the, okay. I door dashed him. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> Just trying to catch this goddamn rat. Yeah, I was watching his stream. I'm surprised you haven't found him yet. Yeah, I'm, I think it's like, right, like, it's, luck is all about an average. And, uh, we had one day where we caught three Pokemon in like four hours. So us, 
with realistically, we just hit odds recently. So uh, we're, or I think we're just around odds. So it's like, it's not even that insane. It's just, we just had really good luck prior to it. So it's like, am I really going to be upset at this one taking a while? Uh, five hours, but I think uh, it'll show right here how many encounters. I think it's like 340 encounters. Oh, we did find a shiny Weedle along the way, but that's not I what I'm looking for. Yeah. It to the side. I sure did. Yeah, no, I, I, sh I showed everyone too. <laughs> I just talked about how concerning of a message it is that we have two rooms in this house that are filled with plushes. Not one, but two. Well, uh Build. There's still more space to put more of them. Yeah, that's what makes it a fucking room outside. It would just be the <laughs> plush room. If you took both rooms and put all the plushes in one room, that is a room full of plushes. I can fit electric in there. He's, he's... I know, I know you can fit this one more in there, but how long can you say that? Jaden, this is an intervention. At some point, it might become necessary. What are you... How, how are you going to stop me? <laughs> <laughs> um, I just want to... I'm fine with the Bulbasaur. I would, I would honestly prefer the Bulbasaur. Uh, it is shocking how many Caterpies I've caught. I have... Uh, the last time I streamed uh, Let's Go, I was trying to find Caterpie. Caught an, a, a Weedle on accident. And... Uh, then gave up. I think I was... O I'm way over odds on Caterpie, that's for sure. Uh, and then I went to the cave to try and catch Geodude and caught a Zubat instead, which is still a new Pokemon, but it's like... It's two Pokemon instead of Golem, it would make three. If you get Bulbasaur, you have to hunt Caterpie again. I mean, or anyone. It doesn't really matter. It's just shocking that it's Caterpie. Yeah, I would prefer Cater or Bulbasaur. Because go. So how the rarity works in this game is all three starters have a one percent spawn rate in all their respective areas, which is fine if you just want to catch one of them, right? Yeah. But uh, if you get a if you get a chain combo of eleven plus, then they start spawning more. So what the strat is is to get an eleven plus counter with some other Pokemon. And then you just take, like, your your new odds and just go in and out and respawn them. Oh. So, like, That's if cool. yeah, if I wanted Bulbasaur, I would just take the counter I have. I wouldn't chain Bulbasaur. Because once I catch my first Bulbasaur, it'd be, it's so, it's a 1% chance to get the next 10. Yeah, because it affects all of the Pokemon, right? Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, the chain combo, it doesn't increase the shiny odds for the others, but it increases rarity. Maybe the luck is reversed. I I think you guys... It's so wild that, like, we're barely over odds and people are, like, sounding the alarms. This... That is how stats works. We we had one day where we caught, like, a, a Charmander in 30. We caught, like, a Psyduck in 70. And I think the Weedle in, like, 130. Like, that was an insane day. All three of those were combined were under odds for one Pokemon. Yeah, but no one remembers the Vulpix. Uh, the the Vulpix is the highest we've had so far. Yeah. Uh, Caterpie is coming close on it though. I remember, like, we were traveling and you shiny hunted an entire plane ride. I did. And, <laughs> and when we got there. That is true. And uh, I caught it. I think Vulpix was it was like number seven fifty. It was it was around seven fifty, but uh, yeah, that was easily the highest. Um, we have been fucking popsicle and I, then sorry, there's popsicle on my floor. I'm sorry, he's melting way too fast. Clean up the popsicle. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Sit in your corner and eat your popsicle. 
Yeah, I would like a Bulbasaur just because he's harder to get, but he's like spawning now. The odds are still increased more for Caterpie, but uh, we did you? What, what? It's in the bat. Okay. How many, how many do we have? Do you have any food hot takes? I don't think so. It's like, I think the most passionate food opinion I have that's negative is that I really don't like pickles. But I think that's like pretty common. You know, people always say, you know, uh, pickles are like, like you, you, you end up with a person who loves pickles if you hate pickles. And it's like, it's a beautiful thing. So I, I think it's, I think it's a necessary part of life. Uh, I am part of the 50% that dislikes pickles. I think it's a beautiful thing. We also don't really like peanut butter. I think that's a big one. Yeah, I don't like peanut butter. It's it's like a texture thing for me. I also really don't like the smell of peanut butter. I would say like those are probably the two foods where I'm like, uh, I won't even entertain. But I'm pretty open to like try something. But those are like the two foods where I really don't like. Like, I don't hate peanuts, which is weird. Uh, I don't hate shit made with, like, peanut oil. But uh, it's just peanut butter, whatever the reason is. Pineapple on pizza? Uh, I don't I don't eat pineapple pizza. But I think that's another argument that I think people are way too passionate about for no reason. Uh, I've seen people order pineapple on pizza, and I say, Neat, I'll order my own. <laughs> Yeah, it's like Pokemon versus Lions at this point. Like, n neither side really cares about being right. It's just, a silly it's just silly. Do you eat mac and cheese with a spoon or fork? Uh, definitely, I'm, I'm a spoon guy with mac and cheese. Uh, I will eat it with a fork if that's, like, what's given to me. But I like getting the, the goopy little cheese sauce on my, on my spoon. And the fork doesn't capture that as well. It depends on the size of the pasta. First time Chatter says spoon mac and cheese. Oh, that awoken something in them. They broke their silence for that one. My favorite part of first time Chatters is sometimes you get people who it's just the first time they've ever been to a stream. But other times you can tell when you made someone break their silence. And that's what I live for. Um, I think like the most obnoxious timeline here is if we end up getting like a shiny metapod, uh, which is possible, uh, but I would be annoyed. <laughs> I would definitely be annoyed by it. Um, shiny, like, shiny metapod is like the same thing as getting a shiny Pikachu, but it's just a little salt in the wound. What about another shiny Weedle? At this point, I'm prepared for it mentally, so it's not going to hurt that bad. It's it does not truly affect our odds. There is nothing stopping us from ignoring the shiny Weedle and seeing a shiny Caterpie next to it. Uh, it's the same odds as just seeing a shiny Caterpie, and that's what I focus on. How many shinies are we at now? Uh, 26 out of 50. So it, uh, 50 hours into the run. Uh, well, probably 50, like five now, right? Uh, yeah, 50, 55. So 26 and 55. Woo. Uh, looking for... But if we catch this Caterpie, then that's uh, 27, 8, 9. Then we're at 29. Just like that. Have you thought of dyeing your hair a different color? I get asked that a lot. I think it's just like once you break the seal, people are ready for anything. But uh, I, I kind of just like this. I like the blonde, and I don't really want to change it. And and that's that's kind of the end of the thought, was I just kind of like blonde a little more than anticipated. So it's just kind of stuck. I think that's my biggest thing, was like when I first bleached my hair, it was a it was like an eight or nine hour process. 
Uh, it could have been broken up into two sessions, but I was fine with doing one. But like, yeah, it's just, if I were to go to a different color, I thought about going like an ashy silver, perhaps. But uh, that's like probably the wildest I'd go because just going back to blonde is just such a fucking chore. Because uh, before I wanted to, I wanted to do like jet black. Uh, I remember I was between like jet black or this color and it was like two opposite sides of the spectrum. So I went blonde first because it would have been easier to go blonde to black than black to blonde. So, so that was my uh, logic for that. Oh, hi, Frazier, big man. Would you like to come here? The people would love to see you. We can, we, oh my god. Do you have anything to say, buddy? Just some grunts. Nothing. I like his eyes where it's just barely in frame. Anything? Anything you want to say? He had a lot to say before this, but now he's acting coy. He's not shy, I promise you. It's all a ruse. He loves attention. He sees all the emotes of <laughs> Oh, he's just putting on a show. Uh-huh. That's the look. That He knows exactly what he's doing. It's all planned. It's all calculated. What is this? What is... He's a good guy, though. I like him a lot. He's, he's an awesome big man. Uh-huh. Oh, do not do this. This is so out of character. Okay. He, he's had his fun. He pushed it this time. Oh, I didn't know Evie just gives you stardust. The fuck? Okay. Uh, back to finding caterpies. I keep calling them rats, uh, but I think it's just because calling him like a caterpillar really doesn't hit in an aggressive fashion, like in an angry, like. I don't think you can say caterpillar angry and like have people believe you, you know? I think that's just one like of those words. Maggot. Maggot's good. Maggot's good. But I, I like rat a lot. Rat is such a good word. Yeah, one time uh, uh, Jane and I, and by Jane and I, I mean me, uh, we were, I was on the phone for like AT&T, like setting up our internet or something like that at the house. And... Uh, Jaden's cat, Tostada, uh, is a tiny little creature, and I, I call her a little rat from time to time, like endearingly. Um, and we were on, uh, the, I was on the phone setting up the internet, and then, uh, I was on hold, you know, just like the music playing, like, do-do-do-do-do, and then like, uh, I'm just sitting there minding my own business, Tostada walks up to me, flops upside down, and starts rolling around on my feet. Well, Jane's in the room, so I'm not talking to myself. And I just kind of, under my breath, go, little rat. And then the woman helping me comes off hold and goes, Sir, I'm so sorry. I I'm doing my best to help. I'll be right there. And I go, okay. And then, like, ten more seconds pass, and I realized, oh, she could have, she heard me. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, uh, this, this lady who is working a probably minimum wage call job, just hears me call her little rat. You weren't even on the call for like over two minutes. I wasn't even, like, I'm sure they expect me to get frustrated at some point, given the nature of the job, but she has done nothing at that point to warrant me calling her a little rat. And I, I, I felt bad. I, I genuinely felt bad. I thought it was hilarious. Did you say sorry? Uh, I don't think... It was a situation I should apologize. I think it was best for us to just... I, I, sh I should just move on. You know? I, I think it's just one of those things. We can only pray she forgot in the sea of other things she's been called. Yeah, I'm sure that is not the worst thing she's gotten called. But it, it was it was unfortunate.
this song is just plays echoes in the halls of hell. Yeah, at that time it's too late, it becomes this whole thing. Yeah, now we're both like holding on to it a bit longer than we need to. Find her and apologize? Okay, yeah, I'll just call AT&T and ask, has anyone reported being called a little rat? Like, in the last few years. <laughs> in the last, like, couple years. Oh, I thought that was a shiny Weedle. That was, that was about my 13th reason. Uh, that was a shiny Metapod. I don't even know what color shiny Metapod is. Is it red? That's so strange. No, I think you're right. A yeah, little Cheeto, yeah. You have lots of 13th reasons why. Yeah, just because it's like an acceptable way for me to say what I want to say. <laughs> you know? If <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, it is a saying I use quite frequently. Uh, I'm still looking for this goddamn Caterpie. I just, oh, hi, this is the little rat we were talking about. She, wants down. she got scared of all the caterpies. The flashing colors. That is a rat. She is a little rat. <laughs> you know that show is based off a book? Yeah. Y yeah. I read that book when I was in seventh grade and way too young to understand it. Uh... There, there's a lot of things in that book that just weren't subtle that I didn't pick up on. Like, I thought the book was about, like, suicide and stuff. But the girl gets assaulted in that book, and I didn't even notice. I, I was in seventh grade. I didn't fucking know anything. It's it's also just not a good book. I, I think, like, as a kid, you're told that it's deep and profound. So a lot of people thought it was deep and profound. But, uh... I don't know. I think at the time, it's just kind of wild because it really romanticizes suicide. Like, I knew that rates went up when the show came out, which is terrifying. That's awful. Because I, I think uh, the worst part about that series is, like, they show a suicide in, in the show. Yeah. Well, they have a trigger warning at the beginning of the show now but they didn't at at launch they it just like you just see it and it, it, it like they make it almost peaceful you know oh, yeah no. yeah you see the issue now is yeah they fucking give you a wiki how tutorial by the end of it it's it's crazy no it's it's awful it's really bad and it's like i think they also make suicide, that show makes it almost feel like a kind of vengeful in a way. Where they're like, here are 13 people who wronged me. Follow my puzzles. I'm dead. Yeah, it's, it's, I think conceptually, like, I see how it's, it's an enticing hook. The more you think about it, the worse it gets. And then the show just, it was awful. It was bad. But I found out one of my favorite bands because of that show. So that's it's, it's okay. Uh, lead singer or lead, the lead role, uh, Dylan Minnette. He's the lead singer of Wallows, and I think that's cool. And that's how I learned about that band. Yeah, shout out Wallows. Yeah, that that is Wallows is my silver lining of Thirteen Reasons Why. That is one of my favorite bands. I've seen them live. They're incredible. How the fuck did they get more than one season? That, the craziest part is that there's only one book. <laughs> they just started making shit up, and boy, does it go off the rails. Oh, it's crazy. I think, so, for anyone who doesn't know about that show, 13 Reasons Why is a series about a girl who went through a lot. She committed suicide and left 13 tapes about 13 different people, and they all had to pass them around each other, and, and, and all that. And then, 
the book ends. And, and then there was a, a guy who did bad things in those tapes. So the, I think part two, season two was like the trial. And since they still wanted the actor cast as the girl who's dead, they had her be Casper the friendly ghost for the entire season and just kind of talk to the main character. And it was weird. He, and it was like, it wasn't a hallucination because he like learned stuff. <laughs> From her, you know, it it was weird. It, yeah, yeah, it was weird. Uh, and then I don't remember what season three was, but I think there was a fourth, and that was the final one. But or maybe I'm thinking season three. I don't know. I think there's four. But I I do know that in the last se oh season three was the drug season. That's right. That's right. Uh, but then in season four, the, you know, trigger warning on, on sexual assault here, <laughs> but uh, the rapist from the first season who went on trial, who did not get convicted, which I think is also like, I'm fine with that because it's just like, that's kind of the reality of things. It's unfortunate. But uh, then uh, he gets murdered and then they spend all of season four uh, they spend all of season four. Oh, did I just catch a Weedle? Oh, no. Oh, it happened again, didn't it? Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay. Okay, back to the drawing board, man. I should not talk about 13 Reasons Why. That's what Netflix originals do to people, man. Yeah, but... So, so the... That's fine. We'll go back to catching Caterby. That's okay. Uh, the poll is a little fucked. I'll, okay, I think I was on... Anyone know what I was on? Anyone know? Yeah, Weedle is just an awful man. Yeah, 375? Okay, I'll do 15... 25. I'll do 25 more. And then I'll do... Yeah. I'll do 25 more. Yeah, so in Season 4 of 13 Reasons Why... Literally, the guy who committed sexual assault dies. And they have a whole murder mystery. And then they have flashbacks that humanize him. It's It sends a terrible fucking message. It's it's awful, awful show. It's, it's gross. It's so gross. Yeah, yeah. It's... It's like if season one wasn't bad, they're like, no, 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 we're cooking something worse. Uh, and they greenlit four seasons. So let's say I'm an exec at Netflix who does not watch the shows we make. I just saw a lot of people watch it. I'm greenlighting another season. You know? The people who approve these shows are not the ones watching them. Uh, th that is the truth. Oh my god, fucking Weedle, dude. It's- it's- they look so alike if you're not paying attention. Isn't there a school shooting? Oh, I forgot, there was. Yeah, I think that was the season 2 finale. Uh, and it was the weird kid, too, who literally was like, don't show up to school tomorrow, kind of. Yeah, it's it suck. Oh my god, dude, there was an oh, okay. There's like another scene in there. You, s I'm I don't even want to talk about that scene. But yeah, it the weird kid gets bullied, and so he decides to shoot at the school. It's like that's not the message we want to send. The broom. Yeah, I'm talking about the fucking broom. It, it was, dude. I, I think. Okay, I think this is true. Uh, I think this is, I think this is true. The, I don't even want to talk about it, but I, the incident that inspired the broom really happened at a, at a real high school. And it was at my high school. And it was like, it was like two years after I graduated, but it happened on like a wrestling bus. Yeah. Yeah. We shouldn't have mentioned it. I, like, if you know, I, I'm just leaving it with that. Don't look into it. Don't look into it. Your school cause, I think, I think it did. Uh, which is, I wasn't, you know, I would have stopped it if I was still in high school. 
but yeah. Yeah, we, we, yeah, it's, but it's like, it's chilling, it's chilling. Uh, yeah, th there's a more local shit that happened, but I, I'm just gonna leave it at that. 13 reasons why it's your fault. Whoa, whoa, we're just saying shit now. Anyways, Weedle, huh? That's a weird Pokemon I'm not a huge fan of. Yeah, okay, that's a good note to leave on. Bye, Jaden. Bye-bye. I would also leave on that note if I could. Yeah, yeah, fuck Weedle. I think that's what started all of this. Dude, I am low-key just... I am just upset. Cosmic, thank you for the five gifted. Thank you. Yeah, Weedle's a wanted criminal. Okay, but the fact that I'm so scared to talk about so much shit in that show and I feel uncomfortable doing it, what a fucking awful show. What an awful show. Genuinely. Yeah. We don't deserve nothing. Yeah, even when I watched it, I was like shocked. Yeah. I do not accept this Weedle slander. Look, it was my fault, but I don't want to take accountability. Pulls out ukulele. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I just... I, we'll start the Caterpie train yet again. Maybe that wheel shouldn't have showed up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, that's the truth. It's a bad day to be a believer. I mean, I'm going to catch 25. Uh, I'm going to give everyone the chance. It's just, you don't get the full odds, or the, or the good odds. I hate the term full odds, because I really want to use it to be, like, the best, but it, that's just the opposite of what it means. Do I like Community? I do. That's a really good show. Um, obviously, the first three seasons are the best. But, ah, uh, it's just, like, I get it. I get, I'm glad they made six seasons, because I feel like that's the kind of show that had to, you know? Six seasons and a movie was such a big deal. And I'm glad we're getting and a movie eventually. What was your first shiny, like, in this run? Uh, it was Nidoran and Sue Nido King. Uh, but of all time, uh, when I was in, like... I don't fucking know. Maybe like first, second, third grade. Something like that. I don't know. I was young, but I caught a shiny Dust Skull in Pokemon Ruby. And I thought... I, I didn't know about shinies at the time. Or maybe I did. Because like I knew about shiny Gyarados and he was red. Maybe I just thought shinies were red. I don't know. But I, I caught it because... Uh, I think it's a good shiny though. I really like shiny Dust Skull. But uh, then I evolved them, and I was so disappointed because uh, Dusclops, it just, the palette's all over the place. Duskull is a very good shiny, though. Uh, I think the other shiny I caught, I remember I caught three shinies in my cash Ruby playthrough. I don't remember what the second one was, but the third one was uh, a Wurmple, and I, I never evolved it because I kind of liked the mystery of, uh, I don't know if it's going to be a shiny Beautifly or a Dustox. Eventually, I did evolve it, though. It took a long time, but uh, I, it turned into a dust toss. And I don't remember what my second shiny was. Oh, I think it was a Surskit. I think it was Surskit. I think so. I think it was Duskull, Surskit, um, and then uh, Wurmple. Okay, I'm out of lures. Okay, so I gotta go back. Bro, so many fucking Caterpies and I caught a Weedle. I mean, we just gotta get to 31 and then we're back. Then we're so back. Uh, I could find a Shiny right here and that'd be awesome. Just on the way back. That's unlikely. But it would be cool. Excuse me, Caterpie. My first Shiny was Hopip based. March would be a shiny Weedle. Do you do you feel good about manifesting that into the world? Can, you never really know how these days are going to go streaming this game. Because it's like, I am I going to get one shiny? Four? Or perhaps zero? <laughs> you know, God forbid it's zero. You, you hope it won't be. But it do be. It do be often. Dude, we have almost maxed out on Caterpie Candy. 
That that is obscene. That is that is so obscene. I don't think yeah, I don't think it's a one per, but we've caught a lot of caterpies. I mean we can check. It shows you how many caterpies you send to oak at the end of it. Okay. Uh, we still have a lot of Pokeballs. Um, let me just get some lures first. I remember one time I wasted all my money on repels and felt so fucking stupid. <laughs> it's, it's so easy to do. Right. <sighs> I played Pokemon since uh, Sapphire went for Shiny was Phantom. That's a good one. Uh, I think Shinies are just hard to find. Like, statistically, they're hard to find unless you're, like, looking for them. I mean, they're still hard to find even then, but, like, uh, I, they're, they're just meant to be difficult to come across naturally. That's why I think I... Th this might be a hot take, but I wish every Pokemon gen introduced, like, one static Shiny. I think the Red Gyarados is so cool because it's so iconic. I think the blue Ponyta in Legends Arceus is cool. I wish there was one shiny static in every gen. Just because I, I think it would add to each gen being a little more iconic. You know, because I think a big part of Johto being iconic is the red Gyarados. And I think, you know, if this game had a, I don't know, let's say a shiny Caterpie, hypothetically. Everyone would, would remember the shiny Caterpie. Yeah, there's a gifted one in black. Uh, there is a shiny Haxorus. I do know about that one in Black 2, White 2. And I do count that one. But, like, you know, that's that's two out of, like, the, the million games. What would the static be for each game? I mean, the answer is fucking anything. Because, uh, uh, like, the Gen 2 shiny is from Gen 1. I mean, Haxorus is from Gen 5, of course. But, like, every Pokemon in Gen 5 is from Gen 5. Um, Solo Bagel, 22. Wow. Good to see you. Thanks for the gift of subs. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, everyone's been, been dropping in instances of five. And, and I appreciate it. But you can throw some weird numbers in there. I'm fine with the threes and fours. You don't, you don't gotta do the presets. You can do whatever you want. Whatever feels right. I, I, I just... I'm just appreciative. There was a seven earlier. I, I understand. There was a seven. Very appreciative of the seven. A shiny Tropius would make it well known. Oh, that's true. I think like also you can make a lot more like lesser known Pokemon more well known uh, by making it shiny. Like you can take some weird guys and make them shiny. What are your opinions on the Axu line? Uh, I think it's all pretty mid till Haxorus. I wish Haxorus was better. It's it's like it's sad. That, uh, because if he was a pseudo, he'd be good. Uh, but he's not, despite what some people may think. What's your Pokemon hot take? Dude, no one gives a fuck about hot takes. Uh, here, wait a sec. I see my phone on 1%, which means it's perfect. It's now time to plug it into the charger. Okay, phone doesn't die. No, this is huge news. Oh no, the cat ears fell. I, I knocked them over. Oh no, what a what a Greek tragedy. Okay. Show me a Caterpie, please. Oh, yeah, we still have to build the catch combo. 
I know this is weird, but do you have any mental health, uh, or mental health t tips? <laughs> Sorry, I should have read the last one. Uh, I, I, what's some, what's something that's helped me, like perspective-wise? Uh, I, I think, uh, okay, I guess maybe, maybe this might help. Uh, if you struggle with mental health in terms of, like, what people think of you, or something self-image, or just trying to process people, I think something that helped me a lot was when you realized not every action has a reason why it happened. Like, uh, if you don't get invited to something, it was probably not intentional. You know, it probably wasn't malicious either. But your brain says it is. Or, you know, if you get... If a friend does something to you and they don't don't even notice they did something wrong, it probably wasn't malicious. I, I, I think I just give people the benefit of the doubt. I don't think you always need to do that. But if it's someone you care about... I, I think I just got better at not assuming the reason my brain has made up for this bad thing happening is always true. I, I think that's probably it. I don't know. I don't really think I... I, <laughs> I don't think I'm the person uh, qualified to give out mental health advice. But uh, I can just say what helped me, I suppose. Where the hell is that Pidgeot level of 70? Oh, not why this is the Eevee level 100? What do you think of Pokemon Sleep? Uh, I, I mean, it's, it makes sense. Sure, why not? It's not something I'm like blown away by. It's not something I'll probably even use. Uh, but it is something um, I think is going to uh, cause issues in the Pokemon fuckboy community. Uh, cause I, I, I can see an alarming number of people, uh, trying to slide in Pokemon, like, sleep together, or something. Like, there's a, there's a line there that's gonna be very annoying for women everywhere. And, and I see it coming now. Uh, like, I think the same thing of, uh, I'm sure anyone adjacent to Smash Brothers is aware of where I'm going. Where people will say, want to smash, haha, <laughs> like the game. You know, it's like a, it's kind of like when you say something half jokingly, if they bite, you go forward. If they don't, you can reel back. I think it's going to be like that. And I, I, that is the number one thing I'm scared of. You know? You know, it's like uh, taking a shower without me. You know, it's, it's like, I, I see it. I think they're setting themselves up for failure. I, I'm, I'm I, I think it was irresponsible. Dear God, your imagination is dark and terrifying. Uh, I thank you. Uh, I think it's it's less of that and more of I've I've said it out loud, and I was I you know I was talking with a friend about it and I'm like, oh, want a Pokemon sleep? Ew. You know, like I it was it came off joking and then I was like, oh, I don't like how that sounded. I didn't just sit in the corner meditating on how to take this in malicious ways, I promise. <laughs> it, it was just something that came to me, and I, I was upset that it did. Oh yeah, one more? Okay. Is this 25? Pokemon smile more often. Oh, ooh. That one's even worse somehow. What are even the shiny odds in this game? Uh, once we get everything in our favor, it's like 1 in 313. Okay. Uh, so that that is it for, for this encounter. You guys got a little robbed. I'm sorry. Um, the doubters win yet again. Uh, I'm going back to putting 100 just because like, I don't want it to be on like weird numbers. So for this prediction, you only get 75 encounters. So So keep that in mind. Because uh, I don't want to, like, offset the numbers where it's like, oh, now it's under 125. So I assume there's going to be more doubters this time around. So the payouts will be larger for the believers. Yeah, 90% people doubting, I believe it. 
But uh, one to six odds if you win. I'm all in on believing. Oh yeah, that's a massive payday if so. Shiny odds are always 50-50. That's so true. I don't even know how long I planned on streaming today. Uh, this is like my first real stream back since like all my health shit. And uh, I was kind of like maybe like three or four hours. But I've been fine. I think uh, when you have one goal, you're very determined to sit here and be like, I'm not leaving this fucking chair without a shiny Caterpie. Like over my dead body. Yeah, this is a uh, sunken time if I've ever seen it. But yeah, uh, I feel like the first streams back are always hard because people have, are kind of like taking you out of their daily routine since you haven't up done anything in a while. So I'm very appreciative for everyone who's here now because I understand how, how that just happens sometimes. But uh, I, I, I'm appreciative. So, so thanks everyone for just coming through. Have you caught a shiny Caterpie? No. This is always my daily routine. Okay, for Hayden, I understand. This dude fiends the offline chat. I think it's really funny when people converse in the offline chat. Uh, I wish there was more of you, but I think that's kind of the charm that it's only like three people. Uh, sometimes someone will just come by and ask a question, and then someone else will just answer it, and it's just crazy uh, that I have like a... A customer support line, just ready and willing. Oh, thank you for the 12 months. Thank you for all the primes and tiers one coming in. It's it's like whenever I stream, because you normally if I stream for like a month straight, you stop seeing primes as much. But it's like when you first come back, it's like everyone has prime. It's awesome. You probably have it right now and don't even know. You can save. Uh, uh, it, wait, where is it? Where? Oh, fuck me. Where? Where, oh shit, um... Ah, oh, right here. Like, like, like right there. There you go. Yeah, something like that. You might have one and you not even know it. Why'd you look at us like that? I didn't mean to. I was, I was just trying to solve my tech issue. I don't know how to use my Prime. Oh, fool. So if you go to subscribe, there should be a little check box if you link Amazon to your Twitch account. And it allows you to sub to any creator for free. I'm not saying you have to use it on me, but maybe just check to see if you have it, because you get one every 30 days. And if you happen to have it, maybe you can use it. Divine Slash, uh, thanks for the five gifted, did not follow instructions at all. Uh, close. But that's not how you prime. Uh, good try, though. Nice try. Oh, no. You had five primes? Okay, yeah, may maybe... I guess... Maybe you might have five primes. I didn't know you can have that many. He's like, gee, Billy. Mom lets you have five primes? Uh, do three gifted count as a prime? You do not need to do that. Do not worry. Uh, I just, like... I don't know. I feel bad when I get large amount gifted because it's like, man, you could be putting that towards anything else. <laughs> but when it's like five or ten, I'm like, hey, it's still a lot. But I'm like, it's an it's an appropriate sign of appreciation. Uh, but so it's just following and watching, you know, like it's not required. But uh, sure, we all like getting money. But gifted subs come from real people with real complicated lives. And so it's like when I get large gifted, I feel bad. Like I feel bad and guilty. So I, I that's why I like primes because it's technically none of your money. So I like shilling primes for that reason. Um, otherwise, sit back and enjoy the free content. <laughs> you know, like uh, I, this is yeah. Here are my waiter and it's a tip. I, I get that. I do get that. Because it's like, you've probably watched, like, you watch YouTube videos for years, you know? And there's never been like a way to say, here's my money. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I, I think at least we have emotes. And we're going to have more soon. So, 
Yeah, better in my pocket than Bezos. Yeah, I talk about how, like, I don't really need it. That dude really doesn't need it. So make him give me money, please. Please and thank you. Will you ever do Steam Cleaning again? Uh, that's a fun... It was a fun series from 2017 where I just played various Steam games, for those of you who don't know. And I'm probably not... Uh, if I were to do Steam Cleaning, I would probably do, like, a twist on it. Like, I saw CJ do a, a video where he was like, my chat picked uh, 10 games for me, and I ranked them all, you know? And, like, I played them all for 30 minutes each, and I ranked them at the end of it. And I was like, oh, that's fun. But, I like, series like Steam Cleaning and stuff like that, they just don't really work well on, like, modern-day YouTube. So, uh... I think I would probably do something like that. It could be a fun week on gold. Motherfucker, that's every week on gold. <laughs> yeah, I have so many games in my Steam library I've just never touched. Do you miss Smash Bros? What, what is the weird Smash... Like, missing Smash questions? Uh, not really. Uh, I like my relationship with the game now. Where... Uh, I play it with friends when I want to have fun. And that's it. I still like the game a lot. But, uh... No, I, I think the... I meant to talk about this earlier when I was talking about, like, oh, my content has changed a lot. Uh, do you realize... Like, I love telling stories. I love how my content has evolved from just, hey, I record for two hours and condense it to ten minutes worth of highlights. Uh, and then the topic is kind of loose. Uh, I really like that my content has evolved beyond that into, like, constructed narrative. I think it's really cool. I like my uh, relationship with content right now. I love telling stories. And uh, it's I've even upgraded. Even when I do, like, more highlight-y stuff, like maybe the, the coach lock or the draft lock or something where it's not really post-commentary, it's more just highlights... Uh, it's still more interesting. There's more of a kick. There's more of a narrative. There's a story. There's a catch. You know? And uh, I think that's cool. And I like my content. And I, I like that I've gone that direction. But I, I think a lot of my growth outside of Smash, or my growth away from Smash, has been... Uh, do you know how hard it is to come up with a narratively driven Smash video? It just doesn't really work as well as, like, a, a Pokemon thing does. And also, Smash is a worse stream game, because it's it's very hard to play Smash and re-chat. Uh... I feel like highlights would be more work since you have to cut through all the footage. Okay, but highlights are, like, two hours of footage. Whereas, you know, this is an anomaly, but this is like a going to be like a hundred hour experience by the end of it. Um, like, I don't know. I, I think it's... Uh, highlights is just way easier because you can give way less direction. It requires less mental power to just brain off and just bust it out. Uh, whereas, like, you have when you write a script, you have to think. You know, you can't just say what happened, skim through footage. Like, you, you have to think when writing a script. And you have to think about what this... When you say this, what does the viewer think? And is this the direction you want to lead the viewer in? And stuff like that. Yeah. Um, I tried to do, like, some narratively driven Smash stuff, but it's, it's a stretch. I think the closest... The closest Smash content you can get to what I would like to do now... Are like the Elite Smash speedruns, the Kirby Hat one, or like the World of Light Nuzlocke and stuff like that. Like all of that is cool, and if I didn't do it already, I would I would do it for the first time now. You know. And uh, I think it's just hard because like, um, so so, so here's like a point, right? Uh. CJ and I talked about this once. We're like, sometimes he would do like videos of hide and seek or something, or like an Odyssey speedrun category. Uh, and after, if the video contained multiple attempts in that category, people would stop watching after the first. Makes sense. They saw everything. 
Uh, it's making a Smash video is like that, but games end all the fucking time. Like, it's very difficult to have, like, a through line in a Smash video, narratively speaking. Uh, you know, you can do, like, first to tens, which I agree. I think those are fun. But even those are hard because uh, you don't guarantee a narrative. Like, what if you win too hard? What if you get beat your ass beat too fast? You know, it's not guaranteed you get, like, a good video out of it. Uh, but, like, those kinds of videos are good for streams because people are invested. But sometimes streams don't always convert. Good streams don't always convert to good videos. And sometimes bad streams convert to good videos, you know? It's weird. It's weird. Can you tell us a story right now? Motherfucker, that's all I've been doing. <laughs> yeah, I just think uh, Smash just doesn't really make for narratively driven content. And I think we're at a point in YouTube where people reward ideas and execution more than anything else right now. Which is really cool. Like, I think that's very much so a good thing. That people want good quality content. And I think that's cool. But uh, I just don't think making mindless highlights cuts makes the bill, you know? Hey, Alpha, why did you accept the team sponsorship? Uh, here, let's talk about this thing you've addressed multiple times today. Um, so first off, uh, whenever I get a sponsor, it goes through my agency and the agency that's coordinating the deal. Uh, usually both people do their research, so I don't have to. Uh, so I trust when I get a sponsor. And, and like, you know, uh, I haven't heard anything bad about it. And usually, like, I ask my assistant to look into things. And she also didn't see anything. And again, I have to use very careful legal language here when I talk about it. But uh, apparent, uh, <clears throat> allegedly, uh, th there is being investigated by, like, a federal government, which is bad. Uh, it's just over it being allegedly a scam. Allegedly, 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 allegedly. And the thing is, all these articles that have come out about it uh, have come out after uh, when I accepted the sponsor, you know? So it, it was kind of, it's, you know, f you know hindsight's twenty twenty, But a lot of this shit wasn't public knowledge when I accepted the sponsor. So I didn't... Uh, you know, like, it, I, I could know what I don't know, you know? <laughs> so, like, I, ex this was meant to go up, like, early June, and then, you know, life got in the way, life got in the way, or maybe it was end of May. Anyways, the sponsor got super delayed, so it's been, like, multiple months. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's a whoops on my part, I, you know, not really much more I can say than that. Uh, I pulled the video, I collect zero dollars from the sponsor because of that, and, uh, that's it. Yeah, like, like I, there's not much more to say. Uh, hey, Alpha, can you tell us how you met Jaden? Uh, go watch. I think it's a uh, I trusted an imposter, or I know it's an Among Us video called I Didn't Vent. Uh, that is the day I met Jaden in an Among Us lobby hosted by Ross. That, that, that is how it all started. Are there any sponsors you regret that you can talk about? Uh, what's lucky is, like, I don't really have a lot of those. I mean, between me, the, like, the, the three sources, right? Like, the agency who represents that brand, the agency that represents me, and then my own team. We always try to look into sponsors. Uh, you know, and sometimes you look into sponsors and you won't find anything bad unless you're searching for something bad. But sometimes you can't tell if it has legs. Or if it's someone who just doesn't like the mobile game, you know, like it's, it's, it's hard. It's, it, I don't, it's hard. Um, and uh, I think like the only sponsors I regret, uh, obviously, I, I mean, today's like the only sponsor I've ever like like pulled down for for uh, you know new information. So I would say probably only that one. 
I don't know if you guys are aware of like the established titles, uh, like sponsored scam thing. Uh, that one looks pretty bad. But I, I was actually going to do a sponsor with them because I was like, oh, I vaguely heard people talk about uh, like, oh, if you own a piece of land, you become a lord in, in like Scotland or whatever. It was like that. I didn't feel like I needed to research that because I was like, oh, I've heard that's true. Like over my whole life. You know, I, I've just heard people casually mention that. So I was like, oh, yeah, that's it that makes sense that someone would make a brand of that. I didn't realize that it's like legally not true. Yeah. Um, yeah, I didn't know that was a scam, right? And then I saw... Uh, yeah, and then like a lot of people around you do it. It builds up the credibility. Uh, what was nice, though, was I had a sponsor lined up for them, but everything kind of surfaced in between me accepting the deal and it going live. So I, I never had to like pull the sponsor, backpedal, or anything like that. It was, uh, yeah, I got pretty lucky with the timing. Like, it would have been nice if it, uh, didn't come up at all. Or didn't happen, or it just wasn't a scam, I guess. But, uh, uh, yeah, it's cool that at least I didn't have to put a video out first. And, like, I'll be honest, with everyone who sees, like, a YouTuber who says, like, like, uh, oh, they should have done their research. It's like, sometimes the research isn't, like, available and i'm not saying this in like my defense but just like i remember with the established titles thing like i, I don't know it's just like so much contextual stuff like when they say hey this is how the scottish law works i it feels like it's very unlikely for someone to go bet and then they look into scottish law you know like i mean i understand how it sounds easy to do in hindsight easy to fact check yeah, Porter Wolf got blindsided by them. To be fair, like a lot of YouTubers did. Like that that shit was everywhere. Yeah, you I think just coming from the YouTuber side of it, anytime something goes south with a sponsor, like if this if the creator has equity in the company, raise your raise your eyebrows or something like that. But if the if they're so unrelated and it feels like they just accepted a sponsor and then something bad happened, from, I think even the most vile people in the industry, that that's an accident. Uh, I I like to get uh, give people the benefit of the doubt. Oh, is Purple Cliff in chat? Or oh yeah, he is. Yeah, I love this game. Hey, Purple Cliff. Hey man, you ever been scanned by some YouTube sponsor? Just asking. That's the topic right now. Uh, we're just talking about that. I uh, had. Have any sponsors regretted working with you? Uh, I, one comes to mind. Uh, one comes to mind. Uh, it wasn't like a conventional sponsor. I've made a video about it if you really want to go watch it. Uh, I had a sponsor that got zero downloads once. Bro, that's the... <laughs> Do you feel bad for that bag at like some point? Because... <laughs> I, like, I've also done sponsors where they're like, yeah, this didn't perform well. We don't want to do another one, which is always valid and fair. But, dude, zero. That's crazy. Uh, I th I think the saddest miss sponsor I ever had. Uh, dude, I think the pandemic. Oh, dude, it was crazy. Because, like, when the pandemic first started, uh, there were no sponsors. Because everyone was pulling budget on everything. And then by, like, quarter three, uh, everyone was putting their sponsor budget into YouTube. Because, like, they were like, marketing's dead. Everyone's watching YouTube videos. And then, like, quarter three of 2020 it was, like, such a lucrative season for sponsors. Uh, but, uh, uh, what was I going to say? Q4 of last year was so dead. The only person handing titles was established spot titles or established titles. Uh, yeah, I think that's just because, like, several other things. Uh, I, I was fine in Q4, but typically I don't like taking sponsors in Q4 anyways. Uh, because I just rather grind, like, you know, Q4 ad revenue and shit like that. So, uh, I usually, I, I don't even think I noticed, if I can be honest. Um, but, oh, what was I saying? Sponsor that didn't like working with me. Was that the topic? I lost my train of thought. 
Raid Shadow Legends. Raid's a fine sponsor. It's there's a lot of cultural differences uh, between various sponsors that any YouTuber could tell you about. Uh, I I think one is like if the company is like Eastern, uh, like from Asia, they they treat you a lot differently. It's because there's a cultural barrier, not like like a language barrier, but like genuinely a cultural barrier where uh, apparently this is word of mouth. I don't know how true it is, but it feels true is that. Um, uh, what was it? They a lot of Eastern brands are very strict with like they'll give you a script on what to say. And then you're like, oh, me, the creative personality, I would say this this way. And they just go, no. If you send it to them, uh, not always. Sometimes you're a bigger creator, you get like a little bit of leeway. But uh, with most sponsors that are like Eastern, they send you a script and they want you to follow it. Because that's apparently how creator influencer marketing works over there. Uh, which is just not really how it is Western audiences. So... It's interesting, because if you ever work with a Western sponsor... Like, dude, when I made my Omega Strikers video, they literally said, here's the game. I was like, what do you want me to mention? And they're like, I don't know, that's free. <laughs> that they can play it now. And that was it. Like, that was really it. Like, it, it was cool. Like, uh, you know, the video performed like a sponsored video would. But I, I love brands like that, who really just let you do whatever you want, because... Uh, that's truly what appeals to your audience, is what you would normally do. Uh, and it sucks that more people don't recognize that. Uh, Joel Haver did a video. If you ever want like a good insight to sponsors and how sad it is, uh, Joel Haver made a really good video over uh, sponsors. And he just kind of talks about, he's like, why the fuck are brands so stubborn in having creators get on the mic and talk about these bullet points for 60 to 90 seconds like it bloats the video it it just it, it's chunky and he's like people skip past it he's like i don't know if the sponsors know this but we just skip past it and that's the most truthful fucking thing is like be honest who here skips sponsors when they're clearly coming up you know <laughs> like i understand that i do it too me. Everyone says me. Yeah, like, the the sponsors that are best well done, and it's a little bit annoying. Uh, I think Mr. Beast does it really well, because he does everything well when it comes to, like, the, the, the number side. Uh, he integrates the sponsor into his content, to where you can't really skip past it without skipping past the content. It might be a little annoying, but it's you gotta admit, it's well executed. You know? Yeah, uh, like, I wish... Dude, I would love to have more creative sponsor segments. But sometimes the brands just don't allow you. And it's frustrating. Because as the creator, you would love to have something that doesn't feel super corporate in the middle of your, like, artistic video. It sucks. But, like, that's the state of things? Uh, it depends on the creator if they're able to make it entertaining. I don't skip. But how do you know that from three seconds in? <laughs> I feel like I I see this. Sometimes I just hear the creator ramping up to a sponsor, and I can tell, and I skip ahead. You know, I don't even look at that way. The yard does it well. Uh, I know this sounds confusing, but they're a podcast, and that's different. Uh, like I I know that sounds weird, but podcasts are very different than YouTube videos, especially when it comes to like brand guidelines and stuff like that. Podcasts are more established. Brands understand it. And they're like, oh, I know you're going to have an ad break at this part and this part and this part. And they pay differently according to those. Because for a podcast, they don't want you to read scripts. They want you to just flow with the podcast. But, uh, you know, as someone who did a podcast who had sponsors on it, it's very different how sponsors are handled for podcasts versus uh, YouTube videos. Uh, worst experience with a sponsor? 
I mean, probably anyone where it's like allegedly a, a scam or something. Uh, allegedly, of course. I've had some nightmare sponsors. Oh, do speak up. I've seen someone who does comedy sketches that work in sponsors. Yeah, it really depends on what you do. I think gaming YouTube specifically is just really just destined to have 60 to 90 second bullshit, read the script, paraphrase it if you want kind of kind of stuff. Like, I don't know. It sucks. It sucks. Hear me out. Ads at the start of the video. Dude, some sponsors, I think some really cool sponsors have just kind of let me throw the shit in anywhere. Uh... One time in the Jump Force video, I Honey asked me to throw... They just said, put it in the first half of the video. And I was like, this video is 40 minutes long. And they were like, eh, whatever. So I think I slid it in at like the 15 minute mark. Which sounds like that should be bad. But, I mean, that video got like 6 million views, so it's probably worth more than your typical video. I mean, Jay Schles sponsor segments always open up with him holding his wallet and smiling. Yeah, it's funny. It is, it is funny. It's funny for the viewer, but I feel like the attitude really, like, pushes the, uh, the sell of it, you know, or away. I think it's really funny, though. But I, I, I can imagine that hurts sales. Yeah, the multiverse sponsors were fine. Um... So this is kind of something that that's true with any company is you can always tell when someone else fucked up <laughs> like another creator or something like uh, I used to be in like the, the Nintendo early games club and then somebody leaked uh, Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga remake and then they cut everyone off from early games. They only give games out on release day and it was like at that point I don't want to. I like saying hashtag free product is not worth uh, just a $40 game. So it was something like that. And uh, then uh, what happened after that? Uh, oh, yeah. With my multiverses sponsor, I did three videos with it, which basically like when we did a video, they were like, we want to buy like a group of three videos. And then their first video was the first it, it did well uh second one it did well i had a lot of freedom and then between the second and third video someone else definitely fucked up <laughs> because legal team was strict on the third video <laughs> and it was like you know they were so strict to the point where i was like oh someone fucked up uh the third video i don't know if anyone remembers this uh because i did a first to ten with uh me and my friend against uh, Nick Hat and Void. I think it was like a, we had to win one and they had to win 10. Because uh, they were the two best players alive at the time. Uh, that video had like a lifespan of 24 hours because the video went live and then they said, oh, I, I, I shit you not. The, multiver the multiverse is partner bit was not a bit. And they said, hey, you forgot to remind everyone that the sponsor, the video was sponsored at the end of the video. And I'm like, they fucking know. <laughs> they know. And it, it was like, they're like, oh, well, will you take the video down, add this to it, and re-upload it? And I'm like, no. I, I won't do that. That's not in the contract. I'm like, you know, I have an agent who, like, does handles these sponsors. He stands up for me. And then he was like, that sounds more like a legal thing. No, no, no. It was a paranoid legal thing. Because you you don't have to say it multiple times. It was fine. It was FTC in guidelines, everything. Uh, so then when they uh, end a video, reminders kill the moment of the outro. Yeah, who cares? It's the end of the video. It's over. I would have done it if they asked for it, but they didn't. They approved the video and it went live. So it's like if you approved it, we're not going to take it down. And or they, my agent said, 
He'll take it down, but he won't re-upload it. And they go, okay. So I got paid to upload a video for like eight hours and take it down. It's weird. Because normally sponsored videos are like a, an ugly demerit on your view, like your videos. Because if you're just scrolling down, you see like one video, like low, low, low views. And you're like, Ew. you know, it might just be like a, a personal thing. Maybe other people don't see it that way. But like sponsored videos uh, stand out. Giga Chat Agent. Yeah, dude, we got paid in full for uploading a video for eight hours. Shit was awesome. The multi-video versus video is gone. Uh, I did three multi versus videos and the third one's gone. So two of them are up. Uh, the, the Omega Strikers video didn't do that bad. Uh, I think it did, actually. Uh, but, you know, it's all like a matter of perspective. Like, saying that a video got a little over half a million views is... It, it's good. Like, that sounds good. But when you see the videos it's surrounded by, that's low. You know, it's relatively low. Uh, how is that awesome? Aren't you losing out on ad revenue? Um, so I, un I understand why you think me losing out on a sponsor video's ad revenue is really bad. But I think... Who, who cares? The amount of ad revenue you get from a video, especially a sponsored one, is so little compared to what you get from the actual sponsor. So if anything, it's just like a free bag. It feels free. It feels like a free bag. It outperformed the No Damage Smash video, to be fair. Yeah, and that video also performed bad. Do you see where we're, where, where we're going here? Just because it outperformed one other video in the past year does not mean it's it, it's it's a good standard. It's it's good for what it is, but it's still like a 10 out of 10 video, you know? That, that's all I'm trying to say, chat. I, I feel like uh, we're, we're really good at moving the goalposts today. Do I still play on Mega Strikers? I do, actually. Uh, not on, like, a daily basis, but it's kind of one of those things. Uh, sometimes I want to play games with friends and someone will throw it out or I'll throw it out. And, and we just will. Do you take CPM-based sponsors at your size? Uh, no. Uh, you can. I, I just don't like them. I think... I think CPM contracts, they can be very good because you're like, what if a video pops off? But what you guys don't know about is most sponsors cap CPM videos. And it's designed to fuck you over. You know? Like, they want to get the most value out of the least dollar amount for them. So it makes sense. Yeah, CPM stands for cost per thousand. And uh, a click per minute? No, that is not what that stands for. That That is also what that stands for, but that's not what I'm talking about. Um, uh, so, cost per thousand, it's just like uh, how much money... When you describe revenue on YouTube, you would say, oh, I got $7 per thousand views. So that's 7 CPM is what you would say. And where does the M come from? Uh, it's Latin. Uh, it's Latin for, like, uh, millennia, milli, right? Something like that. Um, Twitch gives 3.5 CPM. You're so close. You're so close. That's not... It's not a standardized number. Uh, getting... <laughs> it's also just not right. Um, it's it's for ad rates. Uh, saying you get three point five dollars from one sub is, is is not what CPM means. M is also the Roman numeral for a thousand. Yeah, that, that is true. I, I I do know that. Who's my favorite sponsor to work with, dude? Honestly, like uh, Omega Strikers is really fun to work with. I like them a lot. Um. That was that high praise to Omega Strikers. They gave me full creative freedom. They let me host a tournament. 
uh, four Omega Strikers, and then they let me put Colin's emote in the game. Dude, that W sponsor. W sponsor. Doesn't YouTube really not want creators to share their CPMs? Fuck if I know. Uh, I think a lot of people have wildly different CPMs. Especially if you have, like, a good network behind you. Some videos you just get 20 CPM, which is fucking insane. But sometimes sponsors, uh, not even, like, on your channel, uh, you can just... Some sponsors can go to your agency and say, Hey, can we curate YouTube, like, natural YouTube videos for YouTube sponsors? For It's not even, like, in the video. It's just before the video. Uh, would you say I have a good network? Dude, I have... I am signed. I am represented by, like, a top Hollywood agency. It's fucking insane. I got lucky. Uh, they don't really work with a too many creators. Uh, they're like a like actor. Like they have most of the Avengers signed to th their agency. Okay, like I I got lucky. That shit is cool. Yeah, I mean I, it doesn't really like influence me at all. But it it's like it at least lets me know. Oh, they're credible. They're reputable. You know. Can you disclose how that happened? I mean, like, it's it's not really a big story. It's, if you're making an agency, wouldn't you want to get, like, a lot of people from several different niches on the internet instead of having six people who all cover the same audience? Uh, I just got an email that this agency wanted to represent me, and they're just, just a big one. I think it makes sense. Like, I'm not a, a small channel, you know? Uh, but it, it's, it's cool. Uh, it's, like, I, I think, uh, I don't know, you can look it up. It's Creative Artists Agency. You can just kind of look up all the talent they have, CAA. Who does your art? Uh, Nova did my art for the first, like, seven years of my channel. And then he just kind of wanted to pursue other things. Uh, so we got someone who can emulate the style really well. Uh, the handoff was late last year. Uh, my my boy Winged Koro, uh, he pops into chat sometimes, but that dude's the goat. He's very good at what he does. I think it's very hard. It's impressive to uh, emulate a style as well as he does. It's almost impressive. It's more impressive than just being an art, a good artist. I don't know if that's true. I don't want to devalue the other shit. But I'm just so impressed how, how identical the styles look. Yo, Aaron in chat, what's good, brother? Uh, I'm uh, doing my thing and catching some some Caterpies, and it's going awesome. It's going awesome. Um, last night, I, Aaron just makes me think of Fortnite. Uh, you guys watched me stream uh, Fortnite Bed Wars uh, a few weeks ago. It's funny to do it on stream. You get funny John Cena moments, but... When you do it off stream, you get screaming children, and that's funny. So, I love streaming Bed, or I love playing Bed Wars off stream. I highly encourage all of you, just go into all chat and you will hear children screaming. Uh, the funniest part uh, is Colin always uh, antagonizes them. Uh, and, and one thing he said, he says this every single game we play, and I'll... He just gets in there, and no matter how awful these screaming children mics sound when they're deep breathing with the mic, like, in their mouth, uh, he'll always just say, Hey, wow, man, your mic sounds really good. Are you a streamer? <laughs> and it pisses me off every time he says it. But it's so funny. It's so funny. Because the, the kids take it as a compliment, you know? <laughs> they take it as a compliment. Uh, so what we do, it's it's honest, we have a genius plan. We, we're we undefeated in Bed Wars. <clears throat> so how it normally goes is we will join a, we will join a team. There are four teams. Uh, two of them probably have children who have mics. And then there's always one team that has three people in a Discord call who's very sweaty and not in game call. 
So what we do is Colin and I get on the mic. Usually we have a third with us who's not in voice call. And we'll make alliances with these two kid teams. And we're like, hey, we won't go to your base. But, oh, we have a random with, with us who we can't control. He's not in voice call. And then we're geniuses. Because then our random just keeps going to their base when we lure them somewhere else. And then we're like, oh, dude, sorry, that's All Might. We can't control him. He's not in voice call. <laughs> and it works. Uh, we use the other teams... So we negotiate, we politic, and we use them to take down the team that's really good. So it's a 9v3, essentially. And then during that, we dwindle down their bases, and then it's just us versus the kids, and we win. It's fucking hysterical, because it works every time. It has literally never failed us once. Uh, what's the go-to flowchart for antagonizing kids? Um, well, we don't antagonize them. They don't even know they've been antagonized until they've lost. It's the, the sting of betrayal is what alerts them that they were antagonized. And by then, it's too late. <laughs> um, okay, here's the hundredth one, though. Uh, I'll give one more roll after this one. Yeah, turning Fortnite is an RTS. It's awesome. Uh, it's so fun. Giving them trust issues at a young age. Yeah, that's the beauty of it. Have you ever been recognized in a game like that? Uh, no. Well, because my name is Ukulele Apology, so it's like, people don't recognize me in that. Um, but what was funny was someone asked me what my... Uh, <laughs> uh, they asked me, like, what we do for a living, because they were like, your mic sounds really nice. And... Colin and I both love lying in these games, and I don't know what happened, but we both said, he's like, yeah, I'm, I'm an editor for a big YouTuber. And then, like, three seconds of silence paused, and then Colin and I both said at the exact same time, we both, have you ever heard of Markiplier? <laughs> and it's like, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I don't know where that one came from. But we both said it at the exact same time for no fucking reason. All right, uh, this is uh, under 200 encounters. Uh, here we go. Oh, it was a good moment. It was it was an absolutely good moment. Um, I think my favorite moment was uh, one time we were playing and a kid was playing in voice call on his Switch Lite, by the way. And you heard his mom and sister screaming at him in the background because it was now her turn to play the Switch. And they were fighting. And it was awesome. <laughs> that was the coolest shit I've ever witnessed in Fortnite. That shit was awesome. <laughs> oh, it was so cool. <coughs> you need to try Bedwars. It was funny because it was like uh, earlier, like 30 minutes prior. You heard them come in and be like, in 30 minutes, you have to get off. And then we were waiting. We were watching the clock. It hit 5.30 and we were like, mom's about to come in. And boy, did she. Oh, shit was, it was like, we got to build up to it and everything. It was awesome. Plus, also just children playing Fortnite with us in voice call on the Switch Lite is such, it's so funny. It's, it's like set up punchline everything. Would you put that in a video? Uh, yeah, yeah, I would. But unfortunately, I if I were to do that, I cannot stream it. Because if I stream it, you guys saw what happened last time. All my viewers get in the games, and it ruins it. So if I were to make a video out of that, I have to do it off stream. Or do it on like a, an alt. Oh shit, so funny. Uh, did you know that when you made the Twitch Plays Pokemon, a few people made a Discord for it? I did. Uh, I knew about it. I didn't join it. Uh, I, I'm weird with, like, fan-created, like, servers, stuff like that. I, I like to respect it from a distance. I don't really want to be part of it, because I, I, I feel like the vibe changes. And, I mean, I don't even let people talk in my Discord, so it's like, I don't really want to go to another Discord. I, I like, I don't want to have my name on things, you know?
Uh, have you ever done Battle Royale build mode? Uh, I've learned to build because of Bed Wars, funny enough. And I really like building. I like building way more than no build. Which uh, I, I play with Aaron sometimes because he's Mr. Fortnite in our server. He's And everyone else is no build in the server. There's like three people in our server who play build. And I, I, am, I am somehow one of them, which is shocking. Do you plan on doing more Neon White? Uh, it's a game I play on my own time a lot. But I think right now I have two videos in the in the pipeline for Neon White. Let's see if they do well. You know, uh, I know whenever I do a subathon, I'm probably gonna rely on Neon White a lot, like just some late night shit, um, just because it's a it's a nice game to do for that. Neon White is super fun and also super cringe. Who cares? Grow up. Let the game have fun. I'll defend it. The, the game's too good for me to think the dialogue wasn't intentional. I think I think the game is. I think the game's a ten out of ten. Dialogue be damned. Oh, cringe slash pause. Ah, gotcha. Am I gonna play the Persona Three remake when it comes out? Yes. I've been very excited. I've always wanted to play the game, but people have just said don't. <laughs> And now it's getting remade, so I'm excited and I'm going to play it. Probably won't stream it. It's probably just like a just-for-me game. Probably do another SMO-style video with Neon White. Because it's so good. I I don't... I'm. It's too late. <laughs> it, I'm, too, I'm too good at that game to, to do that. I'm, I'm like a top 100 runner with, with any percent. So it's like... Pushing further is is a grind, you know. It's not the it's not the fun kind of grind. Odyssey was fun because I went from uh, three years old run to to modern. It, it's like I'm not the best in the world at Neon White. Don't get me wrong. There I could definitely grow, but it's not a fun grind at that point. Becoming better at a super competitive speed game is about shaving seconds off. It's not about uh, this. It's not the same journey. Um, plus, it's like I've already... I did the whole journey off-stream. Uh, what are you looking forward to later releasing this year? Fuck if I know, dude. I don't even have to... I don't know what I'm doing tomorrow. Um, can you... Can other friends you can drag? Any other friends you can drag in a Neon White? Uh, I love the Neon White tournament I did. Uh, I'm excited to, to see how it performs on YouTube. I think the video is going to be really cool just because having 11 different perspectives, watching people solve things in lifetime. It's really cool. Uh, what I think a lot of people have forgotten about because uh, working on them is kind of like I'm dreading it because it's such a big project. Uh, I haven't uploaded either of the Twitch plays Pokemon videos from last December. Uh, we did Twitch plays Crystal second half and then we did Twitch plays Emerald. Uh, no one's really asked about that, but, uh, the scripts are written for them. I just have to start putting the puzzle pieces together. Will you stream or make a video about Mario RPG? Probably not. Uh, that game is either going to be played on my own time or late at night in a subathon. Like, th those are the only two possibilities, but I probably won't make videos out of it. Does my prediction count if I leave? Yeah, yeah. If you leave and come back, you'll see if you won the prediction or not. Have you ever considered doing a follow-up for Neon White? Like a see who got good? Eh, I, 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 don't, I don't really like the angle of that. Um, it's just like, it's it almost, like, I don't even know what the, the direction of that story, like the narrative is. Like, what if one got way better and then it's like... Okay, that's just a... W you can just make a few Google searches and figure that one out. Any interest in Celeste uh, Strawberry Jam? Yeah, I want to learn how to speedrun Celeste. Like, I think whenever I do do a subathon, I'm going to bust out a lot of, like, the... Do Od those Odyssey-style videos where I want to do, like, Celeste, Mario 64, uh, maybe a couple other games, where I just take, like, three days and just try to see how low I can get my time for one category, right? 
How many of the 11 are still active in Neon White? I don't know. Probably like four, five, so like three, four, five. Because I know a lot of people played a lot of it. Well, you ever finished Mario Galaxy? So what's funny is the people have asked me that for years and they're like, why haven't you ever finished it? Uh, it's because I played it on my Wii U and then uh, my Wii U, I, do, I don't know what happened. It's like it got the Xbox Red Ring of Death in, in current year and I, that shit just doesn't turn on anymore. So uh, I lost the save data, so I was like, fuck, I'm never playing that again. Exact same thing happened uh, uh, <laughs> with the Kingdom Hearts 3 playthrough. Uh, I, what, what, it, it was, it was funny, um, I let, I let in, okay, so this, this it, it's like a sore spot, right? I, I record my Kingdom Hearts 3 playthrough, and I was like, I'll get back to it another day. Like, I, I'll get back to it another day. And, uh, at the time, I let my ex's brother borrow my PS4, and then when we broke up, I didn't really... You see what happened here, right? <laughs> so I lost the PS4. It was like I, pro I probably could have gotten it back, but it was like the PS5 came out. I bought one. It was like... I liked him. He was a cool guy. So I was kind of... I was fine with it. I was like, he can have the PS4. Good for him. You know, I was like, it's a fine outcome. But I, I lost the save data to Kingdom Hearts 3. So I'm never going to... Uh, <laughs> Finish that playthrough. How we doing? Hello. Hi, Jome. What's up? Do you think he feels guilty about that? I don't know. I'm sure he followed the train of thought. <laughs> it's fine. But the PS5 likes to play Goonia Fighter. That it did. It would have been so easy on the first day of PS5 to play anything else besides Gunya Fighter, but God, am I happy that game found us. I love the High Jome emote with me. It's High Jome is such a funny emote because it works. It technically works. It's it's so funny. It's endearing. Does that mean you aren't going to finish your Eyes of Heaven playthrough? Yeah, you're astute viewer. No, I am not going to finish this playthrough I did one episode in in 2017. Somehow you finally pieced it together and decoded the puzzle. No, no, Isa Evan. I did, yeah. I, the, re the main reason I didn't finish Eyes of Heaven was because the first part was part three, which is confusing. And then the second part was part five. And part five, the anime was still airing. And part five in Eyes of Heaven starts by showing you everyone who died. So I was like, whoa, holy spoilers. I don't want to watch this. But, uh, you know, now I'm caught, caught up up to the end of the beginning of part eight. So I think I'm in like a good position where I might I might want to play Eyes of Heaven one day. It sounds stupid fan service fun. It spoils part seven too. Yeah, well, at least I've read it. But that's funny. Not to mention, you don't want to spoil the part six ending. I, I, I've read and watched part six at this point. I actually haven't watched it. I've read it, though. I, I read it twice. Uh, I watched the first batch of episodes in, like, one day. And then it sucked having to wait. So I didn't watch the second part. But then I was like, oh, I like the ending to part six. I'm going to go watch that of the, of the anime. So it's like I didn't watch the middle of part six. But I, I've read it. Uh, what do I think? Do I like Steel Ball Run? Dude, Steel Ball Run? Like, if I had to isolate, if I can just isolate Steel Ball Run, it's like a top three manga of all time for me. I really like part six, or seven, part seven. Steel Ball Run is awesome. Part six is the best fight in the series. I, I guess it is like, I, I guess. Best fight in the series. I don't know. I, I I don't know. I don't know if I can sign on to that, actually. It's good. It's damn good. Don't get me wrong. Oh, you're not... Oh, you're talking about the th thing where you... 
forget the last three things. Okay, brother, we are on two separate pages here. What is my favorite fight in JoJo's? I really don't know. It's it's basic. It might be Jotaro Dio. Like I'm a I'm a pretty big part three hater, but like those last four episodes are insane, man. <laughs> it's they're really good. Like I, I don't defend anything in part three outside of those like last four episodes. Joseph versus Cars. Yeah, Joseph, my goat though. Really, he, that's my favorite character. Johnny versus Altio. Oh, holy shit, dude. That was a reveal. That shit had me popping off in, in my chair. No, that shit was badass. Oh my god, this this little the little chirp, the the caterpie sound. Oh, it, it's never gonna stop, is it? Jodoro's first steel is difficult to top. I agree, I just think it's good. Did I like part one? Uh, I think if I only if part one existed solely in a vacuum, I would be like, oh, yeah, that was good. But I, I think it's just it's just a building block for everything else. Like part two just felt like better part one, and then they just then they changed the series entirely. And then they're like, what if what if ghosts could punch? And then you go, huh? Okay. What if we just just keep doing that? I really like part three. Is there something wrong with it? Uh, no, no, there's nothing wrong with it. I just think it, it's really long. I think the stands aren't that interesting. And there's just a lot of stuff, like a lot of fights of the week that don't really feel like they add to the overall plot. Uh, whereas I don't think that's present in part one or two. I think that's present in the first half of part four. I think the second half of part four is like peak JoJo. Like that's what it should be. Having one central antagonist. Ooh, ooh, what a rarity. Yeah, I think uh, I like uh, I, when it comes to stands. I like the Kira arc of part four. I like most of. Uh, Stone Ocean, and I like nearly all of Steel Ball Run. Yeah, and Kira's not cartoonishly evil. Yeah, that dude's just a villain. <laughs> you know, but he's a smart villain. I don't think there's anything more entertaining in media than a smart villain. You know, I think that's really what it is. I, I think it's really that simple. Like, when people say Death Note got bad, which I don't really agree, I like all of Death Note, but... People say that because the smart villain is no longer in the series. And th that's just kind of how I feel. I think everyone just wants a smart villain. It's like they're, the two types of good villains are the ones where you can understand where they're coming from and then when they're smart. And sometimes those overlap and that's a phenomenal villain. I don't watch anime, I'm very confused. Okay, so Breaking Bad, right? Uh, Walter White is so fun to watch as an anti-hero, or like just like a villain protagonist, because he's so damn smart. It's satisfying to see the plans work out because he's smart. Even if it's bad, even if you don't agree with it, you love watching it play out. <laughs> this completely 180 on there. Yeah. Dr. Maruki. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's a good... I, I think that's peak. I I think Persona 5, the plot is so fucking all over the place. I, I think it's been long enough where we can all admit that. The plot, like the first palace, phenomenally executed. And everything like that goes in every other fucking direction. Royal is so overrated. Nah, you are not about to like this opinion. Because, dude, Royal... I, I, the ending, the last palace in Royal is fucking peak. It is fucking peak, dude. It is, it is such a good plot, such a good antagonist. Like, the villain in the last palace is such a well-written villain where you're like, I see where they're coming from. And they're really smart. It, 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 it's right in front of you the whole time. It's, it's awesome. 
It's it's so many quality of life changes happen, and then the ending got so buffed. Like when I think of Persona 5 now, I think of the last fight when neither of you have powers and you're just fucking slapping each other in space and shit. Like, that's just cool. It it's it just cool, man. I never felt attached to P5 until Royal content. I agree. I like the characters. I think Persona has really fun characters. I just think the plot got messy. It's like, I know it's a JRPG. I know you fight God at the end. But it really did not make sense why you fought God in that game. <laughs> it was something where I'm like, oh, okay. Like, the whole game is leading up to this antagonist. And then you defeat him. And then there's like eight hours more of the game. Yeah, it was cool. It, yeah, it was cool, but narratively, I think... I can talk about spoilers at the end. It, it's, it's been years. I think if Shido was like... If he summoned God for the power and was like writing it or controlling it or was like unleashed it out of like arrogance or something like that, then I might be like, oh, I see how it all pieced together. But it just kind of fucking happens. It just kind of happens. The first palace boss is literally a pedophile. Yeah, and that's what, like, that's what makes it a good antagonist. Because they show you that there is no reason to defend this dude. Like, it's a good antagonist because there's no redeeming qualities in him. Like, you know, I had just said there it's a good antagonist when you can understand where they're coming from and stuff like that. But I think for this kind of game where you hop around from antagonist to antagonist, it gets more and more gray. But I, I think starting off with such just a vile villain is so good for a game like that where the villains change all the time. And it makes sense. It starts in a school. It's Yeah, it, it makes sense how it starts. Because I think uh, then you run into a guy who he's like, oh, I'm a villain because I, I stole art. And you're like, okay, I mean, I guess I, I guess that's bad, but like... Is it really that bad? And he goes, ah, and then I saw a woman die and I didn't call for help. And we're like, okay. Yeah, okay, yeah. I'll draw the line at stealing art. But yeah, okay, yeah, that is pretty bad. But like, I don't know. Sometimes you just expect the... <laughs> you know? Yeah, the villains do get a little cartoony. They, <laughs> they are a little cartoony. You go from pedophile to an art thief. Yeah. Yeah, it is strange. It is a little strange. Because they're kind of grouped together and they're like, Ah, oh, well. Uh, well. And then the third guy is just like... I, I don't know how old he was supposed to be in game, but he just felt like he's a 16-year-old who's blackmailing high schoolers. I, he could have been in his 30s. It's anime. But I was just like, We are all over the place, aren't we? <laughs> Yeah, Persona 5 was, was a game. Yeah, I think there are so many villains in the middle of Persona 5. It were just like, just, just whatever. Like, they were just there to kind of move it forward. And that's why Royal helps so much. Because, like, now the, the real antagonist is a driving force throughout the entire game. And I, th I think that's really good. I think Sai was executed well. I agree. No, I like her a lot. But again, it's just like... The peak of the game was way before the end of the game. <clears throat> What's your thought on the Futaba Palace? I think it's such a big... I think it's a bit of a drag, personally. I don't think it... I think it's cool that uh, a palace is of a, of a teammate to be. I think that's cool. It's just, it's just kind of a drag to me. The song's a banger, that's true. Yeah, the puzzles got repetitive for sure. Am I the only one that thought Akechi was Light Yagami? I... I do not think you were the only person who made that comparison. I, I, I don't think so. 
anyways, I really focus on the Persona 5 talk. I mean, all we really do is jump from topic to topic. It was uh, JoJo's prior to that. Um, yeah, I don't know. Oh my god, dude. I, I'm like kind of forgetting that there was a, like, I... I just kind of got a weird flash where I'm like, I have been on autopilot for like the past hour. I, I have not done anything with thought, which is exactly how I caught the Weedle on accident. Do I like five or four more? Uh, okay, back to Persona talk. Uh, I like five more. Uh, I People like four. I don't like... I think the problem with 4 is it's a real whodunit murder mystery. The characters are fun. The aesthetics are fun. I like the, the dungeons and palaces in 5 more. But the th I feel like the thing about 4 is that if you f if you see the villain coming, which I, I did, I kind of I called it very early on. Uh, it, it just didn't feel, I don't know. The tension wasn't really there for me. I think that's the problem with murder mysteries, where if you see it coming, or you get spoiled on it, the whole tension of the game is, is kind of gone. Uh, I didn't get spoiled on it. Well, I kind of did. I, I predict... I had a public alt at the time, and I was playing Persona 4 and live tweeting it. I was like, I do not trust this guy. I think this guy is the murderer. And everyone was like, who told you? And I'm like, oh, okay. So we're just doing that now. <laughs> you know, it was people not trying to spoil it. Yeah, I like I was very I was like one palace into the or one dungeon into the game and I was like, I don't trust this dude. I get weird vibes. You know what I think was a really good murder mystery? I, knives out, dude. Both of them. I I want to watch a million movies of Benoit Blanc solving his gay little crimes. I, I think that is a movie that everybody saw, everybody watched, and it's it's good. You know, like, it's good. It's, it's so rare for material that popular to be as good as it is. I, I just, I real stand by both of those movies. I think it's public opinion that they're both really good. But I think they're, like, really good. Especially, like, for murder mysteries. Because I think it's so easy for them to be predictable and stuff. I think, like, there's two twists in the movie, and I think both are good. Yeah, I've re-watched Knives Out multiple times with, like, friends and stuff for their first time. And I really like it. Yeah. Yeah, when are we going to start acting like Ryan Johnson's a good director? He just had one bad Star Wars movie. <laughs> like like at what point do we are we over it? <laughs> you know? And you know, I it's a fair question. Never that's okay, that's understandable. Never no forgiveness. Okay. It wasn't just one bad movie, it was the worst Star Wars movie. Did he direct seven? Or was did he direct eight? I thought he directed seven. Oh, he directed eight? Okay, never mind. No, no, that's fine. I get it now. <laughs> yeah, I thought seven was okay-ish. Who directed seven? I forgot. Oh, yeah, it's J.J. Abrams. That's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I remember now. Yeah, seven, 7 was just 4, but again, but it, it's it's a working formula. It was fine. 7 was just so f sterile. Like, it was safe. There was nothing crazy in it. I was fine with 9 outside of the fact that they're like, just the line, somehow Palpatine has returned. You know? <laughs> Oh, wait, Aaron, that's a good point. Counterpoint, he says. He directed Breaking Bag, Ozymandias. I never knew how to pronounce that word. That's the first time I've ever said it out loud. But uh, uh, the, 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 the episode where they're in the desert. That's a damn good episode of television. I did not know he directed that. Uh, 
Ozymandias? Ozymandias? Either way, damn good episode. He also did Fly. Dude, those are two bangers. Fly is the most overrated episode of Breaking Bad. Uh, or overhated episode. Sorry, sorry, sorry. It's like... It's a bottle episode, yes, so a lot of people want to hate on it. But dude, what a good fucking episode. I will gatekeep. I will gatekeep. I think that episode is for uh, media literate people only. It... I, I feel like it's cringe to say that, but I stand by it. It's such an awesome episode. I feel feel like a fucking elitist gatekeeping just just bitch saying that, but it's so good. It's so good. It's like it says ev that one episode, you could watch it in a vacuum and understand the entire dynamic of Walt and Jesse. It's so good. Have you watched Black Mirror? No, I haven't. But I have a reason why. Uh, every time anything happens with technology, and I'm in a group of people, and we're talking about technology being bad, I, I just like throwing this out there. I like just saying, oh, it's like that one episode of Black Mirror. And I have no fucking clue what I'm talking about. And every single time, everyone in the group goes, yeah, oh, yeah, that one. And I'm like, yeah, it's just a little bit I really like doing. It's kind of, it's more for me than anyone else. Just if anyone's ever ranting about technology, I always just say, oh, it's like Black Mirror. And, and it lands. Everyone agrees with me. I've never had anyone disagree with me. It's my favorite bit that I do. <laughs> uh, I think my favorite example was I, I watched... Free Guy, that Ryan Reynolds movie with a few friends and we walked out and I was like, was it just Mirror? Was that like a episode of Black Mirror? And everyone unanimously agreed. They even brought up the specific episode it was like and I just nodded my head. <laughs> like, you don't have to say about negative stuff, just really about anything about technology. <laughs> I think it's funny. Free Guy was good. Dude, th there are multiple ninja jump scares in that movie. That's crazy. Oh, uh, that it, it got me. I don't remember who I went. I think I think I went with Braiding. I think I went with Captain Kid and a few other friends. And I, I think uh, he said all he wanted to do was see Ninja in that movie, and he saw him twice. Also, wasn't Pokemane in that movie? Yeah, that movie. Like the cameos, at least made sense. But it was still like, huh. <laughs> Yeah, I think, yeah, Jack, Jack Septic Eye was in that movie, too. Yeah, uh, we were talking, because, you know, Aaron Itmar is our Mr. Fortnite in our friend group. And I think the highest praise I ever gave him was if he was there at New Year's Eve in Times Square, he would have seen movement. I promise you. That man would have seen some movement. I would have been there. I would have been there helping. The fact that Chris Evans was in a random cafe. I think my favorite... Uh, I think my favorite cameo of all time... I, I think the smaller... The smaller the importance of the cameo, the funnier it is. Um, is uh, in End of the World. You know, like the Seth Rogen Franco movie back before all that stuff. Um... At, it's it's a post-apocalyptic world. The end of the world has happened. The rapture happened. So it's 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 hell. It's anarchy, and uh, they they kick out Danny McBride from their group, and then they run into him in the apocalypse later, and he has like a dude on a leash in a gimp suit on all fours, and he's like barking, like growling at them, and then he he just says he just says like a. Uh, Girl, calm, calm, calm down, Channing. Calm down. And then he takes off his mask, and it's fucking Channing Tatum. <laughs> it's like, it's such an insane throwaway gag where I just, I just can't believe it. <laughs> like, it, it was just such an insane joke where I was like, I can't believe everyone was okay with that. 
I think that has to be the craziest cami cameo I have, I have ever seen. It, yeah, it was like, yeah, it felt like a cutaway gag in like a 20 minute Family Guy episode, you know? Not, it was at like the 80 minute mark of a 90 minute movie, you know? Like they, they really held on to it at the end. It was, it was crazy. <laughs> My favorite cameo is a Stan Lee cameo in Teen Titans Go. That is a good one. That is, that, where he's on the DC lot on accident. That is a very good one. And then they cannibalized James Franco. Yeah, yeah, they did. That was a movie. Have you seen Bullet Train? I really liked Bullet Train. You could tell at what point of the movie they ran out of budget because the green screen started looking really bad uh, in the last few scenes. But what was so fun about Bullet Train was it was like a movie that, it was like one of the first movies I've seen in a while that really did not take itself seriously and had the budget of a film that did. And that's what I liked about that movie. Uh, it felt super unserious. And that movie also had an insane cameo in it, right? Like, didn't they reveal Ryan Reynolds in the film at like the 60 minute mark just to kill him? Like, right? That happened. Yeah. Yeah, he was the agent. I'm, I'm pretty sure. Oh, he didn't die, but he was revealed? Okay. Yeah, he's just in like the last five minutes. Deadpool 2 had Brad Pitt. I don't remember how. I, I think this is also kind of funny. Uh, the funniest cameo in Deadpool 2 was Ryan Reynolds in the movie he starred in. When he tra travels through space and time to, to kill the man who wrote the Green Lantern. That shit is hysterical. Oh, Brad Pitt pay played the Invisible Man. Yeah, yeah, I do remember that. That is good. Yeah, yeah, he walks into the power lines and you see him for like three seconds. That is such a funny cameo. Yeah, I think Deadpool 3... Uh... I think this is, I'm sure a lot of people feel the same where we're really fucking tired of multiverse shit and superhero movies, but I saw someone counter that and they, they made an excellent point of you're not tired of multiverse shit, you're tired of multiverse being used for fan service. And I get that. I, I think that makes sense to me. I think the multiverse can be a cool topic. But I do think it's being used for uh, fan service. I think, like, Spider-Man No Way Home was, like, the last chance people could possibly, uh, like, I, I think No Way Home was, like, the limit. I think that was the curtains on the multiverse. Spider-Verse is still cool. You know, everyone likes Spider-Verse. And it's because they're not using it for, like, I mean, you do get, like, a lot of fan service to the other spider man and stuff like that. But it's not, like, Tobey Maguire, you know? it's They're all original characters in this universe, I guess. Yeah, so I agree, Aaron. I think uh, Deadpool 3 can be a fresh take on it uh, if they just make fun of it. I think I think they can make fun of it and have it be good. Uh, the, the scary part is that this is a movie being filmed during a writer's strike. So... I, I read conflicting things. People were saying, oh, they're filming in the writer's strike. But I saw other people say they're, they're filming what they had written until the writer's strike. Uh, so it's like, depending on which is true, is heavily going to affect the quality of the movie. But something else that I, I don't think people understand is having writers on set is really valuable. Uh, especially on major productions like that, because sometimes writers work with the crew to tweak lines last minute on the set. They're like, let's try this. Or they just come up with something off the spot because they start riffing with crew and they throw it in there. And their job is to write these lines. Like, um, yeah, so I don't know. It's like, I, I trust that uh, they're still 
Yeah, if Ryan Reynolds, someone said they're not allowed to improv. Oh. E. Dude, if Ryan Reynolds can't improv, that's like, that's a lot of the charm of the movie. Because from what I heard, he improved most <laughs> of his lines. Ew, like, just knowing that he can't improv is, uh, that's bad. <laughs> that's, that's really bad. Uh, you know, I'll stay optimistic. If it's a bad movie, uh, I'll, I'll live. <laughs> uh, I have watched bad movies before, and sometimes I've even enjoyed them. Uh, the only improv, if he does any ADR stuff after the strike ends. Well, that is possible, actually. Because uh, most of the scenes, he'll have the mask on. So they could easily do that. Uh, not for everything, but uh, that that honestly is possible. Because they, they can put a lot of movement over the mask. But yeah, no, I think it, as much as I don't want to admit, Deadpool 3 does look like it's it's lining up to be, like, not great. Which is upsetting. Uh, but I want to stay optimistic because I like the series. Uh, so, you know, we'll see. We'll see. So today I learned improv counts as writing. I mean, of course it does. It's like you're adding to the script. And I think it depends on, like, how much you really add. Like, there's a certain threshold you have to add before it's considered writing. But if you're on, like, WGA... You know, it, it's like, like, even if you're a SAG actor for, like, the, the smallest of roles, you're still a SAG actor. But damn, dude, I, I, I did not know that either until... I, I just didn't know he was... A, yeah, that makes sense, though, but damn. I match with a girl on Tinder. What should my opening line be? Uh, I know this is really stupid. Just say hey. Just say hey. Just just tr drop it. Uh, I saw a study. Oh yeah, ahoy. That is true. I saw a study that said uh, they, they took like 1,400 women on like several different people's accounts. Uh, several variables come into play. But the most consistent opening that got a response was like hey with like, six, like seven, 65, 70%. And then Ahoy got like 80% response rate. Uh, you know, who knows if that converts long term, but you at least get one response. Ahoy goes crazy. So uh, just try Ahoy exclamation mark, exclamation mark. See what happens. How many Ys though? J just don't be weird. I think just, just keep it one Y. It's like, I on paper saying just hey, sounds bad and boring and stupid but i think it's just like who the fuck is this guy who is confident enough to just drop hay you know it's it's like there is an element of just not giving a fuck and i think that is very attractive to a lot of people and then when you say ahoy you get people say who the fuck is this guy who says ahoy and then they start thinking like does he say this to anyone? I think like the the more of a joke that you try to make, the harder it seems like you're trying. Like I had a friend whose only opening line was, will you come over and help me build my, uh, what was it? Oh my God, what is it? Oh my God, I'm blanking on it. Not Legos, uh, Bionicles. It was like, will you come over and help me build a Bionicle? And he had a very low success rate, but I think he was fine with that. He was committed. Surely it kills it. I, I think, like, some lines like that are high risk, high reward. Because, uh... It's like, when that line lands, it lands hard. You know what I mean? It's like, uh... It probably has, like, a low success rate, but the conversion rate to, like, a date is probably very high. It's like a filter, more so than anything. That's true. Um, I don't know. I think, like, for me, uh, I don't have any dating apps anymore, but when I did, uh, I've taught, I told the story a lot. 
because uh, you can have like an anthem on on tinder it's just like it's this song describes me um i'm pretty mentally unwell especially when i was on tinder and uh my anthem was a a mitski song which i understand what you might think that implies but i think it's such a glaring red flag when people are just curious you know i i think it worked because people were just like you know you're wearing this on your sleeve right and i'm like yeah and it worked several times so uh you know be true to yourself be true to yourself man Look, I was sleeping with Siren Song. I think it's a little different. My anthem is uh, Toxic Gossip Train. That's crazy. <laughs> that, I think that would land. I think that works. Because then you have an immediate icebreaker where you just want to talk about it. And I'm going to say, I'm going to say that works. I'm going to say that works. Me and the bitch I pulled by being mentally ill. Oh, t t tell me about it. <laughs> um... I've not used dating apps, but I consider it more and more every day. Uh, I think dating apps, I mean, they work, right? I don't, I, like, I don't think people, it's hard to make like a meaningful connection. It's possible, definitely. Um, but I think dating apps are more just for people who just don't give a fuck. It's just people who are single and bored. Like, it's not people who are single and desperate, people who are single and want to find love. It's just people who are single and bored. They just want to fuck? I don't even think that's true. For, for most of them, that is true. But for me, it was just kind of like, let's just see what fucking happens. L let's just... And then you kind of get into a point where you're like, let's just... I'm just going to say what I want. We'll see what happens. Um, yeah, you can make friends off Tinder. That is true. Um, like, one time I was on Tinder, and I have a hot tub. And she asked, what are you doing? And I said, oh, I'm in the hot tub with my roommates. We're just hanging out. And this is like message three. And she says, oh my God, all of my friends and I are in a, like we're in a bet, a contest to see who can hook up with the guy who has a hot tub, the fastest. And it's like, at that point, it's like fucking whatever. You, you know, it's just fucking whatever. And at that point, you just don't even have to try anymore. So at that point, you can just start saying shit and know you have someone who is trying to entertain it. So uh, I just I just start saying shit, man. <laughs> and it's like it's already secured. Yeah, maybe they're lying on the internet. Who cares? The line was thrown out there anyways. And so I, I just started saying, uh, yeah, anyways, I know I don't normally say this, but I've just felt such a strong connection to you and your Tinder profile. I, 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 I think I love you. You know, I just start throwing shit like that out there to see what happens. And then you get met with a, oh my God, I love you too. And then you unmatch because then it gets a little too scary. <laughs> but uh, it, it was interesting to see where it went. <laughs> It's uh, it's always real funny till someone fucks with you back. You know what I mean? <laughs> First time chatter says, ask if they want children. No. No. Nuh uh. Maybe they called your bluff. I mean, the thing is, uh, maybe they did. Maybe they did. But the story's funny either way. <laughs> It's funny either way. Again, it goes back to my point. I think everyone on Tinder is just bored. It's just bored. They're just bored. Did anyone ever recognize you on Tinder? Uh, no. Actually. Uh, which was pretty cool. Um, I think once. No, it happened once. Uh, but no, it, it wasn't like too frequent of a thing. Someone says, Jacob, quote, afraid of commitment, Alpharad. Okay, I'm sorry for being afraid of commitment from the girl on Tinder who said she wanted to fuck me for having a hot tub. 
Yeah, sorry I'm so afraid of commitment in that one specific scenario. Yeah, really, yeah, got me figured out on that one, huh? Uh, how long do I have left in me? Uh, I'm getting this fucking shiny. If this turns into a subathon, then so be it. Uh, well, I'm, I'm finding this fucking shiny. What is the average age of your viewership? Uh, it's all over the place. It's impossible to get analytics that are truthful. Um... I, I think, like, we did run a, a age poll once, and it's, it's like, of all the age ranges, like, a majority of my fans were, like, 18 plus. Like, by, like, I think it was, like, 70% were 18 plus, which I think is cool. 30% uh, were under the age of 18. And it's, like, I don't I just, like, I play silly Nintendo games, so I can't be surprised. But I, I do feel uncomfortable having, I, I would feel more uncomfortable if the, the amount of miners in my audience was larger. But, like, it, you know, it, it, it's fucking YouTube and Twitch. Like, it, who, who knows? Who knows? Um, but the largest bulk... Because I sectioned everything off. I think I did, like, 13 to 18, 18 to 21, 22 to 25, 26 to 30, or, like, plus. I, I don't know. I remember... I just remember the, the 13 to 18 being the largest one. But I think that's also the widest group. But, like, uh, a majority were 18 plus. So that's good. Most are gay, though. That is true. Shout out for that. I think I saw your content first when I was 14. Yeah, I think, like, the longer you're a YouTuber, the older your audience is always going to be. Uh, I think the youngest audiences are probably creators who just start. But if people are continue doing um, an odd... If they continue being a YouTuber for multiple, multiple years, I think it, it's probably likely that most of them leave, but the, the rest of them stay. Right? So it gets blended in with your new crowd. And obviously, if they're staying for multiple years, they are aging multiple years. So yeah, I'm sure there are tons of people who watch me who are in like their early mid-20s. And they're like, oh yeah, I was a minor when I first found your content. You know? Like, I think that's, that's possible. It's likely, even. Wait, I'm 38? Well, I mean, you're older than me, so it, it's like, you, you were probably not a minor. <laughs> Uh, when I started. Um. Dude, I'll find it. Oh, oh, oh! No, 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 Oh, I long last! That is so over odds! Oh, Jesus Christ! We finally got it! I was willing to stream for like 12 straight hours today. It, okay, dead ass. It took us like 10 hours to find that one shiny Caterpie. That is insane. Uh, okay, at 188, the believers finally come through. I told you, it pays off eventually. It pays off. Oh, holy shit. Oh, look at all these fuckers. Oh, my God. Okay. Uh, let's move the Pokemon. Let's bring them all the way up here. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm going to put him here. Uh, let's move him right there. Okay. Add to party. Uh, we can get rid of that. Holy shit, dude. Oh. Oh, we're we're done. Oh, we're finally over. Uh, Aaron says, what's the badge count? So, you can't get into Koga, the, the fifth gym leader, until you catch 50 Pokemon. So, that's why we're in such a grind. What do we name it? Uh, I'm going to let you guys think of names real quick. Uh, I'm going to go to the bathroom again because I've been drinking a fuck ton of water.
Weedle. Dad, that's so boring. Um, so I I decided I was I was thirsty, and I didn't really know what to get, or I was hungry, because uh, I've been streaming for seven hours, and I kind of want to stream for a little bit longer. Um, I I I'm not really like a Taco Bell guy, but it just sounds really good. I'm gonna I'm gonna order some Taco Bell. I get a quesadilla and a beefy five layer. That's my plan. Uh, 13th Weedle Y. Okay, that's pretty funny, but I'm not doing it. Name him Subathon. Oh, it's close. Uh, Taco. I kind of like Taco. Chalupa. Ooh, I like Chalupa. Quesadilla. Um, ahoy. No, not Ahoy. Taco Bell. Uh, yeah. I, I think naming him Taco Bell is a little bit silly. No, okay, no, no, no. Caterpie is a Taco Bell. Butterfree is not. I need something that uh, is go works for Butterfree. Just name it Baja Blast. Yeah, that's fine. I, I, I'm not a Baja Blaster, but I, I think the name is funny enough. Uh, we can name it Baja Blast. All right, let's, uh, let's take it out of the ball. Let's take a look at this guy. Uh, thank God we got the Caterpie. Oh, gee, he does not know the amount of hell we have been through. Okay, so, uh... Hmm. I don't think it's the best idea to... Like, Bulbasaur is hard. But do we... What if... I thought that was shiny. I was about... Do we want to... If I just keep going in and out, this is the best way to shiny hunt Bulbasaur. But it's just so boring. Because at least you're when you're catching Pokemon, you're catching Pokemon, you know? Someone said, finally, you can play the game. <laughs> you must be new here. It's all supposed to be boring, though. Like, I, I see, I hear you, but at least it feels like I'm doing something. Uh, just, just because. Really, just because. Yeah, to the next grind. I want it to be Bulbasaur. I mean, we're already here. I mean, if we get Bulbasaur, we clear out Viridian minus Pikachu. Because that, that one just... I mean, that sounds equally hard. So I guess Pikachu or Bulbasaur would be awesome. Uh, we were over odds, so can the universe be kind enough to give us uh, proper odds on, on this next one? Uh, new to shiny streams, not other streams. Uh, well, you're not really missing much. We just kind of just wait until you see a shiny Pokemon and then pop off. Uh, and see, a lot of people stayed for the Caterpie just because they want that satisfaction. Like, the thing about shiny hunting is you just want to stay for the clip. You just want to see it. You just, like, yeah. Um, okay, I, don't, I didn't really see a Bulbasaur. I mean... <laughs> I, I don't know why my ass thought I'd just find the, the Bulbasaur right off the bat. Uh, here, I'm going to keep the encounter going. Actually, let's see how many how many it took. Okay, so first we've got to get rid of all of these. All of these guys. Yeah, I mean, the Shiny Hunt is really just a podcast. It, it is That's what it's supposed to be. Because you know how insane it felt taking this, like, 60-hour uh, journey? And turning it into like a five-page script, it, it it felt a little depressing at some point, you know. <laughs> yeah, it only lets you do thirty at a time. That that is true. That is, it's. Someone says it's kind of like uh. All right, let's do thirty. Yeah. Uh. Okay. So. We've sent 324 Caterpies. Yeah, it, I like that it keeps track. So you know how many total Caterpies it took. Because uh, we did spend like two or three separate streams trying to get him. Uh, I mean, the chain got broke by the Weedle. It got broke by a Bell Sprout. Uh, then we went and did Geodude for a little bit. Why is it Shiny Man 82 and not a different number? Uh, I just thought it'd be funny to say this guy who, like, 
really cares about shiny Pokemon if he was born in 1982. Uh, I don't know. Just sounded funny to me. It's the implications. What does the probability look like for shiny hunting in this game? Uh, there are multiple things you can do to increase your shiny chances even without using the, the shiny charm. And if you do all that pre-shiny charm, I think it's one... I think it's 1 in 313. Like, it's pretty low. It's pretty low, but then you realize, oh, you have to catch 50 shiny Pokemon if you want to commit to the bit in this game. But I think it's like 1 in 130 if you have the shiny charm. See, we have sent Oak nearly 3,000 Pokemon in this entire run. Look at that fucking Weedle just sitting there. Look at that fucker. Oh, he is being sent to the farm, man. Did I get the shiny Caterpie? Oh, I did. I did. Yes, sir. Yeah, the shame Weedle. <laughs> Alright, before I do any more, just because I get paranoid with this shit, uh, I'm going to go back up and mark the Caterpie. Oh my god, I just realized how many there truly are. Um, so let's... let's. Uh, this just makes it harder to release him on accident. Actually, I don't think you can release him if, if he's marked uh, with the favorite. But uh, I always just do that because I'm just scared, right? <coughs> Am I going to play the Nuzlocke now? <laughs> good one, good one. Uh, you, <laughs> you must be new here. Did I save? Uh, I'll save uh, after I release everything. Yeah, I mean, I am technically doing it. Uh, after I evolve the Caterpie into a Butterfree, we will have 29 out of 50. Which is a, is a good update. That is a good update. What's your favorite shiny hunting method in all the Pokemon? Uh, as obnoxious as this seems, it probably is this. Because uh, I think other shiny methods are just really mind-numbing and boring. And so is this. Like, it's definitely mind-numbing, but it at least feels like I'm doing something. And it's pretty quick. Like, I know this seven-hour stream feels long for a shiny. But if you have shiny hunted in any other game, I think you understand. Uh, oh, Dynamax Adventures and Sword and Shield. Yeah, that probably is the most... I think that's just one of the most fun modes in Pokemon. But I just didn't even care to, like, shiny hunt in it. It was like, a, oh, cool, I got a shiny. It never felt like I was hunting a specific thing. But, uh... I, I probably do like Let's Go the most. Poke Radar. Yeah, if seven hours is, like, our longest shiny hunt, it's not... That's it, pretty easy for shiny hunting. Like, I've seen people go through weeks, right? Are you even going to stream after this? I am I might stream for a little bit. I'll, I'll eat my Taco Bell, and then uh, we'll just see where I'm at. Because uh, I'm just happy to be streaming again. I was like, I wonder if I'm ever going to have the energy to do those, like, 10-hour streams again. And uh, here we are at hour 7. I don't think I'm going to go to 10 hours... Uh, if we didn't get the Caterpie, my ass was... It could have been a 14-hour stream, you know? Like, I, I was willing to commit double this time to catching one fucking Caterpie. I like Outbreaks, personally. I do like Outbreaks, but I, I don't think it feels satisfying because the Outbreaks are, like, too easy in Legends Arceus. Like, shiny Pokemon, it's cool that you get them so easily, but I, I just they just didn't feel special to me because it was so easy to get them. 20 gifted right now for my friend Jacob? That's such a good idea, Joe. I mean, I did just order Taco Bell. Uh, 20 gifted, and I'll even eat it, too. How about that? Good sub goal, right? <laughs> 20 gifted for 20 talk. Okay, 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 buddy. Okay, let's let's calm down here. Let, let's not get too, let's not get carried away. Oh, and we're pinning it, huh? Okay. Well, okay. Joe, I don't like this now. I, I, I don't like what you've thrown at me. Okay, but real quick, 
we're about to see the answer. How many Caterpie did we catch for this one shiny? Plus one for the shiny. Uh, it took us 833 Caterpies. Jesus Christ. Oh, wow. That is, uh, that now sits on top for the slowest shiny hunt we have had in this entire run. It has dethroned Vulpix as the hardest one to catch. Oh, that is crazy. Oh, that is crazy. But look at this guy. Look at this guy. Isn't he worth it? Wasn't he worth it? Uh, in his serious nature. Okay, that's great. That's great. Oh, he's docile. Never mind. But yeah, same thing. Okay, so now we got to evolve him. Um, I, I, I'm sad to evolve him because I kind of like just watching him follow me and just, just be a little guy, you know? I don't think I have it in me to hunt uh, Bulbasaur. I think that one's hard. I guess what would it hurt if I spend the night uh, hunting Bulbasaur, and then um, I'll I'll just stop. You know. Yeah, it wouldn't hurt to just hunt Bulbasaur for the night, and then it's like I'm not too committed if I decide I'm I'm done. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, to keep the chain going, though, I am gonna catch a, a few more. Uh, just to, to get some XP. We gotta level up our little guy, of course. How many encounters did it end up being? Uh, I think 833. I think that was it. Alpha, didn't you say you'd rank all the Kanto Shinies? Oh, I did say that, didn't I? Um, okay, let me find a tier list. Good call, good call. Um... Kanto, let's go shinies. Uh, shiny Kanto decks. Okay, I don't know why this one has sunglasses on all the Squirtles. Uh, I don't really know why, but uh, we're, we're going to use this one anyways. You don't know? No, like, I know why. I understand the Squirtle squad. I'm just like, but why? <laughs> You know, it's it's more of like a, but why, <laughs> for the for this. Uh, okay, let's go. Let's go here. Oh, okay, I'm just gonna go here. Um, okay, let's get this situated. Uh, I'll put the tier list up here, and I'll take my face. I'll, I'll bring it like down here. Um, okay. Would you like me to change that song? I realize if it's just that on loop, it's going to be insane. Uh, I always go Route 209 for for like background music because it's just like a 14-minute song. It loops. It takes a while. It's, it's my favorite background song. Uh, okay. Uh, let's just go piece by piece, I guess. This is just the tier list for everyone. Um, I think Bulbas... What the fuck are these tiers? Send to Africa, why? Okay, I'm just gonna... Um... Go, I'm just gonna put goat. Uh... Like... I, I can't put quintessential, I don't think I'll fit. Like, shiny. Uh... Uh... Oh, 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 I know. This is... This is a shiny. And then this is gonna be... This is a shiny? <laughs> and then bad. Bay. <laughs> Bay. No, bad. Um, I'm, I'm gonna say neutral. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, I, I think Bulbasaur falls under, like, this is a shiny really easily. I think that's a pretty easy one, actually. Um... I wouldn't call it, it's just like, I can't even tell. You know, I think bad has to be like the shiny is worse. Um, I'm just gonna put Charizard and Goat. 
I, I know it's... Dude, it's just... It's such a cool shiny. Uh, Ivysaur. I feel neutral on it for some reason. Um, I like them. I like them more. I, I really don't like the bulb. It's just... It's, it's bad. I almost... Uh, Bulbasaur is a good shiny. I, I don't I don't agree. Make your own tier list. I don't mind the Venusaur though. I'm, I'm neutral on it. I'm neutral on it. Uh, when it comes to Charmander, I, li I like the little guy. Uh, Charmeleon. I, I honestly like him. I would put Charmeleon there. I think it's just it's 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 not different enough. The Charmander is like a little golden friend. Uh, Squirtle also. This is a shiny. Blastoise is at least a little purple. War Turtle 2. Um, yeah, it's just like they're not different enough, I guess. It, it like it looks fine. Like it, again, I would see. I'm like, oh, okay, that's fair. Uh, Caterpie. Uh, okay, I know we just went to hell and back for him, but I do like this little guy. Uh, I would put him higher than Charmander too. Whoa, my food got dropped off, dude. That was fucking impressive. That was Hello. I have returned. Awesome idea for gifters, Joe. That's an awesome idea. Okay. Uh, so let's talk about Metapod. Uh, I like the red Metapod. It's pretty good. Butterfree? I, I don't think the colors mix. I'm going to say this is the first bad one. I don't think cut, bad Butterfree is very good. I'm sorry. I, I have to draw the line somewhere. It should have been Pink Butterfree. I agree wholeheartedly. <sighs> um, Weedle, I think it's also fine. Uh, believe it or not... As much bad experiences as I've had, I feel fine with them. Um, I think the Kakuna I'm neutral on. Probably like no, low neutral. Uh, Beedrill I think is good. I wouldn't put it in goat tier. I kind of like Caterpie more. But it's up there. I think... I think this falls... Pidgey is in there. Uh... I feel, uh, I, don't, I think Pidgeotto looks gross. I think he looks a little gross. Pidgey is like, you have to squint to tell it's a shiny. And then this is like, actually decent. I would put this on the high end here. The high end of neutral. Um, this quesadilla is hitting, by the way, in case anyone was wondering. This shit's like, peak Taco Bell right now. Mmm. Rotata? For some reason, I didn't know that's what color Rotata was. Uh, hmm. I think Raticate's good. I actually didn't know this uh, sh shiny was red. Uh, I'll put it right here. Hmm. I don't like the Sparrow of Pharaoh. I think Pharaoh's fine. Sparrow just looks a little sickly. Uh, which sometimes that happens. That happens a lot with them. I was going to preemptively put Pikachu in this tier because it's really like a... Th this is a shiny. It's like such a simple color palette swap. It's like just a lighter or darker orange. Uh, Raichu, I do like. I do. I'm going to put Raichu um, up here. It's also darker, but it's more red. It's reddish. Like, it's different enough for me. Mmm... Ekans... It's a green snake. 
I just like the purple snake so much more. Whereas Arbok looks pretty cool. It just looks, it does look a little sick, but uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it up here. I think it's better than the, the rest. A uh, green sand is a goat. I think this guy looks awesome. He looks like an awesome friend. And normally I dislike it when lines change their shiny colors, but uh, I'm gonna say shiny sand slash also very good. Charizard's hard beat, though. Um, I do like that the Nidoran swap colors. Um, I feel neutral. I don't know why. I don't really like this one as pink. It might just be blatant misogyny. But I do like this one as blue. Um, I'm gonna... I don't know why. I, I think... I know it's just that I like the color blue. <laughs> it's all it is. Mm. But for some reason, I do not like Nidorino in blue. I just like the little tiny Nidoran. Uh, actually, no, this is all over the place. Because I like Nidorina pink, but I like Nidoran blue. Don't know what's going on there. Um, but it's probably still a little lower. And then, uh, Nidoqueen, I don't like. I, I, I don't like the green Nidoqueen. But blue Nidoking, I just like the color blue. I think it's really just that simple. Hmm. Why is Nidoqueen not purple? Like, legit question. Just, I do not get it. Uh, I don't like the Clefable, Clefairy. It's like, just the green tips just kind of make me mad. <laughs> like, it kind of pisses me off. Mm. Golden Vulpix is such a good color. Also, uh, Ninetales is like a competitor. I'm glad we got a Ninetales. But it's, it's good. I'm just a hater for green. I do like green shinies, but it's just like this gross, sickly green. Like, the Espeon green, the Mewtwo green. Like, I do like those greens. The Golbat green, I like. It's just like, they use this sickly green on a lot of shinies, and it just does not land for me. Um, you should change the title. No, because I'm going immediately back into shiny hunting afterwards. This is just a little detour after I eat this burrito. Also hits. This is definitely, it's a shiny for me. These are way, way too identical. Uh, but Zubat, I'm going to put him in goat tier. Uh, I'm going to put Golbat also a little better, a little higher. I think they're both really good shinies. Mm. There's a lot of green shinies, but do you guys know how shinies worked pre-Gen 6? They didn't make, the shinies are not custom made. They're like algorithmically, the palette is just swapped with different colors. So you see a lot of colors that don't really work and make sense. And that's because, like, they weren't designed by a human. It's, uh... They didn't start making custom sprites until they were, like, Gen 6. Which is way later than you expect. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. It, Whenever I learned that, it's it made a lot of sense. But you're just kind of like, uh... Ah, oh, that sucks. Because, <laughs> you know, they're not going to, like, go back and change them. That's actually just a myth. I don't care. I believe it. Um, Oddish. <laughs> uh, this dude's just vibrant. I I don't like this green one. They just look tinted. This just looks like they have they have filter on. Um, Paris. I cannot tell this is a shiny. I'm gonna say I'm neutral towards Vileplume. Parasect. I actually don't mind. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put him at the top. I'm going to put him, like, here. Yeah. Uh, I, the neutral tier, tier is going to be good, because there's so many Pokemon I feel, like, emptiness for. Uh, Venomoth, I'm going to put him... I'll do this. Or Venonat. Uh, Venomoth, though. This is a good shiny. It's blue. I just like blue. 
I'll put it like right here, honestly. Hmm. Yeah, no, that's a good one. I think Diglett and his little blue nose. Uh, I again, I just feel neutral towards. But when people see this tier list, I'm gonna fuck with them and just put Dugtrio one tier higher for no reason. Oh, th these two are absolutely. That's a shiny. Uh, Psyduck is an easy S tier. Like even like, I would put him right there. I, I like these few a lot more. Mm. Yeah, 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 that's fine. Golduck is such a, like, fall from grace, though, because Psyduck is such a good shiny. And this guy is just, it's just like the colors just don't go together. I'm, I'm going to say this is a shiny. I'm going to put him, like, right here. Um, Mankey and Prime. Dude, there's a lot. Like, I think Jin 1 just has, like, I like green Mankey. I do like this guy, but it sucks that, like, Primeape does not look green enough to, like, match it. Pink Golduck would have been hype. I mean, Golduck's already blue. Psyduck's now blue. What if they just made him yellow? Go then it's like Golden Duck, you know? It's like, oh, that would have been awesome. Uh-huh. I think Growlithe falls under the This Is a Shiny tier, but I think Piss Yellow Arcanine is, is pretty decent. Yeah, I'll put him there. I think I'm going to raise Raticate a little bit. I think he, he's pretty cool. Uh, and also, what the fuck happens here? <laughs> you know, light blue, light blue, now he's green. Uh, yeah, these go in the, this is a shiny tier, and then I, I think this one's alright. Yeah, I think green Polyrath is sick. Um, I, I just like these Pokemon more, so I'm bringing them up. Dude, again, I gotta put Abra and Kadabra down here. Uh, Alakazam's pink, though. I wouldn't put him, like, up here, because I just don't think the colors go together super well. But I'll put him there. I think it, it is a pretty decent shiny. Um, shiny Poliwag's underrated. It's just... It, it's sure. It, it just looks the same, man. Uh... I'm just kind of looking ahead, just out of curiosity. Yeah, I think this Machop is whatever. I'm going to put him there. I think the green man is okay. I, I think just this shade... Actually, no, I like that shade more. Yeah, I think the green men are okay. I'll keep them there. Um, Shiny Clefable and Bad Tier... I just don't like the green tips. I, I feel like it just does not match the palette at all. I'm going to say that's the worst one. Um, golden Bellsprout, Throat Goat, shout out. Uh, I like the golden leaves. They're like pretty subtle. But I, I like them. I'm going to put them right there. Victory Bell is just like what happens, man. I don't want to call it bad. I'm going to say it's neutral. It's just a lot of colors that don't really go together. But at least it's different, I guess. You know, I, I guess. Um, I think Tinta Cool is actually really good. The purple and green work. It's fun. Uh, but this is like blue in like... like it's like a different shade of green. Almost like sea foam here. Uh, it's not as cool. I'm going to put it still as... This is a shiny. But maybe like a little lower. Uh, Golden Geodude. I think Golden Geodude's raw. I'm going to bring him up here with the boys. Uh, and then I think Graveler... Like, I know it's like a different shade. But it's like to the untrained eye. It just kind of looks like dirt again. And then, Go honestly, Golem is a fall from grace. This line starts off so strong with Gold Geo, dude. I wish they just kind of stuck the landing. It, it, I would even say it's bad. Hi, Sarah. How are you? I'm just saying shiny Pokemon. Okay, it's also shiny Ponyta is, like, goaded. Uh, it's, like, it's up here. Uh, I would say it's 
up here, up here. I think Rapidash is also good. It's goaded, but it's like, it's not as strong. I don't like how faded the blue gets. I like how vibrant and strong the blue is right here. Oh, you just saw Spider-Man? Oh, like across the Spider-Verse? I know you haven't, did you watch Into the Spider-Verse? Because I know you haven't until, I assume you watched it prior to that. But congrats. Congrats on joining the rest of society. Uh, slucking Slowpoke. It, definitely in the, this is a shiny category. Um, I do like, actually, this guy might be goaded. I, I like the, the bluish purple. Slowpoke. Slowbro. I think he's up there. I don't really like the Magna. I already, I, I they're kind of rusted. Yeah, no, I think it's neutral. I, I, full 180 there. Um... I, I, I think this Farfetch being a little more red, I don't know why. Like, the brown to red isn't a massive change, but I kind of like it. I'm going to put him right here next to... Right there. Yeah, that's a respectable placement. Placement. Um, Green, Doduo, and Go Dodrio. I feel like you kind of have to keep them together because it's kind of just the same design. Uh, it's like you're ranking it on the same qualification. Because I'm not ranking which Pokemon I like more. I'm ranking... The shiny, and it's it's really hard to separate these two shinies because they're really just the same. Yeah, Gen One is pretty green. I'm now noticing. Uh, d uh yeah, this is a this is a shiny. Uh, green Muck though, and Grimer. I f same way. You can't really separate these two, but I, I think it works. I like the colors on him. Shelter's an awesome guy. He I didn't realize he's so red, and the Cloister is just blue, which he already is. So that knocks him down so many tiers. But it's a fun, different blue. I mean, I guess he's like more like a grayish blue. Um, dude, I want to rank Gaz like Gengar up here for his Mega, but no, his Mega is like top SS tier. But uh, this entire line, like, no, no, Gastly's blue actually. Gastly's sick. Haunter is green, right? Why it, did they change the shiny? Because I thought it, I thought Haunter was green. Did they change it? Because I this guy's not looking familiar. No, it was never green? Huh. Wow, okay. Then yeah, this is also just a shiny. Uh, I'm going to say... At least, no, at least has a blue tongue. I'm putting it higher than the rest. Mandela effect. Isn't that just not what the Mandela effect is, though? Doesn't it specifically refer to, like, groups of people all having the same misremembrance? Um, uh, Onyx. I, yeah, I don't really like this Onyx. Uh, Pink Hip. Okay, I'm going to say this one's good. I'm a Hypno hater, first off. I, I I do not like Hypno, but this shiny is kind of heat. You know, real, recognize real here. I'm going to put him right here. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, real, recognize real. Uh, yellow. I like this Kingler, honestly, because it, it feels like GBA colors. Like, it's green, but it's such a nice faded green, where I think it works. A yellow Krabby, a little, little piss crab. Uh... I'll put them, like, right here. There. No, there. There we go. Um, Voltorb Electrode. Uh, I think these are good. I, I think these are goaded. My goaded is pretty inflated, but I think that's fine. Um, I think these are just two good shinies, which it's weird. It's They're really just blue. <laughs> like, that, that's all it is. Maybe I put them here. Uh, I like Voltorb way more, and I can't explain why. Damn, I really can't explain why. Is Pidgeotto lower than Gengar? Uh, because like the this is a shiny tier is reserved for like the ones where I'm like, it really isn't that different. So these are the ones where the shinies actively make it worse. <laughs> like I think that's the difference. Hmm. These are a lot of mid shinies coming up. I think Executor is pretty good. I like the red on him. Um, Cubone Marowak. 
Again, again, a lot of these green ones, I just really feel no. I would say no. Nah, actually, I think this Hitmonchan's bad. The hit Hitmon Lee. I don't think the colors work. Um, there's just a lot of bad green. Yeah, I, I don't like those colors. Golden Lickitung's pretty based. Uh, yeah, I, I put him pretty high up here. Yeah, I, I think he looks good. Uh, coughing, wheezing. I would say higher teal. Like I, I like the teal. I'll put him up in neutral. Uh, dude, why is red Rhydon, or Rhyhorn, so nice? And then he just becomes, like, pale. <laughs> yeah, I feel nothing there. Uh, I, I hate putting all the green ones down here, but I have always disliked Shiny Chansey. I, I, I just... There's just a lot of green. It feels like I'm only putting green ones down here, but it's just because there's just a lot of bad green ones. Uh... This guy's silly, though. See, I like the some green ones. This guy's awesome and silly. Uh, I'll put him... He's so vibrant. How could I not like him? Green shinies are L. I think shinies are only Ls when there's, like, this gross faded green. Because, like, I like some of these greens, you know? Um, I'm going to even freeze this guy. Um, Kangaskhan, I can't even tell that's a shiny. Uh, I don't like the Seedra, the red and blue. I'm going to separate those guys. Um, these colors definitely clash, but I, I, I like the clash here. Uh, I got to say. Yeah, I'll put it there. Golding Seeking, or just just very whatever. I, I Golding, there's, there is a difference. I feel nothing towards this Staryu. Bad take on Seedra. Uh, I just wish that this... It complemented the colors. Well, actually, no. I I'm gonna I'm gonna say it's neutral. I don't really care that much. Green Mr. Mime. Green Scyther. Uh I, I, I think I think it's fun. It's really not all that different, but I gotta put it at the top here. Uh I like the color. I like the color. I think he can go up a little bit higher. I think Executor could go a little higher, too. I like the leaves. Uh, Jinx, can't really tell. Red Electabuzz? Uh, surprisingly, don't feel a lot towards. Um, I, I recognize the difference, though, so I will I will respect it in the neutral tier. Uh, <coughs> do I like Magmar? He's so red. He's just so red. Uh... I think I, I think I, I feel I think if I have to ask myself if I feel something I probably don't. Same goes for Pinsir, but I don't like Green Tauros. Um, but Gold Magikarp, we gotta admit he's the goat. He's he's up here. He's really up there. And then Red Gyarados, I think it's the best Kanto shiny. It's really good. I know it's really devalued because of Johto, but it's such a good shiny. It's really good. Both of them are really good. Pinsir is cool. I No, I'm not ranking Pinsir. I'm ranking the shiny specifically. And, yeah, I'll, I'll put it higher neutral. But, it, like, it, I just feel, eh. Uh, Lapras? Purple Lapras is good. Um, I'll start flooding the, the goaded tier. I'll, I'll bump some up. Some can get promoted just to, like, balance the tiers out. Uh, di oh, Ditto's goaded for sure. Uh, I'll put him right next to his little blue friend of, of Psyduck. Um, I, white, like, Silver Eevee is also really nice. I feel like people don't talk about this one enough. But I really like that Eevee. Uh, the Vaporeon, also super nice. Definitely the best of the Eevees. Uh, I'll put him, like, right here. Oh, no. Uh, Bellsprout has to go a little lower. There's so many good ones here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Jolteon is is sick. Jolteon is pretty sick. Bad sick. It's sick slash neg. But uh, I, I still think it's acceptable. For a shiny. Uh, the Vapora, I, or Flareon, I did not know that was a shiny. Uh, okay, so hear me out. I know this is controversial, but dude, th this color palette, for the entire Porygon line, like Porygon Z might be my favorite shiny. Like, like this is such a good color palette. Like, the blue and white is so nice. 
Imagine if Jolteon was electric blue. Oh, it'd be so good. Porygon is such a good shiny. It's up there. Uh, Low-key, Amastar and Ammonite are also pretty good. I wouldn't say... I wouldn't go crazy with it. But uh, yeah, no, actually, I just placed them there, and I agree with that. I think Kabuto is a good shiny. A good green shiny. Kabutops feels like he takes it a little bit too far. Like, the idea. But, uh... uh I'll keep I'll keep him up there. I think Kabuto is... This is an awesome little guy. How high, how high can he go? I'm gonna put him there. Aerodactyl, uh, I didn't. He's kind of purple. I didn't. I didn't know he'd be purple. It's. It's like a fun little head cannon of like maybe that's what he looked like before. Oh, I just realized you can't see the full the full tier list. Uh, there we go. Now you guys can see it. Uh, okay. Now you can't. Okay. There you go. Now you can. Now you can. That's the edge of it. There we go. Now we're good. Now we're good. Okay. Uh, Snorlax. Uh, this is like... It, it's it's barely a shiny. I'll put him like right here. I like the shade of blue that he is, but it's just pretty whatever. It's disappointing how bad these shinies are. The only one that's different is Moltres, and it's not very good. Uh, I, I like the lighter color, the lighter shade of Articuno. I do like it. I'll put it here. Zapdos is pretty disappointing. I feel like Zapdos could be really cool. And Moltres, I think I'm upset. I think I'm upset with it. It's like, it should be good, but the colors just don't feel good. They, the birds are really disappointing as a shiny pa like pair. Um, let, let me put the pink worm up here. I'll put them together because they're both equally good. Um, where do I want to put them? I think I'm going to put them here. I, I like them a lot. They're a good little pair. Blue Moltres would be fire. Oh, dude, that would be like SSS tier for me. Uh, Dragonite. Of all the green shinies, it's okay. I wish it was also pink, though. It would have been a great pink shiny. I just don't like when, sh like, evolutions break the shiny tradition of their previous lines. I wish th I wish this was just pink a pink guy. Uh, I'm going to say Mew is also an S tier. Uh, I'll put him with all the other blue guys. Uh, I'm going to bring Aerodactyl down. Then I guess I'm going to bring this guy down. I'm going to bring this guy down. Oh, oh, it's all filled out. Um... I think Mewtwo just feels like a Smash alt. Uh, I'm I'm gonna put him. I, I'm so neutral on him. I feel nothing. Uh, I'm gonna put this here. I'm just gonna put him here. Who do I? I'm gonna say Gengar's bad. Yeah, I'll put him like way down here, even if it's just a shiny tier. I'm pu putting it bad because I think it's miss potential. Yeah. Shiny Kingdra that low? It could go higher. It's it just one I really feel nothing towards. I guess I can put it in here somewhere. But yeah, I really don't feel anything towards Citro. Yeah, I feel good on that. I feel goodish. I mean, it was a pretty spur of the moment thing. I didn't really think anything through. Um, but yeah, that can be the reward for the catching the shiny caterpie. Oh, fuck. Um, so here we go. Let's uh, let's bring this back over real quick. Um, I think now that we did that tier list and I ate and everything. Uh, let's get Butterfree, and then we can probably, uh, just call it. No, I'm gonna leave, don't worry. I did Cloyster Dirty, it just looks the same. Yeah, look at this little guy. Um, so what I gotta do now... 
is I'm just going to go catch a random Pokemon. And the higher level the Pokemon is, the more XP you get. So uh, I'm going to do that just so we can evolve a little tiny Caterpie. He is slugging along. It sucks that I like him a lot, but we have to evolve him. And I don't really like Butterfree Shiny. It's, it's so sad. So sad when that has to happen. Oh, please be... Oh, the Chansey Whip. Classic. Oh, that shit is not staying in the ball, is it? Oh, this motherfucker. Dude, I, I am I am throwing in that direction. Okay, here we go. Fuck, dude. You're you're gonna behave, okay? Okay. You're gonna behave. <laughs> People keep saying the chance he's about to run. I don't think it's done the animation yet, has it? See, that's the animation. Um, the... No, I can turn this off now. I mean, I can really just catch any Pokemon. It doesn't have to be Chansey. Chansey just has a lot of XP in these games. So that's what I was going for. Eh, fuck it. Yeah, we're gonna run it back. Okay, let me go to Great Ball. Can we recenter the camera a little bit? Or it's just gonna stay over there? Okay, whatever. Okay, at least it's staying in the middle here. Okay, now it's about to run away. Um, I mean, who cares at this point? Damn. <laughs> I tried to catch it before it ran. Um... Yeah, we can just catch really anything, though. Um... What the fuck? Oh, oh, okay. Okay, no, that makes sense now, actually. Yeah, I'll just catch with Great Balls. That's okay. Um, because here... Uh, I just really want the XP. And I know we could have grinded it in the forest, but we were just getting such little XP because the, they're just so tiny and small. But look at this. Uh, yeah, we were already... Yeah, yeah. Th that was the correct play for anyone who doubted. Oh, I guess I can change the thing for exclamation mark rules. Uh, I will just change it and now say 29 out of 50. Uh, it's, it still feels like we're so far away. Uh, 29 does feel a lot closer than 24, though, I will say. So I, I'm happy with that. that I will say, I, I had a burrito, and which was okay, but that quesadilla really hit. It was so good, when I ate my burrito, I saved a slice of quesadilla, just so my final bite was good. Anyone else feel that? I, I just saved the best for last. Okay. Uh, now on. Well, we now we have a Metapod who's really not going to get a lot of spotlight, anyways. 
And I think we have one. Yeah, we have a rare candy. Uh, we can use. We, it's like pointless to bump it up to level 12, but uh, oh well. All right. Oh, here we go. Yeah, he went from gold to red, and now he just turns into like a little bit of every color, and none of them really go together well. What can you do? It's like the per the the pink is nice on it, or like the reddish tones. It's just like why green eyes? It could have been fine if you just changed the eyes. He the the eyes are Baja blasted though. That is true. Yeah, why wasn't it just pink butterfree? That's such a good question. Okay, so uh, that is that is that is it. Uh, we now we get to save, and we see that we added nearly ten hours to today's run. Uh, yeah, we're we started at like forty nine fifty five or something like that, and uh, here we are, nearly eight hours later. But we got it. You know that's what we should all keep in mind. We got it. Oh, oh God, did we get it? Um, so what we're gonna do now? I feel like we're all we stay raiding Captain Kid, but he just streams at DJ hours. Like like he's just my boy for that. Yeah yeah we we always do. This is like twice in a row. We stay raiding Captain Kid. <laughs> um, maybe I stream tomorrow. It's possible. I don't think I'm gonna stream this, but I will stream something maybe. Uh, yeah, good night. Eight hours later, I'll upload this to the replay channel and actually post it. Uh, all right. Thanks for watching, everyone. Uh, go tell Kid. Uh, just actually just say Alpha Raid or whatever. Spam emotes. And then in 15 minutes, again, for anyone who stays, he's a great friend of mine. Love this dude. Stay, support him. But in 15 minutes, if everyone starts spamming, does he know? In, he's in like a Nuzlocke, like a hardcore Nuzlocke. It'll be really funny. Not a single person needs to say it prior to this, but in 15 minutes from now, then you can, okay? Okay. I'll see you soon. Uh, have fun.